What about now? Now, can you hear me? Yee! I like the sound of that. Well, that's kind of annoying. I have this microphone and uh, it should be picking up sound on the camera, but clearly it is not. So this is a piece of shit. Hello, you're useless, you're useless. Um, hi. So we're gonna go through this entire collection and uh, there's a lot of stuff. I was just going through and I was organizing some things and um, I think I lost track of how many titles I have. Uh, there's quite a few, so bear with me. I know people were joking that this might be a a very long stream and it might in fact be a very long stream so we'll see how this goes but I'm super excited as you all know Augustine and uh, Hector are not here Augustine is in Europe Hector is doing something I don't know what uh, but he's not available and so I thought about you know this is kind of the perfect opportunity to showcase my collection because I know a lot of people have been asking for this and it's a, kind of a lot of work to try to figure out how to put this all together. Um, but I thought, hey, this will be a really fun opportunity to showcase all this stuff. I have 4K Blu-rays, 3D Blu-rays, HD Blu-rays, DVDs, CDs. I have, one second. I have old trailers. These are 35 millimeter trailers from the movie theater. It's pretty cool. This is the Dark Knight trailer. I want to figure out how to get these scanned. This would be really cool to get these um, to get these scanned and processed, um, and then post them somewhere. I don't know. Maybe on YouTube. Who knows? How's everybody doing though? Um, no, I do have a spreadsheet. Thank you for reminding me, Felicia. I do have a spreadsheet where I'm trying to keep track of every single title that I own. Um, but uh, it's tough because I get, I, just today I got, I think two or three things. And then over the course of the week, I get multiple things in. So it's so hard uh, to try to keep track of everything and be super thorough. Any laser discs? No, I don't, ha I don't have any laser discs. Maybe someday I'll get to that point. Um, that would be kind of insane though. I'm gonna raise my desk a little bit. Hopefully I don't like pinch a wire somewhere. I just want the microphone to be closer to me. Ah, there we go. You can see my really cool, I have a bag over my light to try to diffuse it because it's so bright. Um, what Hector has in toys you have in physical media? No, what Hector has in comic books I have in physical media. He has a ton of comic books. Hector actually rotates through his um, action figure collections quite a bit, quite a bit. My high school had Bill Nye on Laserdisc. Betamax, Laserdisc, all that stuff. Yeah, I actually, there's a person on, I think it's Instagram, he has video CDs. And it's a really cool account. And he has this like very vintage 80s looking room where he has the player. He has, I think it's a RGB projector. It's super old, it's all 80s tech. And he's got a ton of movies that he puts on, but it feels like the coziest room in the world to watch movies. I, I think it's so cool looking. Um, I don't have that. And I don't, I will not be investing in that either because that's just a lot. <laughs> Insert Mushu Alive GIF. Got Dogma on Blu-ray? I don't. So I definitely have some blind spots in my collection. Some things are really hard to get and some things are obviously out of print. Um, Corey, who is one of the members of our Discord, he actually offered to send me his Blu-ray copy of 28 Days Later. And as most people know, that thing has been out of print for, I don't even know how long. They go on eBay for hundreds of bucks and he just wanted to get rid of it and was like, do you want this? And I was like, you, how much? And he said, oh, no, no you can just have it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, what film TV show do you have that was the hardest for you to acquire? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, let's see, what do I have? Um, I don't know about hardest to acquire. I do have some things that are a little bit harder to come by now, but this is kind of, one second. 
this is kind of my prized possession in my collection. It's not even that hard to come by, but as you guys all know, we love our 3D Blu-rays and they're really hard to find. Dune did have a physical Blu-ray here in the United States, but it looks like a regular plain boring case. I got this one from the United Kingdom. I love this one. I know that this was available here as a standard Blu-ray, uh, Steelbook Blu-ray from Best Buy, but I imported this one and I love it so much. It's so cool. And um, there's actually something really special about this case too. Um, I don't know, there was somebody in our Discord who was asking about protective cases for Steelbooks. These come from Malco Protectors. Uh, they send me a whole bunch of protectors for Steelbooks. Um, whether you want acrylic cases like this one, there's some ASMR for you. Very, very high quality. Um, but this, this thing is amazing. They have these kind, and then I'll show you some other ones as we go through, but this just slides in. That's all it is. It's just an acrylic case, and then you slide this in, and then it has this little door that you just slide through at the bottom. And I recommend standing this up because if you try to put it sideways, this thing, uh, it might fall a little bit. I clearly don't have good aim. I'm clearly just struggling here right now. I might need to recruit some help from some of the nice folks in this house to help the blind man put his steelbook back together. Um, but yeah, so Wes just put a link in the chat. Um, I've been talking to them for a few weeks now and they were kind enough to send me a ton of samples of stuff. So this acrylic one is for like the diehard who really, really, really wants to protect something that um, they love. I love this one. I don't want a single scratch on this goddamn thing because as everybody knows, um, steelbooks tend to scratch easily. I go to a lot of like thrift stores and, and book off is a big one that I go to. Their steelbooks are so scratched up. Um, it's hard for me to commit to buying one of them just because of the condition that they're in. So if you're looking for something that's either acrylic or I'll show off some plastic ones that are amazing. They have plastic ones that are for slip covers or without slip covers, all kinds of stuff. Um, so yeah, this, this is definitely one that's like a big one for me, especially because I love Dune so much. Um, and I'm sure, I'm hoping that a lot of you got a chance to see Dune Part 2, which I thought was incredible. Scratch the bag over light ASMR. I don't even know if you can hear that. I did tape it off, although I don't think I taped it off well enough. There we go. Oh, see, now it's just like all over the place. We're figuring it out. Um, who else here collects physical media? I know we have a whole room on Discord for people who collect physical media, but I'm curious who in the chat room is either considering or has already started. I know that some people have started, um, which is really, really cool. I know that there people have been really, really upset with streaming services and, you know, they keep upping the prices and all kinds of stuff. It's super unfortunate because I think that they're making access to all this stuff harder and harder because I think less, less people are going to start, um, you know, I'm gonna stop subscribing to these things basically because it's starting to cost the same amount as like cable. The Scream Factory Halloween hardcover collection. Ooh, don't get me started, hold on. So, everybody knows how much I love Halloween. Right? If you don't know, I don't know where you've been for the longest time, um, but this, this is the entire collection of the Scream Factory Halloween remasters. These came out in the last, I would say, like two years, three years. I have all Halloween 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Curse, H2O, Resurrection. And then this box is actually a custom made box. There's a person on Facebook, um, oh my God, what is their name? Uh. Thanks, I got the thumbs up approval that my stream is going well, <laughs> even though my mic is not working. Um, uh, Blockbuster Box Set, I think, is the name of the person who makes these. Definitely follow them on Facebook. They also have an Etsy store, but I love this thing so much. I'm gonna try to not drop all of them. Uh, it's amazing. I got this for, I think, like $45, and it was purposely designed to hold all of the Scream Factory remasters of Halloween, so. 
Uh, I love it. And I don't know, most people, well, I pre-ordered all these because I'm an absolute maniac and there's no chance that I'm not gonna get like the best, 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 best version of this. So I have all these ones that have the hard cases. So I, I love, these, love these things so much. They're so cool. Uh, yeah. Highly recommend. And then for the... And if you want to be a complete completionist when it comes to Halloween, I of course am. I also bought the three film steelbook collection from Best Buy. I feel like I just have way too many lights. Everything's reflecting because they're so bright. Um, but this is the steelbook collection of the Halloween trilogy from Blumhouse. It's got Halloween, Halloween ends, and Hall or Halloween kills and Halloween ends. Uh, these are really nice. These I believe are coated with Dolby Vision as well. So if you're a physical media collector and you pay attention to all those things, um, yes, this was the one to get. And this was, I, I went to Best Buy and all the ones that I saw were all banged up. This was the only one that I found that wasn't all banged up, thankfully. So yeah, completionist. And then I have this one, this is actually a special one. So our friend Keller, is studying to become a chef. He's an amazing chef and he went to Italy. Um, well, one, he went there to get married and two, he went there to study more like culinary stuff. And he brought, him and his wife, Chelsea, brought me back this. This is a 4K copy of Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween from Italy. Very nice, I like. So I will not be opening this one. This is a special one. This is a, and the cool thing about the 4K Blu-rays is that they're region free. So if it's from Italy, you can still play in the United States, but I wanna, I wanna keep this one closed off. All right, what are, we, what, are we, what are we saying in here? I have physical media because I sometimes travel to places with no Wi-Fi, no cable and DVDs play in my old laptop. There you go. I don't have an optical drive in my computer, but I have an optical drive uh, sitting on top of my computer. And whenever we watch movies, I can rip the movie to my computer and then use it for our reactions. Bought the first season of Westworld in 4K because screw Warner Brothers. That's actually a really smart move because I know that the big thing that people were bummed out about was the fact that you can't watch Westworld on Max anymore. So dumb. You have to either buy each season on Amazon or, uh, you know, you gotta buy the Blu-ray, which, you know, nothing to complain about. Adam, if you're gonna be at WonderCon this year, I can introduce you to family friend Sandy King, who has a booth every year. Wes, you can't just throw that out there that you're gonna introduce me to Sandy King. You can't just throw that out there. For those of you who don't know, uh, Sandy King is an amazing producer, runs, um, is it Storm King Comics, I believe? Um, and she also happens to be the wife of John Carpenter, who is like one of my favorite directors in the world. And I have met him, I have met him. Um, I used to be a chef before COVID. Oh, nice, that's awesome. I have multiple DVD players, also have an optical drive. There you go. Uh, yeah, I do have Smallville up there, right there. Uh, wait, what happened to Westworld? You can't stream it on Max anymore. Uh, let me adjust this light really quick. It's a little, it's a little too spicy for my liking. Um, okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna go through these one by one. Now, if anyone still wants to use the super chat, you're more than welcome to. Um, if you tip towards any sort of topics you want me to talk about, I'll talk about them. Or if you have a movie that you want me to randomly pull off the shelf and talk about, I will do that as well. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go sequentially in order. It's not gonna be totally alphanumeric because I have stuff on the top shelf that I'm gonna pull first. And then I have a few things on the side as well uh, that I'm gonna talk about. And then I'm obviously also gonna talk about the Steelbook um, protective cases as well. So other than Halloween, what are some of your favorite John Carpenter films? We'll go through them. I've got quite a bit of them, not all of them, but I have quite a bit of them. Yeah, this is gonna be an all-nighter. Mm, thank you, great, uh, awesome, cool. Um, let's start with this. This is something I actually got not too long ago. Um, I found this, so as many of you know, Walmart has really stepped up uh, in lieu of Best Buy's uh, absence in physical media, those turds, they really stepped up and they've been doing a lot of exclusives on their website. So if you are looking for steelbooks, Walmart is now the place to go. Amazon will also be carrying steelbooks as well. Sometimes what you'll notice with certain movies is 
Amazon will have, um, sometimes will have the more standard steelbook and places like Walmart might get the exclusive. Uh, this thing is not an exclusive, uh, a steelbook I should say, but this was an exclusive that I found for Walmart. ET, probably like one of the more cooler sets. 40th anniversary limited edition of ET. It comes with this cool little figurine and it's got the movie inside. And I now technically own three copies of this movie. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with the other two copies. One I bought because I didn't get it from Universal. Then Universal offered to send me one. So I said, okay. And then this one was on sale, I think for $14. And I'm like, I can't really pass this up. It's kind of too cool to pass up. So it's got the figurine in it. It's got the movie in it. It's a really cool set. Some of these things I probably like won't open. And this is actually, I think, still on sale. So if you, if you have an interest and you love ET, you can probably check this out on the Walmart website and get access to it. Uh, I think it was like 14 bucks. Can he phone home? ET always phone home. What else? Three copies, I don't even own one. I know, it's a problem. That's okay, I own four copies of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I will actually talk about that because there's a good reason to own potentially multiple copies of that if you really love um, the movies. Don't discount yard sales, library sales, and pawn shops. They have some of the most random physical media items. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. Um, I go to a place called Book Off. It's primarily based in Southern, well, actually that's not true. I'm not sure exactly. It originated, I believe, in Japan. So they might have multiple stores across the United States, um, but I go to it because I really like it. And you can usually find stuff. You just gotta be careful for the pricing because they tend to charge quite a high amount for a lot of that stuff because they tend to kind of know what they're selling, but even so. Um, next up is this collector's edition of Star Wars The Force Awakens. I know people don't understand our obsession with 3D, but we genuinely truly love 3D. And I bought this as soon as it came out. I believe it came out after the movie or it already had like its initial run on Blu-ray. Um, but I think this thing is really, really cool. The inside packaging has all the discs inside. Really, really nice. And you know, I love 3D so this is kind of like a must own for me. And I love Star Wars, more importantly. Um, after The Force Awakens, it was harder to get The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker in the United States because no one is really um, participating in pressing 3D discs anymore. So I really love this one. Next up is another really cool set. Uh, this was from Paramount. It's the Paranormal Activity set. It's got like seven movies in it. Uh, eight movies actually. It's got Paranormal Activity, Paranormal Activity 2, Paranormal Activity 3, Paranormal Activity 4, Paranormal Activity The Marked Ones, Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension in 3D, Paranormal Activity Next of Kin and Unknown Dimension. So I actually have not even had a chance to open this yet. Um, and I definitely want to in the near future. So I don't even mind. So there's, the thing is, is like, I don't even mind if some sets are not in 4K. I love the fact that this has a 3D Blu-ray in it. I think that's really, really cool. So kudos to Paramount because Paramount also like exited the 3D manufacturing, um, 3D Blu-ray manufacturing quite a few years ago now. So I was shocked to find out that this was on 3D Blu-ray, but it's a good one. Uh, will, will you be picking up the newly announced D-plus Blu-rays, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, and or an Obi-Wan Kenobi? Hell yes. Hell yes. Uh, when we get to the MCU, I'll show you that I have WandaVision and Loki, and uh, WandaVision looked amazing. I also have Mandalorian. Some of them I've been hesitant to open because I actually haven't had any Steelbook protectors for the last few weeks, and... I didn't want them getting scratched. So I only opened WandaVision and then it's just been sitting on the shelf after I watched some of it. And it looks amazing. I really, really like it. Is there a movie you've owned on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray and 4K? I own Tim Burton's Batman on VHS. I own it on DVD. I own it on 
Oh, I don't own it on Blu-ray. Do I? No, I don't believe I own it on Blu-ray. And I own it on 4K. So I guess Blu-ray is the only one that I'm missing. Uh, I think I do have the, the original Star Wars trilogy in every format because technically the box set comes with the Blu-ray and the 4K. And I do have the original trilogy on VHS and I do have it on DVD as well. So next stream, should you, should, uh, you just opening unopened boxes? Yeah, I know, I know, I should. There's a lot of stuff that I could go through. Um, the next one, let's pull this one off. <laughs> this was a really nice gift from, I believe this is from Universal, and the, this is the Underworld series. It's all of the Underworld movies. Very nice box set. They love to see it. This just pops off. And the cool thing is, is I love this. I am not the biggest fan when box sets like don't give you the slip covers. This one actually has all of the slip covers for all the movies included, which like, you know, say what you want about the movies. Oh, I don't want to show those off. Say what you want about the films. The fact that these all come with sli uh, slip covers is pretty cool uh, in my opinion. So love that. Love that. Malco protectors, baby. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of like a kind of a demo, I guess, of uh, what, what they are, what they do, how they protect your physical media collection and all that stuff. Yeah, this is a really nice box set. Again, can vouch for the quality of the films. Can absolutely vouch for the quality of this um, box set. Really, really nice. Universal did a really nice job. Or it might be Universal or it might be Sony. I can't remember right now. Sony, this is from Sony. But hey, it's really nice. Like, gotta appreciate the craftsmanship all around. It's really nice. Quickly, get those codes. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Your family will never find you. So watch it. Watch yourself before you wreck yourself. Slipcovers are important. They like complete the set. I don't understand people when they're like, oh, well, slipcovers, I throw them away. Which I guess if you're trying to maximize your storage, I guess that makes sense because they do take up a little bit of room. And once you stack them next to each other, it does take up some space. I will say if you have slipcovers that you don't want, hit me up on Discord because I may buy them off of you or take them, whatever you want to do with them. Uh, did you buy Mission Impossible movie steelbooks before Dead Reckoning Part One came to theaters? I'm thinking of buying Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation. I did not buy any slip or any steelbooks. So this is the other thing about me: if a franchise is active and there are more movies coming out, I don't buy any of them until the franchise is done. So Fast and the Furious, I think they're done with movie twelve. I'm just going to wait to buy the whole movie in one collection. Same thing with Mission Impossible. I feel like. This will be Tom Cruise's last Mission Impossible movie. And if that's the case, um, I will then buy the Mission Impossible complete set. I don't like buying like part of a set and then there's more movies. It just feels really weird to me to not buy a complete set of, of films. So um, yeah, that's just my take. I mean, everyone's different. If you wanna buy one at a time, that's totally fine. I do have some that are like singles. And that's because sometimes I'll get them from the studio. That's it though. Is there a Blu-ray you have that up converts better than their 4K disc? My Star Wars Blu-ray looks better up converted than the 4K. Well, Star Wars is a very complicated topic because they've done so many remasters. Every single time they um, put those movies in a new format, they remaster them. So I think they tend to look a little bit worse each time. I am not a big fan of digital noise reduction, DNR, and George Lucas is notorious for doing that. So are some other directors. The older the version, in my opinion, sometimes the better they look, even if they're not at the highest resolution or they're not at the highest bit rate. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but um, uh, let, me, let me look. I haven't seen any super chats yet. So if there's been super chats, they haven't come through yet. Uh, pull out heat. I know you got it. Love you guys. I'll pull out heat for you. Um, yeah, so that's the thing with Star Wars. I know that a lot of people, including myself, I really love the Despecialized Edition um, or PK-77, Project, uh, Project, Project 4K-77, 80 and 83. 
Um, some fans have gone through and they've found old 35 millimeter reels, 70 millimeter reels, and they've done rescans of all that stuff at 4K. And they basically created their own versions of the original trilogy for now um, using old 35 millimeter uh, film scans or 70 millimeter fi film scans. So it's pretty cool. I think if you just Google search um, project 4K77, 4K80, and 4K83, you should be able to get the rundown. And that's all I'll say about that. <clears throat> uh, heat. We got the heat, baby. <clears throat> right here. Michael Mann's heat. So uh, this comes from Disney because it's a, um, I think the the physical media rights to this, the distribution is with Disney or 20th Century Fox or 20th Century Now. So this actually came out from Disney. It's a pretty good remaster. I know that there's been some talk about, you know, some of the lack of, texture or maybe it's not as clean as it could be. I don't remember what size disc this is authored on. It's a long movie, so I feel like any long movie should be authored on a disc that holds at least 100 gigs of data. This might be um, a Blu-ray, a 66 gigabyte disc. I'm not 100% sure. So from what I remember from watching this, I thought it looked really good, but you know, lots of people have their opinions and they're all valid because some people have a better eye for these things than others. But it's a good one. Highly recommend it. It's one of the it's one of the better films as well. Let me switch back to the live chat. <clears throat> What's one of your favorite features on DVD that never transferred over to Blu-ray or 4K? Man, there's a lot. Like the Lord of the Rings is a perfect example. Um, the Lord of the Rings Blu-ray has the most extensive behind the scenes uh, from all the movies. Let me grab it. It's right here. The Comic Con name tag. So cool. So, this Lord of the Rings box set is a Blu ray set, obviously, but it is the extended editions of the first three movies, the original three movies, and it has one of the most comprehensive special feature packages in it. It's five discs. Or sorry, it's, let me see. It's like 12 or 13 discs in here, or if not more, that has a ton of special features on all three movies. So really, really cool. And the unfortunate thing is that they did not put these on the 4K Blu-ray. There is one disc of special features that doesn't even come close to everything that is on these. So if you want all of the behind the scenes material, the making of, I highly recommend getting this set. This is definitely the one to own. If you want, you know, the versions that have the higher res and all that sort of stuff, you can get the Blu-ray as well. The 4K Blu-ray, which I do have. I actually have the Middle Earth Collection, which is all six movies. Um, but I will not be parting away with this. First of all, it's gorgeous. Like, hello, give me a break. Like, that's so nice. Ridiculously nice. So I, I'm gonna hold on to it. Uh, a lot of people mentioned this, this beast of a set. Perfect timing as we're getting all this like Superman stuff, all the Superman hype right now. This thing is so cool. Smallville baby, all 10 seasons. You love it, you love to see it. So I own, I think like the first four seasons of Smallville, first four seasons, maybe five, I own them on DVD. And I've been waiting, I waited so long for this thing to come out on Blu-ray. I knew that they would never do a 4K because the, the series was shot, I believe on 35 millimeter film for the first, I think two or three seasons. And a lot, but a lot of the visual effects were finished in uh, standard definition. So they couldn't really do a, they could barely do a, I mean, they did the Blu-ray, but doing a 4K would be so tough. And then the rest of the show, I believe was shot in 1080 or 2K. Um, so, you know, I think a Blu-ray with this show is 
totally acceptable. I don't think it's necessary to have this in 4K. And I know some people will be like, yeah, but you like love 4K. I do, but I love 4K when it's appropriate. And I don't want to sacrifice the quality of whatever it is they're trying to get me to buy just to label it as a 4K thing. Sorry I'm late. Looks like I arrived just in time. Smallville, baby! Ryan Unicomb knows. That's my brother from another mother in the physical media world. Lena Robbins, thank you so much for that $10 super chat. This live stream is awesome. Thanks, Adam, for giving me advice to help me set up my, to help me up my physical media game. You're the best. Hey, no worries. If you guys do have questions, I'm happy to answer any questions that I'm, uh, I feel like I'm equipped to answer. Sometimes I may not know the answer to a question. I'm happy to do like a little Google search and figure it out. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, if you have questions, I would love to, you know, solve them and help you however I can in your physical media journey. Do you have the Criterion version of Princess Bride? I love the case for that one. Funny you should ask. Jesus Christ, Ryan. Ryan paid $380 to import that Smallville Blu-ray set because he lives in Australia. Um, he's already been screwed over so bad uh, by companies like Disney because they don't import to Australia and New Zealand anymore. Um, poor Ryan has been having to like buy all of his stuff from the United States and have it shipped over. I told you I'd buy you stuff and send it to you. Just let me know. It might be cheaper. I don't know. Um, yeah. Why do you think they stop with the special features? That's a really great question. I honestly don't know. I think it's really disappointing that the special features have kind of been an afterthought uh, in recent years. I think that there's a lot of value in the special features when it comes to people who are looking to be inspired to be creators. Big part of it, I think, is also because we live in a social media world that is so desperate for every piece of footage they can get their hands on. And they love to scrutinize and critique every single thing as well. I know a lot of people started complaining that Marvel and all these other um, movies stopped putting the original green screen footage on, on the special features. So they take the green screen footage and they make the green screen gray or they decolor it and they make it black or white or whatever. I think a big part of it is because they don't want people going through and making their own stuff with it, which I understand to an extent, you know, because then you're putting it out there on the internet. Oh, this is better. They should have done this instead. Well, you know what? You weren't in the meeting to make the movie. You're not part of the creative team. You're not part of the decision-making. You may not like what they made, but that's what they made. And that's the decision that they made. So you know, if you're just going to go through all the special features for every movie and scrutinize every detail, then you're not really enjoying the movie. You're really just complaining about everything that's happening. You getting the re-release of Batman Beyond uh, collection on Steelbook? I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Want to provide a hookup on the DL, Ryan? Ha ha ha. Luckily, I'm rich on the DL. <laughs> Um, the commentary, etc. What's your most rare disc or the one that you are happiest to own? So I'm also not one of those people, and this is a really big thing with when it comes to physical media. I do not feel the pressure to own everything in existence. I want to own stuff that I have a real passion for. Sometimes it's directors, sometimes it's a franchise or a series based on a character. Sometimes it's a genre, sometimes um, it just happens to be something that the studio sends me. So I think that's a huge, huge issue with a lot of people is that they overspend on things that they don't really care for. Sometimes I will definitely buy something that I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. I've never seen this movie or I know the director, or I know the actors and I'll like, oh, I'll blind buy it. And if I don't like it, I'll just, you know, I'll get rid of it. I'll sell it off. Chat, chat, including myself, wants to know how you organize your media. Great question. If I had a wide enough camera, I would show you all of it. So let me get my microphone. Essentially, this whole top row is 3D Blu-ray. Once it concludes around here, it switches to 4K Blu-ray. And then it's 4K Blu-ray all the way down. These shelves in the middle are kind of an exception because they're taller. So I put stuff that's more collector based and bigger that won't fit on a regular shelf. Also, I have a bone to pick with people who make shelving for collectors and they don't have enough options for people who have DVD, Blu-ray, steel books, collector sets. All of these shelves on this side, I had a custom fix them. I basically had a, I had my girlfriend's dad made me a jig so I could readjust the shelves. So that's why there's a gap here 
and there's not a gap here was because I redid all this shelving so I could fit more stuff. Because if I had all my shelves looking like this, no way would I be able to fit this entire collection. It would be absolutely impossible. Um, so it's 3D Blu-rays at the top, then it's 4K stuff, and then at the bottom is Blu-ray and then DVD. And then I have some CD sprinkled throughout as well on shelves that they'll fit on. So yeah, it's really, really annoying. You would think that someone out there would make shelving that is a little bit more friendly to people who collect all kinds of Blu-ray and DVD media. I spent $50 on a 4K director's cut of Midsommar and it was just the film. No special features or other options. Hold that thought. Is it this one? Is it this one directly from A24? I don't remember if this actually has special features on it. <clears throat> but I had to get this because I absolutely love the movie. I also, you know what sometimes really sucks? I bought this. But literally three weeks before, I had bought a version in Italy because only Italy had the 4K. And I thought, well, I might as well just import the damn thing and uh, that'll be it. And then I think two weeks later, they announced that this was coming out. So of course I pre-ordered this. And it's really cool. Like it's got a bunch of stuff in here. Oh, there goes the, the binding. The binding is kind of breaking a little bit. There goes the DigiCop, um, but it's really cool. It's basically a book. Yeah, essentially a book with naughty stuff, sorry. And then the disc is here. It's really, really nice, I really love it. But you know, it's one of those things like, oh man, why can't you guys just like announce this day one? Why do I gotta like go through hoops to get this damn thing? Um, but it's really cool, A24. I think they have one for um, The Lighthouse and a couple of other movies, so it's really nice. Uh, okay, let's continue, otherwise I'll never get through this. So. 35 millimeter stuff. I have the teaser trailer for The Dark Knight. I have the teaser trailer for Ryan Unicomb's favorite Superman movie, Superman Returns. Teaser. Um, I used to be a projectionist, so I held on to all these things whenever I could. I've got one of the trailers for The Dark Knight, the second trailer. And what else do I got? Another trailer for The Dark Knight. This is brand new. This has never even been tapped. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Brand new. Brand new. Scope. Dark Knight, number three. Running time. Two minutes, 30 seconds. So like I was saying before, I would love to try to get these things scanned. Um, and maybe upload them or something. I think that would be really, really cool. I have, a, I have way more. I have way more. I don't have cases for these. The thing that I do with these is I just try to store them so they're not um, they're not under too much light. Because what happens is sometimes after a while, the image can degrade. I don't know if you can see this. Might be a little too hard to see. It's the green band for the trailer. Oh, come on, focus, you stupid thing. Yeah. Uh, come on. It's not going to focus, but you get the point. You get the point. So I think it would be really fun to do scans of all these trailers that I own and then put them on my Plex server or whatever. So they're kind of like a pre-show thing for a lot of the movies. Uh, would be think would be cool. Those teaser trailer reels are the nerdiest thing I've seen all year. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> what else do I got? I have a Funko. I honestly got this Funko of me. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Sorry, sorry I couldn't grab you something when I was in Tokyo, but I have friends who live out there, so let me know if you want any 4K 3D Blu-ray combos. Oh, no problem, Greg. Thanks so much for offering. I know, I know they're expensive, and I know that um, they take up room, so I, just the fact that you offered uh, means a lot, so thank you for even offering. Um, this is technically not a Blu-ray. This is the soundtrack to The Dark Knight. I bought this like right when it came out. I love this thing. It's so cool. This is 16 years old, absolutely insane, but I keep it in as good a condition as I can. Um, it's got the collector's edition CDs in here by Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard. It's got a really cool booklet of photography and all kinds of stuff. I love this, this kind of stuff. I live for it, man. It's really, really nice. 
all this like gray pictures from the film. It's cool. And then the second disc is in the back. So people are probably like, oh, you still buy CDs, why? I know that digital obviously at, at this point in time can um, have higher quality than um, a CD, which is totally true. But this was 2008 and that kind of stuff didn't exist back then. So this was the prime time, this was prime time. I'll send you some pirate MP4 Disney shows, 10,000 movies per single layer disc. There you go. Um, do you use an app like My Movies 4 Pro to keep track of your collection? No. So I was using the Blu-ray.com app for the longest time. Um, they stopped updating it. And there's issues trying to take photos of all the barcodes um, with, the, with the older version of the app on the new iPhone. So I had to switch to something else. I've been using, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Let me check really quick. I found this other app that someone recommended to me that works really, really well. Just a bummer because now I have to redo my whole entire collection. I really did not want to at all, but you know, it is what it is. Um, what is it called? What is it called? Oh, Libib, L-I-B-I-B. -I -B. It's primarily for tracking your books, but I use it, I've been using it to track all of my physical media. So my 4K, my 3D, my Blu-ray books, comics, all kinds of shit, my vinyl. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I'm just not the biggest fan of having things on two different apps. I also, at the same time, you have been using Notion, which is this like online, it's kind of like an Evernote. And I've been using that to also create like a huge database of everything that I own. It's super organizational. So I can go through and I can customize basically, this is a steel book, this is Dolby Vision, this is 4K, this is Blu-ray, this is 3D, this is that director, this has this actor. And you can search for things based on all of those prompts. Is that Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite at the top? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm a huge hockey fan. I love hockey. My favorite team is and always will be, for the most part, the Los Angeles Kings. And earlier this season, they retired their captain, Dustin Brown. And this is a statue that they gave to everybody who came to the game um, to sort of commemorate his amazing career uh, as an LA King. So I've got this bad boy up there on the shelf. Doesn't matter that it has nothing to do with movies, but it's something that I love. So it looks pretty cool. I love it. <clears throat> Sonia's asking, what are my thoughts on the Wicked musical adaptation? So I have seen the trailer. I have mixed feelings on the trailer. Some people were making jokes that it kind of looks like Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. I get that vibe a little bit. I get a little bit of a vibe that it's shot in the volume quite a bit. It looks too clean for, 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 um, for lack of a better term. But I'm, I'm gonna go see it. I saw the musical Wicked and I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna give the movie a shot no matter what. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he's getting to his collection, everyone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you have a vinyl collection too. I do, I didn't bring it over. It's in the other room. Um, I, just, I just had too much going on that I had tech issues so I didn't get a chance to bring it. I would like to bring it. I have really cool, I think I have really cool stuff. I have like the entire Star Wars collection, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Um, can you tell us about getting to see the IMAX projection booth both when you saw part two of Dune in 70 millimeter? Yeah, that was amazing. So if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely follow. I've been posting a lot about some of the stuff I've been doing recently. And the Regal Theater in Irvine, the crew there is so friendly and so kind. They've let me come into the theater on multiple occasions to see the projection booth. I went there when I saw Oppenheimer, so I got to see the enormous 11 mile long print of Oppenheimer. I got to see the print of Tenet. I got to see the print of Dune Part Two recently. There's only 12 prints of Dune Part Two in IMAX 70 millimeter. And I believe only, I believe only eight, nine locations in the United States have it. Three of them I think are in LA and a few in the East Coast and sprinkled throughout or in California, I should say. So it was a really cool experience. Check out my Instagram. My, my handle is the same on all social media channels, but really, really cool stuff. Do you have any Quentin Tarantino movies on DVD, Blu-ray or 4K? Absolutely. Favorite sandwich, BLT. 
always always uh, hits the spot really really well. Okay, I have to get back to going through these. If anybody wants to, um, if anybody has any other topics they want to have me talk about, the super chat is open as well. You know, I I, I don't want to like be too hard and try to always plug the super chat, but you know, it's part of the thing that that we're doing. It's one of the reasons why we're doing live streams now is because we're trying to utilize our studio space and uh, and all that stuff. So yeah. All right. What's next? This is actually hard to get. I didn't know that this was an Amazon exclusive when I bought it. Or I think the studio may have sent it to me. I don't remember, but I thought it was too cool to pass up. It is the handbook for the recently deceased edition of Beetlejuice on 4K Blu-ray. Apparently this is impossible to get now. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was going to be such a hot commodity when I bought it. So it's got obviously this cool setup. And then when you open it up, so I'm one of those people I have to keep the J card. Is this called a, what is this called? Is this called like a T card, a C card? I think a C card would be if it was like all sides, right? J card would be just the bottom. What the hell do they call this thing? Is this just like a J card as well? Um, but the inside is really cool. It's totally based on like the actual book from the movie. And then it's magnetized. The spine is magnetized, so when you open it up, you've got the movie on 4K Blu-ray, and you've got access to like the chalk and the paper and all that sort of stuff. So this is a really cool set. I really like this thing. Um, it was on Amazon. It is super expensive now. I've seen it for a few hundred dollars. Yeah, the flap. You can just call it the flap. Um, I like holding on to them. I feel like it just kind of completes the set. Some people take them off and throw them away. You can do whatever you want with it. The other one that is very similar to the Beetlejuice one is this Goonie set. This is also an Amazon exclusive. Um, super, super hard to come by. And yeah, I didn't open this one either. The thing that's like unfortunate about when you don't open these things is that the digital codes expire. Thankfully, I had other versions that I got from the studio that I was able to redeem the code, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, that's why there's a little bit, when it's really reflective like this, it's because the plastic wrap is still on some of these, so. Yeah, really cool. On the inside, there's like all this, like if you look it up, there's a bunch of little like knickknacks and things. I'll probably eventually open it. I didn't buy these because I was trying to hoard them, hold on to them and resell them. I bought it because I thought it looked really, really cool and I love the Goonies so much. Richard Donner is one of my favorite directors. So to continue talking about my obsession with Halloween, I've got these really cool uh, vinyl, like smaller vinyl sets from some of Carpenter's films that came with the Scream Factory edition of uh, the 4K movies. And these are from Sacred Bones. So this is Prince of Darkness. I also have Halloween 3, Halloween 1, and Halloween 2. Uh, it's a cool little set. Wasn't really planning on showing those off, but might as well. Um, am I from Orange County? No, I'm from San Diego originally. And then I lived in, I've been, I was in LA for years and years and years and years and years. You haven't seen Goonies? What the hell, man? How have you not seen Goonies? What? That's crazy. You need to change that immediately. Goonies set went out of print so fast. Yeah, I bet. Man, I was not a fan of the Goonies. <laughs> what? Oh, you're into the Halloween movies? I literally never ever would have guessed. Ryan? Fuck you. Don't judge me, okay? I love you. <laughs> Another set that I that I love, um, that I think is really cool, I love when everything just comes in one set. Again, this is what I was talking about when I'm like, hey man, I don't wanna buy each movie individually, just give me the whole damn thing. The Jason Bourne collection. This does, in fact, even have the movie with Jeremy Renner in it. This is the complete, the ultimate collection. Uh, it's got all of them. It's just so simple. Just so simple. Hello. Come on. All of them. Oops. All in one and one for all. Born Identity, Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum, Born Legacy, Jason Born. Boom. There you go. It's much easier that way. Next up uh, is a show... <coughs> 
that I know everybody is like, how have you not seen this thing? Well, it's probably because I've never opened this. It is Game of Thrones, the complete series on Blu-ray from HBO slash Warner Brothers. This thing is massive. Absolutely massive. Crazy. Eventually I'll get around to opening this because we are probably gonna watch the show at some point. So I'll need to rip all them discs, all eight seasons of this. Um, we have been watching House of the Dragon for those who don't know, they're available on our Patreon, but we're also doing cut downs that are gonna come out um, closer to the release of season two. And then hopefully once we finish out House of the Dragon, we can get into this. At least I'm down. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. Love when the spines match, that's what I'm saying. If San Diego got an NHL team, would you support them? Yeah, I think I would. I would support San Diego and LA simultaneously, and I don't care what anybody says or how they feel about it. Thank you very much. Let's see, just checking to see if there's any other uh, donations. Want to make sure I don't miss those. I really like Sean Bean, still glad he's the lead in all eight seasons and nothing ever happened to him. This may have been asked earlier in the stream, but do you think they'll do more Blu-rays on Disney Plus shows? I think so. I think it depends on the caliber of the show. I think Marvel and Star Wars at this point is almost guaranteed to have a Blu-ray made for them. I really hope to, I really hope so. I would hate for them to do like all the seasons of Mandalorian, but then not do Boba Fett, but do Ahsoka. Like just do them all. Just let me own all of them, you dirt balls. With how much you've loved Dune, I think you'll really like Game of Thrones. I mean, I've liked House of the Dragon so far, so we'll see. This is not a Blu-ray or a DVD, but this just further confirms my obsession with Halloween. Right, right, right. Do you have the Crow 4K Steelbook? No, it's not out yet. It doesn't come out till May, which means that I will probably get, so if I happen to get something from a studio early, it means that I will maybe get it a week or two earlier than the actual release date. Best spoof movie, and have you seen Starving Games? I have not seen Starving Games. Best spoof movie? I mean, Spaceballs is so high up there. Spaceballs is actually one that I would love to own. I kind of went through a phase right after the beginning of the pandemic where I was really trying to not buy anything. And I was getting so much inventory from the studios that I was like, you know what, I think I'm good. I won't buy stuff. And even if it, you know, if something really good comes along, I'll wait. The Spaceballs 4K Blu-ray with the slip cover is so valuable and so sought after that it goes for hundreds of dollars on eBay. I love the movie. I don't know if I'm willing to spend that much money on the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray with a slipcover. Without a slipcover, I think it goes for general pricing unless it's been sold out for a while. Um, Spinal Tap, Spinal Tap's a good one as well. Airplane's a good one. <laughs> Ryan. I do have, one second. I do have this Mel Brooks collection on a uh, regular Blu-ray that has literally everything. The 12 Chairs, Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, Silent Movie, High Anxiety, To Be or Not To Be, History of the World Part One, Spaceballs, Robin Hood Men in Tights. It's all in one cool comprehensive set. Apparently this thing is also kind of hard to come by as well. I bought it because I think it was on sale for no joke $20. And I thought, hey, I'm not the biggest fan of Mel Brooks. Um, I like his movies, but there's only maybe like three that I love. Spaceballs being one of them. So I had to pick this up. It was worth it in my opinion. Guys, we haven't even gotten to the first goddamn shelf yet. We're in trouble. Uh, I'm gonna close the window really quick because it's raining. It was getting a little wet in here. 
How about Brotherhood of the Wolf? No, I don't have that one. Do you think with X-Men 97 coming out, will Disney put out a Blu-ray for the original X-Men the Animated Series? We've been talking about that. I've been trying to like rationalize whether or not they would. Based on the quality of the show on streaming, I don't think it'd even be worth it. Um, but if they do it, no complaints. I'll definitely buy it on Blu-ray. But they're definitely not gonna do a um, they're definitely not gonna do a 4K Blu-ray, that's for sure. All night long. All, yeah, this might need to be a series. Jesus. All right, here we go. The Friday the 13th collection. This also came from uh, Scream Factory slash Shout Factory. You know what the bummer is? Is that they started putting these movies out on 4K via Paramount. But the thing is, is like, I kind of mostly trust Scream Factory more so than I would trust Paramount sometimes, sometimes, uh, to do these remasters. But man, this thing is gorgeous. It's got every Friday the 13th movie. Some of them have been remastered, so some of these are from 4K scans. They look amazing. Um, they're 4K scans, and they've been then they've been um, downscaled to HD on the Blu-ray. But listen, they look awesome, and it's got Friday the 13th th in 3D, part three in 3D. So really, really, really cool. I love this thing. Then I've got these random collector sets from DC. So we've got Death of Superman, Justice League Dark. Um, what else do I have in here? Like these are pretty cool. They all come with these like collectible figures. And then I've got Batman and Harley Quinn as well. Which I know is controversial. I get it. This one's cool. Oh, the fi I didn't even realize it. It's John Constantine, but the figure moved. Um, yeah, Death of Superman, and then Teen Titans, The Judas Contract, and I think that's Blue Beetle, yeah, Blue Beetle, which is really cool. Yeah, I like these things, they're really cool, I'm not sure why Warner Brothers stopped doing them, or maybe they are doing them still, but they haven't been sending them to me, which, you know, that's fine, I get it. And then... Ryan Unicom's favorite movie, baby. Favorite movie, Man of Steel. I think this set is actually really, really cool. I got this for $11 on Amazon. So there was like an accidental sale or a sale on purpose. I don't even know anymore. Um, it has a stand, but I don't have the stand set up right now, but it's really cool. This is the regular Blu-ray, but it has the 3D, 3D Blu-ray in it. Um, and I, I think it's packaged pretty nicely and look, there's a lot of things that, you know, you can say about this movie. The shield is fine. The collection is fine. The case is also fine. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Oh, the stand is in here. I probably should take it out and display it properly. I didn't know that the stand was in there. I thought I had lost it. <laughs> so the inside, it has this crest. Crest shape packaging with the title. And then when you open it up, the first flap has the 3D Blu-ray. You love to see it. And then when you open up the other flaps, it's got the movie on DVD, it's got a special feature disc, and then it's got the film on Blu-ray. I'm gonna do this the best way possible without dropping this goddamn thing. Oh, disc is falling, disc is falling. So, let me see. Can you see it? You can kind of see it, right? What is my issue with like not being able to rotate this straight? I'm like constantly cockeyed like this with everything that I keep showing you. So pretty cool, Blu-ray, DVD, 3D version, a special feature disc. You know, the movie is the movie, but I like this, I think this is cool. And now that I know that the stand is in there, I can stand up like a normal person. So this is, Man of Steel is actually the only title that I don't have in 4K from the DC Extended Universe because it came out after the fact. So, all right, let's get to the 3D. I know that this movie is um, not everybody's favorite. I think it's fine. It also, we, as we learned, it came at a really weird time where Sony had to make this movie, otherwise the rights were gonna revert back to Marvel. The Amazing Spider-Man in 3D, which is actually shot in 3D. A lot of stuff shot in 3D. Um, I think it looks really, really good. 
And of course you can't have one without the other. So of course you got the Amazing Spider-Man 2 on 3D Blu-ray. I know that they have 4K versions of this. I don't know 100% if the 4K version has um, the 3D Blu-rays included. If not, I would honestly rather own the 3D Blu-ray than the 4K Blu-ray for these. So the 4K version of Man of Steel is just upscale 2K anyway. That's true, but with that being said, and I'm not trying to defend the movie, but I will defend the upscaling of 2K Masters. Usually the 2K Master is still a high enough resolution that the upscaling to 4K Ultra HD is not big enough. The big thing that you get, the value that you get from the 4K is the high dynamic range. And as we know, people like Snyder, he has massive contrast in his films, dark darks, bright brights. So the movie would actually benefit from the HDR more so than the actual resolution. Um, but that depends on the scans. If, if the movie had a digital intermediate, um, then you know it's not likely that you're gonna be able to ever get a 4K, uh, 4K master proper out of it. They would have to go back and basically redo it, which I don't think they will. I don't think they're interested in investing the money at any point at all at this point. So I do, I do have quite a few movies, especially from Marvel that some of the earlier ones are 2k remat are 2k masters. The DIs are 2k, but they still look good in 4k because they're able to utilize that extra bit rate and they're able to utilize uh, the HDR. So I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. The HDR pops. Then we've got the adventures of Tan Tan. In 3D, great movie, directed by Steven Spielberg, produced by Peter Jackson. Um, I really wish that they would go back and do the second movie, and I want Peter Jackson to do it, and I want um, Steven Spielberg to produce that one. So really, really, really good movie. I, I love it so much. Sp the Amazing Spider 4Ks do not have the 3D discs. Well, Sony, kiss my butt. You're not getting my money again. I bought those for $9. This one I just bought very, very recently in the last like two, three weeks. Um, I've, you know, I've got cousins and nieces and all these sorts of things. So I, I try to keep a collection that is not predominant, predominantly movies that they'll never be able to watch as kids. So I like collecting stuff that is not just for me, but is also for the family. And Arthur Christmas was a movie that got a lot of praise and the 3D got a lot of praise as well. I picked this up for 13 bucks at Book Off. It's a really great deal. And they actually have a pretty big 3D collection. So I thought, why not? This is for Ryan Unicomb. Um, I really lucked out with this. So the slipcover for the first Avatar is a lenticular slipcover. And it's kind of hard to find if you try to get it like on Amazon or whatever, or eBay. They're pretty expensive. I got this for $5 from Book Off. This cool lenticular cover for Avatar, $5. I gotta get the damn sticker off of it. Um, but it's the 3D version of the original film. Uh, the 3D on this thing looks incredible. They did this, I think, I think it's um I think it's pressed at 35 megabits, so it's really really high quality, really really good. And then of course I had to get the Way of Water because the 3D on that thing is amazing as well. I'm a little annoyed because as many people know, the Apple Vision Pro is getting a lot of 3D titles, and they're all remastered in 4K with Dolby Vision. Um, I don't know how easily the current Blu-ray players that play 4K and 3D can play these could play those movies uh, in 4K Dolby Vision. So it kind of sucks that that people on physical media and on disc don't get that sort of care and priority as well, but it is what it is. They put so much care into this though, kudos to James Cameron. It's on two discs, it's on two discs. So, because it's a very long movie and they didn't want to sacrifice the quality, so they put it on two discs, which not, not the biggest deal in the world, but I get it, people don't like it, I don't mind it, it's fine. Now we're getting into a little bit of the Disney territory. Beauty and the Beast in 3D. Um, I think it looks really, really good. The thing with 2D animation is that the 3D sometimes is hard to see because they're solid colors. There's no shadow, there's no texture to them. So you can't really see 3D. So it sometimes can look really carded, um, especially even, even if you put in the effort to actually build it out in 3D. But I think it still looks pretty solid. And I think for the opportunities where there is some texture and there is some shading, I think it really does pop. <clears throat> 
Do you think that Apple was throwing dollars around to encourage that exclusive exclusivity? It wouldn't surprise me. I think a lot of studios are trying to stay in the good graces of Disney for a lot of reasons, or sorry, in the good graces of Apple for a lot of reasons, specifically technologically related reasons. Um, <clears throat> because I think Apple su supplies so much equipment and gear. So yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think it's super frustrating though, because people always say, hey, 3D's out of style. Nobody has 3D TVs, nobody has 3D, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of people out there who still have 3D TVs, projectors, computer screens, what have you. So I think it's kind of foolish to eliminate it completely from physical media if there are people out there who actually own things that can play them. This one is an import. This one's an import from the UK. Uh, Big Hero 6. Looks great, rendered in 3D, which is really, really cool. Uh, this was around the time when Disney kind of <clears throat> was putting a pause or slowing down production on 3D Blu-ray here in the United States. I think this came out in 20, what is this, 2016, 2015, 2016. And so around 2016, 2017, they stopped manufacturing 3D Blu-rays in the United States. So started to go uh, international for these. I'm a huge fan of the Leica films, so I absolutely had to own Fox Trolls. Love this movie. This is such a fun movie to watch during the Halloween season. This is very kid-friendly. If you've never seen it, it's cool. The lenticular cover, I don't know if you can, it doesn't really show up on camera, but it does move in 3D, so it's cool. Adam, is everything you collect a 4K? Do you have fun Mill Creek DVD horror sets or any cheap DVD sets just for fun? So these are all 3D Blu-rays actually that I'm going through right now. So I definitely do have 3D Blu-rays. I have regular Blu-rays, not everything is 4K. The big thing with me is because I know that 4K is an ongoing thing and they're going to continue remastering movies, if I know that something is more than likely gonna have a 4K remaster, I'm not gonna get it on, on Blu-ray unless there's something appealing about the Blu-ray. It has special features that are not featured on the 4K version. It's a 3D movie that maybe is not on the 4K, included with the 4K Blu-ray. Um, but this is really cool. I really love this movie. <clears throat> We've got 3D meatballs coming in hot, coming in hot. From Lord and Miller, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs Part 1, and then Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs Part 2, both in 3D. Uh, I think Lord and Miller stayed on as producers for the second one, but they did not direct um, They did not direct the second one, I believe. Yeah, Cody Cameron and Chris Pern did the second one, but Lord and Miller did the first one. They're both really good. And hey, sometimes you gotta have kid-friendly stuff in your collection because you never know. Friends come over with their kids, you got nieces, you got cousins, whatever the case may be. Another Leica, another Leica masterpiece. This is getting a re-release in 3D in August, and I do believe it's gonna be a 4K remaster. So they'll probably offer it in Dolby Vision, which is such a shame that I can't get it on disc. disc. Coraline, baby. Coraline is amazing. I love Coraline. And this 3D Blu-ray is really, really, really good. Um, yeah, from the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas, who is not Tim Burton, Henry Selick is the director of Coraline, who happened to direct Nightmare Before Christmas. My brother got to test out the Apple Vision Pro at work. They have an IMAX app. Yes, they do. But he told me it says 4K, but it plays at 1080. He said the 3D was really cool. Wes, let me borrow it, please, for the love of God. Yeah, so the IMAX app actually plays all their documentaries also in full screen 143, which is the advantage of having something on the Apple Vision Pro. You can change aspect ratios on the fly and you're not sort of beholden to your TV size or your TV screen aspect ratio. You can go to 143 to 239. The width of the screen can change and all that kind of stuff, so. Do I have Blu-rays of The Secret of Nymph? No, I don't. Do 3D Blu-rays come with glasses? No, but my projector did, and so did my TV. Um, I heard the True Lies 4K is not good because they're using AI for shortcuts. Yeah, I've heard a lot of st I've heard a lot of things about the 4K Blu-rays of Aliens, True Lies, and what's the other one? The Abyss. There is, from what I've heard, there's um, noise reduction. They've scrubbed the film, the film grain, I should say, which is a bummer. I really hate that. Don't do it. Movies back then were shot on celluloid. They have film grain for a reason. It's a part of the texture. It's a part of the characteristics of the film. Don't remove it. 
he removed it for Terminator 2, and the Terminator 2 4K remaster looks like Dookie because of it. Sorry, I still own it. I own it in 4K and I own it in 3D, but I don't necessarily like the transfer. Um, do you think more studios will use AI? God, I hope not. He could only do it at work. He had to rent out. He had to rent. He had to rent out. I got emojis covering the chat, y'all. What the fuck? Had to rent out 30 minute session so he doesn't own it. Got it. You got the Jurassic films in Steelbook? I do not. Seeing JLC dance in 3D, sign me up. Um, I, yeah, I don't have Jurassic films in Steelbook. I know that they did a Steelbook set for all of them in 4K. I kind of only really care for the original. That being said, I like the other ones. I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of the Jurassic World movies, but I do own several of them. I will get to them eventually. <clears throat> Next up, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes in Fresdes. This also looks really, really good in 3D, directed by Matt Reeves. Um, I'm not actually sure how much of this was a stereo conversion versus how much of this was actually composited with uh, 3D elements. Probably quite a bit for the apes, I would assume, having the assets. But this is really cool in 3D. I really like it. This is pressed at uh, 34 megabits per second. So it's a pretty high uh, bitrate pressing for the 3D version. Now, I do love James Cameron, and I know Ryan Unicom will appreciate this if he's still here. I've got Deep Sea Challenge in 3D. Uh, this is not obviously directed by James Cameron, but he's obviously highly involved. It's about his journey to the Marianas Trench. Um, but this is also in 3D. It looks great. It's a National Geographic uh, presentation. Love it. Love the man. He loves 3D, so I love him. <clears throat> so some people don't like this movie. I like the movie. Some people like the 3D. Some people don't like the 3D. It's Dread, baby. Dread is here. And you know what? I'm gonna show you something that I just received. I actually don't know if it's out yet. It might not be out till next week. Hold. Where is it? Get out of here, you son of a bitch. There you are. Four K Steelbook of Dread, courtesy of Walmart. Walmart. This thing is slick. It still has a plastic on it because I literally just got it 45 minutes before I went live. This 4K remaster does, it does include the 3D version as well. So this can go in the trash now. Psych, I'll probably be selling this off. But yeah, this has the 4K version, the 3D version. It's a must for me because I love Dread. It's so good. Fun fact, I met Jim when he did an in-conversation presentation for that documentary. Oh, nice, awesome. Ryan Unicom says, I live here now. Yeah, Dread's great, Dread's great, awesome. That is a sick steel book. Uh, I think it's still available on Walmart for, uh, for anybody who wants one. But yeah, I love it. I think it looks super slick. Yeah, Walmart really has stepped it up. Well, I mean, they've sort of taken, um, they've taken Best Buy's place and they're bringing the goods. So I had to own this one. Next, we've got a whole pile of movies. It's the DC Extended Universe on 3D Blu-ray. So as you can see, I don't have all of them. I have quite a few of them. Um, some of them I think are still available in the US for purchase. I think some of the movies are good. Some of the movies are not that good, but I've got Batman vs. Superman, 3D Blu-ray. Suicide Squad, which, woof. Aquaman, I love. Wonder Woman, so good. No thank you. I like. So, you know, some of these are good. Some of these are not so good. I'm, I'm happy to own them though. Like I like, like I said, I like having sets of stuff. So, and I think that the 3D on these, for the most part, looks really solid. So, no complaints for me. I think Prometheus has the same Steelbook 3D release like Dread. What? And it has the 4K version? Son of a biscuit. I didn't know that. 
someone link me, please, because I, I think Prometheus is pretty damn great, and I think the 3D looked really cool. Um, so, yeah, I would love to own that one. Edge of Tomorrow, not Live, Die, Repeat. Whoever did the marketing on this movie, holy Christ. Jesus Christ on a motorbike. This marketing for this movie was terrible. But the 3D and this movie, top notch. Like, this is a five out of five movie for me, I think. Four, four out of five, four and a half out of five, or a five out of five. It's awesome. If you've never seen Edge of Tomorrow, go watch it. It's so good. They do have, I think, a 4K Steelbook, and the 4K version came out maybe like a year or two ago. Um, looks really solid. I'm really happy that I have the 4K, the 3D version as well. Everest is an all right movie. It's not bad. This is the 3D version of Everest. I think it's, um, I think the 3D looks pretty good. The company that I worked for did all of the 3D work on it. Um, based on a true story, it's a great cast. Jason Clark, Josh Brolin, Jake Gyllenhaal's in here. Like, it's a really solid cast, and I think it's a fun movie. So, yeah, why not? I only own this because uh, the studio sent this to me. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I really am not that impressed with these movies. I think they're so mid at best. Uh, yeah, I just don't think they're good, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say about it. Not that good. Then I got back-to-back -back Disney stuff. Finding Dory and Finding Nemo. Because these movies are made in a computer, you can obviously render them in 3D. So they look really, really solid. And I think by going back and doing Finding Nemo, I think this was like a nice way to do a restoration of it as well. So I got both of these, no complaints. I like them. I think Finding Nemo is better than Finding Dory. Um, some people like the second one more, I don't, but it's still good, just not as good in my opinion as Finding Nemo. <clears throat> <laughs> Flying Swords of Dragon Gate. This is a Jet Li movie. Um, 3D is like really, really big or was really big in Japan and China and all these Asian territories. It still kind of is. Um, I had never seen this. So I bought this not too long ago, kind of a blind buy, hoping that it's really good. And even if it's not, truthfully, I think I only spent like five bucks on it. So why not? Tom Holland's remake of Fright Night with Anton Yelchin and Colin Farrell, not the Tom Holland that you're thinking of, the director Tom Holland. Um, the movie's fine. The 3D's kind of fun though, and I love Anton Yelchin and I love Colin Farrell, so I figured, eh, why not? Why not? Um, a lot of these I also got from a private seller, and he was basically like getting rid of his lot of movies, so I thought, yeah, why not? Like, I'll take it off your hands if you're offering it. I honestly think I got the whole lot for like a hundred bucks and it had a lot of these movies that I've been showing you plus a lot of Avenger stuff as well. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Missing Anton. Yeah, man. So good. Such a good actor. The non Steelbook 4K release of Dread also has the 3D on it. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, all the all the 4K, which is rare. Like not a lot of movies that have the 4K restorations come with the 3D Blu-ray, which is kind of a bummer. I wish that... I wish it was a standard practice, but that's not the case. So I was shocked because I saw the 4K remaster and I was like, uh, but I have the 3D version, I really like it, so I don't think I'm gonna get the 4K. And then I started reading, and maybe it was on Blu-ray.com, and it was like, oh, it actually has the 3D version. I was like, what? <laughs> so I got it. Are you about a shelf deep so far? I'm a half a shelf, or half of a row of a shelf, sorry. Um, Godzilla 3D, I worked on this. So this is a must own. If I worked on it, I gotta own it. I don't have the movie right now. Hector's borrowing it, so it's at his house, but I keep the slips just so I know um, what, what people have. Not even halfway. Listen. I can end the stream if you want. I can go home. I can go home. You know, if you guys wanna ask any questions using the super chat, go right ahead. I'll prioritize those, or if you wanna use the super chat to just give me a title of a movie, then I'll pick it out and I'll talk about it. I really should just be showing them to you. I'm already talking about them too much, I feel like. Next up, I just rewatched this recently. This movie is incredible in 3D, Gravity from Alfonso Cuaron with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. If you have never seen this in 3D, strap on and strap in. Goddamn, it is an intense ride. 
the most, the best use of 84 minutes, it's like 85 minutes long or something with the credits. I think it's like 87, 88 minutes. Incredible movie. Incredible. Magnificent. Magnificent. Does Plex, does 3D Blu-ray work on Plex? Yes, it does. It does. You have to rip the 3D Blu-ray. And when you rip it on MKV, they have an option to choose MVAVH, sorry, MV, it's not HEVC, it's AVC. So it's MVAVC, multi-view, I forget what AVC stands for. So you rip that, it rips both eyes, but when you try to play it, it plays in 2D, just plays one eye. You then have to run it through a program that you can find online. You can just search, Google search, um, make MKV like 3D rip, 3D convert, and it'll actually convert it to a side-by-side Blu-ray, so when you, or video file, so when you open it, it'll have the left eye and the right eye. Then you have to, it has a very specific naming convention they have to use. Um, it's like the name of the movie, the year in parentheses, and then dash, I think it's like sbs.mkv. That way it knows it's side-by-side, -side, SBS. So when you put it on your Plex server, it'll recognize it as a 3D movie. Um, yeah, so, it's in there. Oh, MVC, MVC. Um, yeah, so it's in there. You just got to do a little bit of work. It's a little bit of work, but I think it's worth it. <clears throat> I also worked on this one, the Green Hornet, from Seth, the one with Seth Rogen and um, Christopher Christoph Waltz. Who else is in this? Cameron Diaz is in this, I think, right? And the actor who plays uh, Jay Chow, who plays um, Kato. I like this movie quite a bit. I think it's pretty good. It's fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And I worked on it, so once again, I must own it. This is like my third copy because I've let people borrow this movie and they never give it back to me. Um, I was able to find a couple of the Hobbit movies in 3D. Uh, I've got Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and The Battle of the Five Armies, which I believe are the first two. So I don't have the third one in this set. Um, and these are not the extended editions either. But I would like to get them. I'd like to have all three of them uh, on 3D. That would be really, really cool. But yeah, these were shot in 3D. So there's no conversion mostly. I'm sure there's at least something converted. But um, yeah, they're primarily shot in 3D. So they look good. If you're a fan of Gendy Tartakovsky, Hotel Transylvania is great on 3D Blu-ray. Really, really good. Oh, that is one in three. My bad, my bad. I don't know the Hobbit movies that well, to be totally honest with you. So I need the Desolation of Smaug. That's right. That's the second one. Um, so I need to find that one. But I want, like, I want the matching one. I don't want, like, some alternate edition. I like to just have the set look the same. You know, if I happen to find, like, all three extended versions in 3D, great. Um, but no big deal if not. But Hotel Transylvania from Gendy Tartakovsky is a really, really good movie. Really fun for the whole family. It looks awesome in 3D. The nice thing about animated movies is that you can just render them in 3D. You already have an, a digital camera. So all you really have to do, well, I shouldn't say all you really have to do. There is some craftsmanship to actually making the 3D look comfortable. You don't just duplicate the camera and offset it. Um, it's, a, it's actually, it's a, the cameras are another character in the movie. But they did a really good job with this one. Do you have Surf Ninjas or Double Dragon? I don't, I'm sorry. I feel like I should refund you because I have nothing to show you. What do I, what's like comparable to either of those? Give me another one, give me another one and I'll see if I have it. Was Inception converted into 3D or just 4K? Inception is only available, well it's on Blu-ray, but it's also on 4K Blu-ray. Um, let's see, Inception. Where's my Inception? This is my 4K copy of Inception. It looks great. If you know Christopher Nolan, he authors everything at the highest possible quality. Inception was shot on a combination of 35 and 65 millimeter film. It's primarily shot on 35, but they do. he does 4K rescans of everything or 4K scans of everything. He does a um, uh, photochemical finish and all of the masters for the digital or for the sorry, for the Blu-ray copies come from the interpositive. So he tries to make the, the Blu-rays from the 
cleanest and closest to the original source version of the movie because um, he wants to retain the highest quality possible for the Blu-rays. So the 4Ks are kind of the best way to watch his movies. Um, on top of that, I will actually show you something really cool that I have. I got this from, I think it was from HMV. I think it's HMV that's in Canada. Look at this beauty. How have you never seen Inception? What in the Christ is wrong with ya? Come on. You gotta watch it, man. Inception's amazing. Yeah, Nolan is not into 3D movies. At all. I, th I still think I have the receipt in here, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah. HMV from Canada. I have the receipt and everything. Held on to it. This is the this is the backing that it came with. Boom boom. Then it has this like little booklet that talks about the case. And it talks about like the fictional use of the case as well. Like what the case uh, does and how it works and everything. It's got like full schematics. It's really, really in depth. Um, and then it has a Blu-ray copy of the movie. It's got the title in English and in French. It's got these really cool lobby cards. And then look, oh, there I go, almost breaking stuff. It's got these lobby cards, which are really, really cool. And then it's also got the totem. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? So I love this set. I'm all about buying these really cool collector sets and holding on to them. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm not trying to make money off of them. I just love them. They're movies that I love and I appreciate. So I want to support them in any way that I can. So there you go. Boom. <clears throat> what documentaries grab your attention? Funny you ask, because the next one I'm about to show you is a documentary. Space Station 3D, baby. IMAX documentaries. I love them. I wish that there were more. I, I wish, not more, but I wish that these were readily, readily available. They're not really. They're a little tougher to get. Um, I love the IMAX documentaries so much. And I love IMAX in general. I know everybody knows this already. I won't shut up about IMAX until the day that I die. Um, Space Station and Hubble in 3D were amazing. So I'm working on it. I'm working on getting all those. I kind of want to just hit up IMAX and be like, look, I love your docs. Let me get all your Blu-rays, please. Um, I believe there was a super chat. Okay, yeah, the documentaries, that's the one. Wonder how the Aliens 4K disc will look. Me too. What about the Godfather Blu-rays? Got those, baby. What's my take on the ending of Inception? Listen, man. I don't think that thing keeps spinning. I think it eventually collapses and he's in the real world, but that's just me. Um, so jealous of that case and said that hallway scene lives rent free in my head. Hell yeah, that, that hallway scene is incredible. Since most of the Nolan movies I have are on 4K, I guess I should upgrade Inception to 4K. Yeah, 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 you should. The totem is a nice touch. Wish I would have got that package. Yeah, I don't even know how I found out about it. Here's the thing with me. I've been, I would say I've been, um, Consistently collecting for the last four years, I've been, uh, I've been kind of passively collecting for the last ten. Anything before that was just kind of like, ooh, I like this movie. I'm gonna buy the coolest version that I can find of it. I used to have more stuff. At one point, when I was in LA, my car got broken into and I had stuff stolen. Um, most of those Blu-rays were not super super collectory type of Blu-rays. There may have been one or two in there that were cool that I really liked, but you know, it, it is what it is. Does anyone know if there's a 4K of Danny Boyle Sunshine? I don't believe there is. I don't believe that there's a 4K of any Danny Boyle movie. Can someone fact check that? I know 28 Days Later doesn't have one. I'm pretty sure Slumdog does not. Um, 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 yeah, I don't know. Someone, some, oh, Train Spotting. Train Spotting just got a 4K from Criterion. Um, so he, may, he might have one or two things on Criterion Collection in 4K, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I bought the Looney Tunes Platinum Collection Volume 1 through 3 because I'm so worried about Zaslav will delete them. Well, 
Well, I was moving, Joseph. That's why I had Blu-rays in my car. I was in the process of moving. Um, well, I don't think, he, Wes, he can delete them at this point because they've already been put on sale. Uh, I, I don't think that that would work because they've already, they're already a product on the market. I'll see those nature docs when I get to the Nature Museum Globe IMAX, but I can't get through them at home. Yeah, see, I don't mind. I, I love watching them. I think they're really cool. Um, but of course, yeah, there is an advantage of watching them on a 70 millimeter IMAX screen or laser IMAX or whatever. They look amazing. Does it bother you that people don't care about 4K and are fine with DVD? Well, it depends. Depends on their home theater setup. If they still have a CRT, I don't give a shit if you watch it on VHS. If you don't have a high definition television, then what's the point? If you have a, a 1080p TV and you're having and you're buying DVDs, that's still fine. I wouldn't buy 4K DVDs or 4K Blu-rays and watch them on an HD display. Watch them on a 4K display. So, oh, yesterday is on 4K. Yeah, yesterday in Train Spotting might be it then. All right, here we go. What do we got? <clears throat> I got this because I you know, was excited about Henry Cavill and he, this was before Man of Steel. He did Immortals in 3D. Movie's not that good. It's fine. The 3D's pretty cool. I think some of it is uh, converted, mostly converted, I think. I don't think there's too much of it in native 3D. I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, I'm gonna get flack for this, but I actually haven't had a chance to watch this yet. Inside Out uh, from Disney. This is the 3D Blu-ray. Really cool. Kind of lenticular set. Uh, the person who was getting rid of their collection had this in there along with the other Disney movies. So I thought, yeah, I'll grab all of it. Why not? Nice to have. Family friendly. Let's go. Hector Navarro's favorite film, John Carter in 3D. Uh, we also worked on this. We also worked on this. So I have a ton of shots in this movie that I worked on. I really like John Carter. I think it's a really cool movie. Um, I get it why people don't like it, but to me, it's just a very fun escapist adventure kind of like like if they made john carter in, in the quality that they made dune of course i'd love it more but i still think it's a really fun fun time at the movies i like taylor kitsch willem dafoe's in it it's got a good cast brian cranston shows up in it so yeah i, I dig it um i know ryan unicom is saying henry cavill uh stinky you know what else is stinky my god what a turd I should just give this to Hector, truthfully. I only bought it because it was like literally no dollars whatsoever. It's stinky. Really like this one. Jordanville Roberts really sold me. Kong Skull Island looks really great. Love it so much. I don't think I worked on this one. Laika back again with a vengeance. Kubo and the Two Strings. Adore this movie. Beautiful film. Wonderful movie. I think it's directed by Travis Knight, who went on to do Bumblebee. He directed a couple of the Leica movies. Really great director. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that this is, um, pretty sure that it's Travis Knight. Someone can fact check me if I'm wrong, but love this movie. I really, really wish that the 4K had the 3D version. Such a bummer that it does not. And then we just watched this. I just watched this for the first time. Kung Fu Panda, the original in 3D, and Kung Fu Panda 2 in 3D. I got these for a steal. This says 35. Um, I literally bought it for, I think they gave it to me for like $12. Hard to come by, but it's really, really good. Um, I haven't seen this one yet, so we'll be watching this. If the video does well, we'll be watching this next, or we'll be watching it soon. And then uh, we did watch this one. The YouTube cut down of this will be coming out on Friday. Hopefully, if things render, it'll be coming out on Friday uh, on YouTube. So, really good. Absolute goat of a movie. The Lego movie in 3D. Love it. Absolutely love it. It's amazing. That's all I can say. It's beautiful. I love it so much. Quite possibly the best Batman movie, you can argue. The Lego Batman movie in Tres Des, also top tier, top notch. Love it so much. It's great. From Ang Lee, Life Pi on 3D. Shot in 3D. Looks absolutely stunning. 4K needs, got, needs to have a 3D disc in it. 
Don't fail me, you sons of bitches. Um, again, when it comes to 2D animation, if, there's if there isn't a lot of shading, it's mostly single colors. Harder to see the, the dimension. I accidentally muted myself, um, but it's really, really solid. I love it quite a bit. It's really, really good. <sighs> Mad Max Fury Road, probably the best. One of the best. So good, so good. I worked on this, me. My name's not in it, unfortunately, but I spent like six months working on this movie. The 3D on this is pretty amazing, but it did damn good. And I love this movie so much. I think I accidentally tapped of the microphone. Not muted, not muted. And now is the big show, the big show, baby. Yeah, I got too excited by Lion King. Um, let me just double check. You think Dune 2 will be released with IMAX ratio and Blu-ray? Liam is asking from New Zealand. Thank you so much for that 350. Um, I really hope so. I really, really hope so. The entire movie was shot in IMAX format, so the whole movie is in 190. Select sequences were expanded to the IMAX 70 millimeter um, ratio. So I think the Blu-ray will very likely be pressed in 190 to 1, 190 to 1, not 235 to 1. That would be such a weird choice on their behalf. Um, maybe the stuff that was in 143 could be expanded to 178 on disc, but it's most likely that the whole movie will be in 190 uh, on the disc. Good question, good question. <clears throat> it's time for the MCU. So we've got phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which did not start with Iron Man. They didn't start doing the 3D conversions on those movies until 2010. Um, they started with Thor in Tres Des. Then they did Captain America, the first Avenger in Tres Des. And then they capped off phase one with the Avengers, Los Vengadores. I did not work on this. I did not work on this. I did, in fact, work on this. So, Avengers, the first Avengers was the first 3D movie I ever worked on. I famously tell the story that when I saw the movie, I saw kind of the rough version of it. No color correction, no final visual effects, no final music, no final sound. I thought it looked like a Lifetime movie. The high-key lighting, without any of the flair added onto it, made it look terrible. Um, I'm, I'm just generally not a fan of the high-key lighting. It looks like TV lighting. Didn't have much style. Back then, obviously, nobody gave a shit because it was the Avengers. Um, but the movie ended up being fantastic. So, you know, it is what it is. All lighting aside, the movie's pretty solid. Then we jump into phase two. Phase two is thick and chunky. And I can tell you that I almost worked on all of these. We've got Iron Man 3 in 3D. We've got Thor, the Dark World, not good, in 3D. We've got uh, my favorite, Captain America, the Winter Soldier in 3D. I worked on this one the most. This one was my project. I was one of the artists on it. I worked on it from, I think, November or October 2013 all the way until March or February, February, March 2014, and then it came out in April. So this one has a special place in my heart. I worked on just a little bit of James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1. I definitely worked on quite a bit of Avengers Age of Ultron. 
and I worked on quite a bit of Ant-Man. Ant-Man is technically the last movie I worked on in 3D. Uh, yeah, so kind of bittersweet. The Marvel movies were a lot of work. They would change things fairly consistently. They would update VFX shots all the time. And if you're working on the 3D, you're converting what they've originally given you. So if they make any changes to that shot, if they move Captain America's shield or they change the direction of where the, the shield is flying, it has to be redone. So it was a lot of work to put these things in 3D. Unfortunately, I'm not credited. I have never, never in the 32 movies that I worked on in 3D, I never got a screen credit. Every artist didn't get a screen credit. They were very selective. It was a lot of favoritism, a lot of nepotism, favoritism and nepotism, um, to who got screen credits. It's a huge shame. I wish I have a screen credit on these movies. The only proof that I have that I worked on them is my IMDb, or I can tell you the shots that I worked on, but they didn't release any of the in-process stuff, so I can't even really show anybody how we did it. It's kind of a bummer for for a real. It's 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 a bummer. So, yeah, gonna try to not be emotional about it, but you know, kind of sucks. And then this was sort of the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe on 3D Blu-ray in North America. Doctor Strange was one of them. Looks really, really cool. Um, this slip cover is actually also like super duper cool. I love that. That's amazing. I wish they did more stuff like this. And then Captain America Civil War. The cool thing about the 3D versions is that the 3D versions actually expand to the full IMAX ratio which they don't offer on the regular Blu-rays. So the 3D Blu-rays had tons of offer. Now they have IMAX Enhanced on Disney+, Plus, but before IMAX Enhanced, the 3D Blu-rays have a shifting aspect ratio. Some stuff is in 239, some stuff is in 190. Same thing with this one, it's the same thing. 239 with 190. So it's a bummer that they don't offer this here anymore for these reasons. And then for the rest of phase three and beyond, um, I think the last film to be put out on 3D Blu-ray in North America was Thor Ragnarok. After that, you had to go international. So Black Panther, I got this beautiful steelbook from the UK. This is the 3D Blu-ray, uh, no 4K. This also has the expanding aspect ratio, which looks so stellar. Um, then we've got Spider-Man Homecoming. This one actually, this one was put out in the United States on 3D Blu-ray, but it's a Sony Blu-ray, so that's why they actually made a made one domestically for this movie. Um, after that, we've got Captain Marvel, which I got recently. I was able to pick up on a website called Hamilton Book. And then this one I imported from Australia. When I pre-ordered it, they didn't tell us that it was a region like region three blu-ray this only works in australia and new zealand so and i don't have an i don't have a region free blu-ray player but smart guy i ripped it and i put it on my plex server in 3d so i technically still own the 3d version if you rip a movie and you put it on a thumb drive it'll also play so i can plug in a thumb drive into my projector and then play the 3d version that way Recently rewatched Black Panther, it's so beautiful. Yeah, 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 it is beautiful. Um, didn't Hector have to pay $90 for the Japanese 3D for Doctor Strange? Yeah, he did. Hold. This one right here. He went to Japan not too long ago and he got this for me. It's the 4K version of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but it actually has the 3D version uh, in it as well, which is so dumb. Like they're doing this stuff for the Apple Vision Pro where they're putting out the movies on 4K with 3D. And I'm sitting here going like, why can't you just do this for collectors in the United States? And you know, there's all that stuff going on with Disney now and their deal with Sony where Sony's gonna manufacture or they're gonna release their uh, movies on Blu-ray. But like, why can't we just have this here? 
Why do I gotta go through to Japan and spend ninety dollars? It's so dumb. Come to Australia and we can watch it here. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea, Ryan. Um, a couple more Disney Disney gets. Uh, this is Moana on three D Blu Ray. This was. I don't know if it was this one. This might have been an accidental purchase. I think a friend of mine, their kid was on my Amazon account and accidentally bought this. And I was like, meh, the worst thing you could have bought is Moana in 3D. I'm not so mad about it. And then Monsters, Inc. in 3D, which looks really good. Love it. It's so good. Monsters, Inc. is like all-time classic. This movie is a really, 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 really fun time. My Bloody Valentine on 3D Blu-ray, shot in 3D, looks really, really good. It's a bloody good time, I, I love it. It's super cheesy, super corny. It's the kind of 3D that I think works really, really well because they really take advantage of really doing this whole thing where they get in your face with the 3D. And I think it, I think these are the types of movies you do it for, so. Another Henry Selleck classic, The Nightmare Before Christmas in 3D from Disney. Um, I'm sure this version will show up on the Apple Vision Pro at some point. I don't have the 4K version. Let me know if it looks good. I would imagine it does because it's shot on film. So they hopefully did like nice, really, a really good 4K restoration. But it's Disney, so you never know what you're going to get. Pacific Rim 1 and 2. Um, I think Hector and Augustine worked on the first Pacific Rim. This is such a good movie. What an underrated film. The second one's not bad. I don't hate it. It's not as good as the first, but it's still pretty good. I love me some John Boyega. Uh, but this one right here, this is like next level good. It's ridiculous how good this is. There was supposed to be an IMAX 3D re-release. And I think it was just like a screening that was put on by Collider. I didn't get tickets for it. Otherwise, I would have gone. Another Leica classic, Paranorman. Very, very good. Looks super solid in 3D. Again, you got kids, you know, you got nieces and nephews and cousins or whatever that are younger than you. These are such mov fun movies to get. They're so good. I love Paranorman. Penguins the movie, which is like a spinoff of the Madagascar films. This was at like the dollar bin at Smart and Final. I think I literally bought it for like $1.99. So I thought, eh, why not? On Stranger Tides, this was another one that the studio that I worked at worked on. So I bought it. You know, it's not as good as the first three, but still pretty solid. Predator 3D. Um, 3D is not that great. It was done by AI years ago, like 2013. It's not that good, I don't like it, get rid of it. The 4K looks pretty good, they did a good job. The 3D, I think the 3D has some like AI um, noise reduction. I don't... Yes sir, Prometheus, res des. So if the 4K version has the 3D version, I probably will still keep this because look at this slip cover, man. This thing is gorge, it's a beauty. I might put this in a protective sleeve, man. It's so nice. Love, love, love Pacific Rim. Yeah, Pacific Rim's amazing. I won't lie, for a time I thought that Tim Burton had directed Nightmare. A lot of people did because it says Tim Burton Presents. So people were confused and thought that Tim Burton directed it. They should have just said Tim Burton Presents a Henry Selleck film. Because um, I think for a while he's he kind of got shafted in that, in, that, in that way. And I think he could have been doing a lot more, basically. But couldn't because everyone thought that it was somebody else. Monsters, Inc. is 23 years old now. Thanks, Wes. I hate you. Speaking of Apple Vision Pro, Ready Player One in 3D, Steven Spielberg. Um, not a bad movie. I know the book is like, you know, people feel however they feel about the book. I thought the movie was fine. It was, an, it was engaging, it was entertaining. I think the CG, it looks, and I know that's part of like how it's supposed to look, it looks very cartoony. I think I would have maybe liked it if they tried a little bit more, a little bit more realistic, but I still like it. It's a good one. Yeah, I I think that Tim Burton did write the short story or the story, um, yeah. Shrek 2, I worked on this as well. This was one of the first movies that I ever worked on in 3D. Um, I haven't been able to find the other two. I would love to get the whole set of all four. 
um, and, and own them all since I worked on them. But yeah, they turned out pretty well, I think. Star Trek, can't go wrong. With Star Trek Into Darkness in 3D, I don't like this one as much as the first, but it's still good and the 3D is pretty solid. Um, I love Star Trek Beyond much more than number two. And I think they're both really solid 3D movies. Now the big show, part of the big show. Um, from Gareth Edwards, Greg Fraser, Rogue One, Star Wars Story in 3D. I have not opened this. This is like such a collector's item now that I'm like, you know what? I think, I'll, I think I'll just leave it like this. Maybe I won't open it, but maybe I will because I want to watch it. And then I was able to get, um, for a pretty good deal, this originally came from Amoeba Records. It was $30. I think I got it from Hamilton Book, I think. It was like $5, The Last Jedi in 3D. Because once again, they're not putting them in 3D here. Same thing with The Rise of Skywalker. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. I had these, I got these in the last like three months. Very good though. Very, very good. Very good. Um, hot take. Hot take. Hot take incoming. I don't think the 4K remaster of this movie is very good. They scrubbed of all the grain and uh, you know, movies were made on film. They had grain. Leave it in there, dickhead. You heard me, James Cameron. But the 3D is really good. Really good movie in, uh, in 3D. I love it. It's so good. My girlfriend, who I think is watching, has never seen Terminator or Terminator 2. Calling her out. I got this off of a, a Whatnot stream, which is like, like an eBay Live, basically. This guy was getting rid of Texas Chainsaw in 3D. I know the movie is kind of garbage. But the 3D's pretty good. And I like my horror movies. Uh, near, far, wherever you are, Titanic in 3D is really good. It is one of the best 3D conversions. I will die on that hill. It's so good. So good. And I now own it uh, on 4K as well. Uh, the 4K I think looks really good. But damn, this 3D, pretty good, pretty good. Another one that I worked on that I didn't get credit for. Mm, it hurts. Top Gun, 3D. Love it. Uh, my girlfriend Amy did watch this one and she really liked it in 3D. So I'm super happy to own this one. I actually own the, I own three copies of this movie and I just realized that right now. I have it in 3D. I have the regular version in, in 4K and I have a steelbook in 4K as well, which I'm glad I didn't get rid of, honestly. Um, but the 3D on this is good. I promise. Worked on this one too, Transformers Dark of the Moon in 3D. I have a whole box set of Transformers movies and of course the 3D version is not in the box set, so how to buy it separately. <clears throat> and if you have not seen Tron Legacy in 3D, I got them both for ya. Tron and Tron Legacy in 3D. Tron Legacy is so good. It's got a soundtrack from Daft Punk bonus um and they're making a third one that doesn't have Daft punk doing the music and it has jared leto so i'm not that interested sorry you want to cry do you want to cry you can cry this is such a good movie the opening like 30 30 seconds will make you sob and it's so good in 3d love it love it The company that I first worked for doing 3D conversions did this restoration of The Wizard of Oz in 3D. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I, I'm sure it's really good. Um, I also have this movie in 4K. So again, it goes to show, my collection would not be as big if they would just put the damn 3D versions with the 4Ks. I could get rid of half of this inventory of stuff, but they gotta make it complicated for people like me. We've got a couple of X-Men's, The Wolverine from James Mangold, 
That was a 3D release. I did not work on this one, but I did work a little bit on X-Men Days of Future Past. That's a 3D release, super, release, super good. I think these are both very good movies. I know the I know the X the Wolverine films, you know, people have issues with them and X-Men Origins is a is stinky, but this one's good. Picked this one up recently, World War Z in 3D. Uh, I don't think I worked on this. I honestly don't remember. I don't think I did, but the studio that I worked on, that I worked at, worked on this. I think it's a pretty good movie. I didn't get a chance to finish the book. I would like to go back and finish the book, um, but I thought the movie was pretty good. Wreck-It Ralph. Love Wreck-It Ralph. This also looks really good in 3D. Basically, if it's a movie that's animated or computer generated, it's going to look pretty solid in 3D because they can do it all on the computer. Zootopia, such a good 3D movie. I loved Zootopia. It's kind of a surprise. I wasn't expecting much from it. Okay, we made it through the 3D movies. Uh, that took longer than I anticipated that to take. Uh, so very shortly, we're gonna get to the 4K movies, unless everyone wants to dip out, which I wouldn't blame you, because it's now eight o'clock. Up destroyed me, I seen it in theaters, in theaters in 3D with my daughter. Sorry for your daughter. <laughs> Never seen World War Z, it's pretty good. Does that have the row cut in it? No, uh, it does not. There's a separate Blu-ray for the row cut, which I do own. Would you tell us more about the process of converting films into 3D? Oh my God, how much time do we have? The process to convert movies to 3D depends on the movie. With Top Gun, they went out of their way to find the five cleanest reels that they could find so they could scan the movie in and we could clean it up. So there was a whole cleanup process where we got rid of any scratches, any sort of like dust that was on the print. We digitally removed it. We even removed all the grain so they could do the 3D conversion and then we put the grain back on top. So the process depends on the company, but one of the companies I worked at was they would basically, um, rotoscope every object in the frame. And then we would assign each object a value from zero to one, zero being black, one being white. So let's say the face was at like 0.5 and then you would round the face back. So to put the edges back, if this was at 0.5, this would be like 0.45. So it was farther back than the front of your face. It gets really, really technical, but then they have proprietary tools that would then take that information and use that depth map basically to convert the frame to 3D and extract two eyes or two frames from it left and right. Then there was a whole cleanup process as well because what happens, happens when, you, um, when you shift the pixels, the edges, because the data doesn't exist, it stretches the pixels and you have to paint it back in. Really technical shit, really technical. Anyways, um, Ryan really wants to see Power Rangers from 1995, so we'll give Ryan that one. That took me a while to find. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, baby, from Shout Factory. A really, really good remaster. I don't know what this is pressed at, but it's a pretty high bit rate because it looks really, really solid. My friend Billy Business gave this one to me. Um, he ripped it to his Plex and then he didn't need it anymore, um, but it's great. If you like this movie at all, or this is like nostalgic, definitely pick this one up. It's, it's really good. All right. Are we ready? Luke? Luke, don't you dare leave. I'll kill you. I won't. Um, I would love to say that I was credited on the 3D for Friday the 13th part three. You get me, Adam, I know you do, absolutely legendary. Oh man, yeah, that's such a bummer. The video keeps pausing and now it's playing at like 2X the speed. My stream? Huh, interesting. The current stream bitrate is higher than the recommended bitrate. We recommend that you use a stream bitrate of 6,800 kilobits. That's so dumb. So this thing basically wants me to send it less data, but it tells me I have excellent connection. That's so stupid. 
So stinky. Is anybody else experiencing that issue? Let me know. I don't really want to adjust the stream. I'm giving you more data, you stupid internet. What the hell? Okay, 4K, here we go. <clears throat> 1917 from Sam Mendes, DP'd by Roger Deakins. One of the best movies that I own. This is like a, they call it, <clears throat> what do they call it? Where it's like, um, um, it's basically a reference disc. You can basically use this as reference because the sound and the picture quality is so incredible. So incredible. Love the movie too. Legendary, 2001 A Space Odyssey. This one came from Warner Brothers. This is such a nice set. It's got the 4K Blu-ray. It's got some little knickknacks in here that I can't currently pull out. Oh, here we go. Uh, they're in here. Such a cool set. I love when the studios just go out of their way to just make a really solid set from the beginning. This looks amazing on 4K Blu-ray. Another reference title. Like if you own this, you can show this to someone and be like, this is why you need 4K. The Two Jump Streets, they're really fun, really funny movies. I like them so much, they're great. So I think I could be wrong. These may have been shot on film or they may have been shot digitally and they might have a 2K master um, and up rest of 4K. I'm not 100% sure. This one more so than the first one possibly because the first one I think is from the like earlier 2010s, like 2012, dang, this is like 12 years old now. Um, so this might still be shot on film, but they both look really good. Three hundred from director Zack Snyder. Um, you know, there's a lot of his movies that I enjoy to a certain extent. I don't love them necessarily, but they look really good. I don't remember if this one had a 2K or a 4K DI. I believe it may have even been finished photochemically, and if that's the case, the 4K it's a 4K scan of the original negative, so it looks really good. You work on Pacific Rim. I've got multiple 3D copies where I'll have three to four minutes in your start where images are slightly misaligned. Kind of annoying. Oh, interesting, Liam. Thank you, by the way, for that super chat. I've got multiple 3D copies where I'll have three to four minutes near the start where images are slightly misaligned. That is so strange to me. I'm, I'm going to look at mine to see if I had an issue as well. I don't remember that being a problem, but I'm really, really curious if that is a, a common thing. 310 to Yuma from James Mangold. I know that when this originally came out, people had some thoughts and issues with the quality of the 4K. Um, I think for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. Here's my thing, if you've never owned the movie before, whether it's DVD, Blu-ray or whatever, you might as well just future-proof and get the 4K. I think it looks really good. Yeah. Still haven't watched it. Still haven't watched it. 65 from Adam Driver. Um, I don't know. I, I got it sent to me by the studio, so it's in my collection. I'll watch it at some point and then decide whether or not I want to keep it. <clears throat> Yesterday, my girlfriend says, let's watch a movie. But I want to watch something that's like not heavy. Light. Or not heavy, she said. So she came in here, and this is what she pulled out. Enough said. Solid, solid duology. Can't wait for the for the prequel movie that's coming out with Lupita Nyong'o. Um, really, really, really good. Love these movies. And John Krasinski did a great job. An Ava movie, A Wrinkle in Time. It's fine, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's all right. Ava DuVernay is a great director, but I thought the movie was fine. Surprisingly, this movie is really good. Directed by Gavin O'Connor, who directed Miracle. He also directed, um, Warrior. I think he just recently directed something too. Someone refresh my memory. Something, oh, I think it was, yeah, I don't remember exactly what movie it was, but something pretty recent, but The Accountant's great. Love it. Um, the documentary about my family, there you go. 
Remastered, looks amazing, with more mamushka. Incredible, wonderful, the goat, you love him, Harrison Ford, Air Force One. Uh, this movie broke my brain, broke my brain. What the hell is this movie? Absolute psychoticness. So good though. Listen, I'm not gonna tell you which one is the better one. You can be the judge of that. I have my opinions, but you know, they're both pretty great and they're both family friendly. And if you love them, you'll love them. This one's better. I mean, no, it's not. I mean, it might be. I only have volume one of this director's collection. I desperately need the other two. Um, the Alfred Hitchcock collection, volume one, Rear Window, Vertigo, Psycho, and The Birds. These remasters are so good. So good. If you love Hitchcock, you love 4K, I don't know, you probably should own it. It's good. Yes. Yes. So good. Maybe not so much. Maybe this one. Maybe not so much. This one's better. Surprisingly, Pirate Dad, we're, we've made it to Alita Battle Angel. I do own it. I do own it. The 4K limited edition steelbook that, what does that include? What is that? The 3D Blu-ray. What a thought. I need to put a cover on this thing. You prefer Alien or Aliens? They're both great. I love both of them. I would say Alien is a horror movie. Aliens is a science fiction horror film. So I love both genres. I love science fiction and I love horror. So for me, it's pretty great. No Prometheus? Did you, did you not pay attention? Were you not here? Prometheus in 3D. I, I was just saying earlier that people were saying that the um, 4K version has the 3D, so I might upgrade, but I might still keep this because I think this cover is super, super slick. <clears throat> Did you just say you hate that movie? You hate Alita Battle Angel? You hate it? I have issues with you. I'm um, just kidding. All-Star Superman, based on the comic book that James Gunn is currently making a movie of. So if you don't want to read the comic book, I guess you can watch the movie. Um, I, I got to read the comic again. It's been a while, so I don't know how faithful it is, but it's usually not a one-for-one. One. It's usually pretty faithful, in, at least in the concept. Um, but yeah, you should watch it. Still broken by Clockwork Orange. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's a it's a movie. Do you have Alien Covenant? No, those are the only two I have on 4K. I don't think I have Alien Covenant at all. Do you have a 4K or laser projector? Both. It's a laser projector that projects at 4K resolution and it does 3D. So eventually I'll ever um I'll ever eventually I'll get a I'll get to showing you the whole setup and showing you some demos. But tonight is not the night. Cheesy 80s horror. It's great. <laughs> Jaws, but alligator. It's great. I just got this today. It's still in the packaging. I love this movie. This was the movie that I saw along with Equilibrium that I was like, this guy has to play Batman. And then he did. American Psycho. I don't think this is out yet. This might come out next week or the week after. 
Not 100% sure, but this is such a cool, this is a slip cover. So when you take the slip cover off, it reveals his Patrick Bateman's face. Really, really cool. Animal House, the classic, very good time. Love it. Uh, thank you, Felicia. Thank you so much for hanging out. Really, really appreciate it. Alex Garland's Annihilation with Natalie Portman. This 4K is really, really solid. Um, really, really good movie too. I think it's really, really good. You have Alligator, but do you have Crawl? Of course I do. Speaking of Denis Villeneuve, Arrival, I was lucky enough that I got to go see this movie at the Arclight in Hollywood when it was still there, and he did a Q&A after. It was a good time. <clears throat> this gargantuan set, this gargantuan set of Apocalypse Now, The Final Cut, uh, is, I'm not sure how easy it is to get now, but um, this I think was sent to me by Warner Brothers, Lionsgate, whoever did this. Um, the digital copy's in here, but you, you uh, I've redeemed it. It is the most insane. Like, could, could there be any more discs in this damn thing? Every version, Blu-ray, DVD, 4K, special features, the whole thing. Yeah, Arrival's, Arrival's really good. Have you ever bought a movie because of its artwork cover? I mean, yeah, but usually it's a movie that I really love. So if I'm already gonna invest in a movie that I really love, I'll go out of my way to get the cover that I prefer. Um, like with the Dune one that I was showing off earlier, I got that one from the UK because I love the Steelbook and it had the 3D version as well. So it was a win-win. Love this movie, Atomic Blonde, with Charlize Theron, James McAvoy. I really wish that they would just cross these characters over in the John Wick universe, because she's awesome. I need a sequel. Where is it? These are very, very, very new additions to the collection because they just came out. Avatar and The Way of Water, the collector editions, these are like the four disc, um, everything in the kitchen sink edition that has like all three or all four cuts of each movie. Um, surprisingly, no 3D versions on this. I don't know what they were thinking. Kind of stinky, but can't wait to, to at some point watch these because I know the cuts are pretty long. Um, and I do believe that these have Dolby Vision, they're coated with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So it's like, what else do you want? Yeah, pretty great. This one came from Paramount, Babylon. I haven't had a chance to see this one. I don't know if it's good. Um, I'm usually a pretty decent fan of Damien Chazelle, but you know, I think he's also kind of been, I don't want to say hit or miss, that's not fair. I think this is the only one movie that people were like, ah, it's not my favorite. This is the only one that I own in 4K because it was like a deal. It's Bad Boys for Life. I really liked it, I thought it was really good. Adil and Bilal are great directors and it's a bummer that their Batgirl movie is never gonna see the light of day, but I thought this was a really fun watch. The biggest hit of the year. Someone said that this is the first time Ryan Gosling got to be funny. How dare you, when the nice guys exists. Rude. Absolutely rude. Um, this is a pretty good movie. I did enjoy it. We're on the bees. We got all the Batman. 1989. Batman Returns. Batman Forever. Batman and Robin. I wish that they would have 
uh, press these with Dolby Vision. They're only pressed with Atmos. I don't get, I don't get it. Explain, make it make sense. I also don't like these covers. They look so poo poo and just gross. I don't know why, what this trend is, especially with Warner Brothers, where they redo all of the cover work. Just use the original posters for the covers. I don't understand why you're not doing that. By the way, I think I own the most Batman movies on Blu-ray. Somehow, I don't know how. The first, um, well, some of the first of the Chris Nolan collection. We got Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises, all in 4K. They look amazing. They look as good as you would expect. Additionally, I also own the limited edition. I have number 5,106 of 141,500. It's the Dark Knight Ultimate Collection on Blu-ray, not 4K, on regular Blu-ray, which is all good with me. Damn, I hit my mic again, didn't I? How much of that did you not hear? It's the Dark Knight Collector's Edition. It's good. Um, I was saying it's like one of 140,000, um, but there's a ton of stuff in here. There are some collector vehicles. The Bat, the bat Pod, the Bat, and the Batmobile. And then it's got all the movies on Blu-ray. Batman Begins. The Dark Knight on a dual disc. The Dark Knight Rises. And then a special feature disc that believe it or not has, this is the only release that has this. It's got the original IMAX photography um, on there in the full aspect ratio. It's the only one that has it. I've never seen it pressed on any other release. I don't know why. Don't ask me, I'm just the messenger. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty damn good. Yeah, it is, it is epic. Super, super epic. I'm so thankful that I was able to get one. I think they're still available. Like you have to eBay it obviously. Um, but yeah, this Ultimate Collector's Edition, it was like a must get. The minute that it went on sale, I was like, yeah, I gotta own it. Cause I love these movies so much. So I'm really, I'm really happy that I have it. And it's really cool to be able to have access to that original IMAX photography because Chris Nolan doesn't put it on any of his other movies. I don't know why, but this thing is slick. Where is Lego Batman? Um, I showed it earlier in the 3D section. Were you not here? Were you not here? What else do we got? <clears throat> Matt Reeves, the Batman. Um, Walmart just put the Steelbook back on sale. They're doing like a reprint. So I bought the Steelbook edition, but this one is very slick. Dolby Vision, it's got all the bells and whistles. It looks and sounds incredible. A ton of Batmans in 4K. We've got Batman Hush, Batman Soul of the Dragon, Batman Doom that came to Gotham, 
And Batman The Long Halloween Deluxe Edition. This is one of the newest releases that they put out. So I've got all these on 4K. Really, really cool to have all these. I don't know if I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna necessarily keep all of them. Um, but you know, I think they're I think they're really cool additions to the set. And they're not uh, totally in alphabetical order. That's on me, whoops. And I forgot one. Gotham by Gaslight. Boom. Cap Lives is asking for Mask of the Phantasm. What kind of Batman fan do you think I am? Do I look like Uncultured Swine to you? Pretty good, huh? Not bad, not bad. I did a boo-boo though. I went to take the plastic off and I accidentally took the plastic off of the bottom corner. Really dumb move on my part. Sorry, 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 sorry. <clears throat> Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was actually amazing. Loved this one. Batman year one. So good. This is also another commemorative edition. Batman and Superman Battle of the Super Sons with Robin and Superboy. And believe it or not, that concludes the Batman for now. Really dumb, kind of funny. Baywatch extended cut with The Rock and Zac Efron. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. The Mr. Rogers um, f adaptation with Tom Hanks. The Big Lebowski, The Dude. You gotta own the dude, the dude is the best. Um, this was a Scream Factory copy of Black Christmas. Someone was getting rid of their lot and it's ridiculous how cheap they sold this lot for. So I was like, yeah, why not? Let's, uh, let's put it in here. Where's Batman versus Superman? Well, if you might've noticed, uh, I did show the 3D version, but we have not gotten to the DC Extended Universe section. I also put universes together, so DC, I should put DC Animated Universe, DCAU. Um, I should put the DC Animated Movies in their own category, but for now they're not. And, um, but I do have the DC Extended Universe in one, so you'll see it shortly. The Blackening, which recently came out, um, I was able to get this for a really good deal. I believe it was at Best Buy, so I picked it up. Why not? Wesley Snipes Blade, absolutely must own if you love comic book movies. This was before he was brought back to the Marvel Universe. He was owned by New Line Cinema. So technically this is a Warner Brothers movie. Um, this one is encoded, uh, I, it's not actually. I thought it had Dolby Vision, but it has Dolby Atmos. It looks and sounds amazing though. This is a twofer. We got Blade Runner, the final cut. Absolutely hate that Best Buy put the price tag on the actual slip. Go straight to hell for this. Don't love that. Um, but I do own this amazing Mondo exclusive. I think it's a Mondo Steelbook of Blade Runner 2049. This is the 4K plus 3D Blu-ray. I was able to get this. I think someone actually sent this to me from the UK. I asked somebody, or I put a call out and I said, hey, if anybody can get this for me, please let me know, I'll happily pay you. And a fan sent this to me and didn't even ask anything for it in return. This once again features a Steelbook protective case from um, Malco Protectors. I talked about them a little bit earlier. Steelbooks are notoriously known for getting scratched up and I want to preserve the quality of my steelbooks as much as I can. Malco Protectors was a brand that I found um, scrolling Instagram actually uh, last year. Somebody had these and I was like, hey, where'd you get these? And so I looked it up and 
Um, I had to get them immediately. So I have a link to them down below in the description. It's an affiliate link. So if you happen to buy any of these protectors uh, from, from them through the affiliate link, we get a little bit of a kickback. They're, they don't have them just for steelbooks. Um, they have them even for Blu-rays with slip covers if you want to protect those as well. Um, they also have them for... Um, they also have acrylic protectors, which I think I showed off earlier. I'll show it to you in a little bit, but they have acrylic protectors. They have steelbook protectors. They also have steelbook protectors for steelbooks that have uh, slip covers on them. Regular 3D or regular Blu-ray slip covers. They have all kinds of options. Definitely check them out. It's definitely worth getting. And it's pretty reasonably priced too. You basically get one per, uh, one of them is like a dollar, essentially. So you can buy a 10 pack, 20 pack. The higher packs you buy, it sort of reduces the price of each one of them. So a 10 pack will be around like 10, $11 and so on and so forth. So I think they're really worth it. Uh, also, Denis Villeneuve. Denis, Denis Villeneuve, there you go. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula from Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola. This is a super solid movie that has like probably one of the best casts in the 90s. Really solid film, love it. The 4K looks amazing. The Bridge on the River Kwai with Alec Guinness, most famously known as uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Any old movie like this that has a 4K remaster uh, is a remaster from the original camera negative. And I think this one is shot in 65 millimeter, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's a CinemaScope release, I know that. So it looks so good. Candyman from Nia DaCosta, the director of the Marvels. I liked this movie, I didn't love it, but I also don't think it's as bad as everybody else said. And I think the actor um, who plays who plays Candyman is really, really good, Yahya Abdul. He was also in Watchmen and he's been in a ton of other stuff, he's great. You gotta own Carrie with Sissy Spacek, this is a classic. Also a Screen Factory remaster that looks Epic. <clears throat> they do a really incredible job with all their remaster work. Adam, longtime fan of you and the boys. Thank you for all the awesome content and constantly optimistic and fun inside and all things film. You're the best. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Colton. I super appreciate that. Hey, I'm pretty excited to own Loki and Moon Knight. Hell yeah, absolutely. With the best British accent from Keanu. Oh, are you talking about Constantine? I could not get through that Dracula film. It's been at least 10 years, so maybe I should try again. It's good. I mean, it, I think it was harder for me to get through it when I was younger, but now I think I appreciate it for um, for other reasons, creative, artistic reasons, more so than, maybe more so than even the story, truthfully. But the story's still really good. Carlito's Way, this is an Arrow release. I've never actually seen this one, but it was a deal at Barnes & Noble, so I picked it up. It's Al Pacino and Sean Penn. Um, I've heard really good things about it. This is universal. It's a universal release, but it was a remaster done by Arrow. Um, from everything that I know, it's a gangster movie, which you can't go wrong with, and it's Brian De Palma, who does really good movies like that. <clears throat> the recent remaster of Casablanca, another one that I have yet to see. Uh, this one was sent to me by Warner Brothers, so I didn't actually go out of my way to buy this one. Um, but I've heard nothing but good things. Winner of three Academy Awards, including Best Picture, so it must be kind of decent, right? If you're in the mood for a little Scorsese, Casino, really good movie. I've heard a lot of people kind of dog on this remaster. I think it looks pretty good. I also don't have any insight into what the actual quality of the film negative was when they did the remaster, so... I imagine it must have been a pretty decent quality because Universal does a really good job of, of um, protecting their, their original negatives in the vault. Another Batman related animated movie, Catwoman Hunted. A lot of these animated ones that come from Warner Brothers, they send to me, so I don't always make it a priority to watch them immediately. So I'll eventually get along to watching this, but I'm not sure when. If you want your heart and your brain broken, Chernobyl is for you. This is from uh, Craig Mazin, I think, who did The Walking, or not The Walking Dead, The Last of Us. 
This is such an incredible series, so heartbreaking, and I'm so happy that they put it out on 4K Blu-ray because it deserves it. It's such a good show. Sure, why not? If you're gonna send it to me, I'll, I'll watch it at some point. Not guaranteed that I'll watch it immediately the day that you send it. Um, but I've heard good things. I think I saw this originally when it came out in theaters, but I was too young to probably appreciate it. I think now being a little bit older, uh, I would appreciate it more. Once again, the person who was getting rid of their entire lot um, had some really amazing titles. The entire Child's Play series one, Number two, number three. And all of the sequels, Bride of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, Cult of Chucky. And now they're coming out with the Child's Play remake that came out what one was that? 2019, maybe? I don't know if I'll ever get it, but, um, you know, I, I kind of wanted to prioritize these older ones first. And then I actually do want to get the Child's Play TV series. I think it's just called, is it called Chucky? Uh, the first season was so good, and I haven't had a chance to watch season two, and I think season three might be the final one. A Carpenter classic, Christine, from 1983, I want to say. This is 1983. In any case, the remaster is really good. The movie's great. If you saw Halloween Ends, this movie takes, or that movie takes a lot of inspiration from Christine. I really like this movie. It's really, really good. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. For me, this is like a must watch every Christmas holiday. I know some people maybe don't like it. I showed it to my girlfriend and she was like, yeah, it was fine, which I get it. If you didn't grow up on it, then you're not really gonna like have an appreciation for it. You're gonna think it's just like a cheesy 80s Christmas comedy, which it basically is, but I think it's really good. Warner Brothers went through this whole phase, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before where they put a ton of uh, 4K remasters out. Another one of those was A Christmas Story. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this movie for no reason other than everyone hypes it up so much and every time I watch it, I'm like, it's fine. I don't know. Cliffhanger got a remaster not too long ago. Um, really, really cool. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet, but the cool thing that I like about all these remasters that are coming to Steelbook from Sony and Lionsgate, they've all got Dolby Vision on them, which I so appreciate. So I, I cannot wait to rewatch this one. A lot of the Steelbooks I've been hesitant to open because I didn't want them getting all scratched up. So thanks to the Malco protectors, I'm now able to um, put all the protectors on there and basically watch them at any point because I'm not worried about them getting all dinged up and scratched. Close Encounters of a Third Kind, I was able to find this one for a really good deal. And it's, you know, a Spielberg classic, so I had to grab it. It's really, really good. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I think I need to do a revisit because it's science fiction and that is my jam. I think this is Matt Reeves' first movie, Cloverfield. Surprisingly, like the 4K looks really good, but it's shot, I think, on HD, like DV. They did a really nice job with this one. And I think they really retained a lot of like what made this found footage style um, kind of groundbreaking back then. I know we had Blair Witch, but that was all supposed to look like DV cam, really early sort of uh, entry into like the digital realm. This is kind of in the middle of it. This is 2008, but I think they did a really nice job with somehow preserving the look and feel of it without making it look truthfully kind of crappy on 4k because it's a high, such a high resolution <laughs> i cannot stand a christmas story i mean i think that's how a lot of people feel about certain movies i think there's a lot of them that people adore and other people don't because they didn't grow up with it truthfully controversial i don't think elf is as good as everyone else says sorry just my opinion, just my opinion.
<laughs> Ryan Unicom, of course, texting me the Godzilla minus one 4K Blu-ray that has the color and black and white versions. Come on, man, just send it to me already. Can't go wrong with Coco. So good. Love it. If you're interested in seeing uh, Tom Cruise as a villain, Collateral is a must. Such a good movie. He's amazing in it. He's almost unrecognizable when you first started because you don't even realize it's him. Um, another one of those interesting movies that was shot on HD cam, somehow the 4K remaster didn't bring out all the faults of shooting on HD cam. It looks really, really good. One of these is new and one of these is semi-new. The Color Purple from Steven Spielberg. This is like an 80s classic. And then the new Color Purple that doesn't come out for another week, I think, or two weeks. I just got this yesterday in the mail. This is actually not a remake of this. This is the original adaptation. And then this is the adaptation of the musical that was inspired from this movie. So kind of like what Mean Girls did earlier this year. Uh, I haven't had a chance to see either of these yet, so... I've got some homework to do. I'm a sucker for our Liam Neeson cheese fest. The commuter is ultimate cheese. I love it. It's like a taken movie, but on a train. It's great. I love the conjuring one. I did not love the conjuring three. The devil made me do it. Thank God that Warner brothers sent this to me. Cause I would never buy this. Sorry. I probably shouldn't say that, but it's a no-go. This is another new release, Contagion. This is a MOD release, so it's made on demand. That's why it doesn't have a slip cover. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Losing my voice. Ooh, that's good Wauda. Uh, this is a Steven Soderbergh movie that came out, I think in 2011, maybe. This movie was so popular when COVID started because everyone was freaking out, rightfully so. Um, but, you know, Contagion, the title the title describes the movie. Um, but this just came out, it, it either just came out or it might not be out yet. It might be out this week. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it's good. The Contractor from Chris Pine. I haven't seen this movie yet, so I don't actually, I can't vouch for whether or not it's good. Um, the folks at Paramount were nice enough to send this one to me. So eventually I'll get around to watching. Aisha says, this is impressive. Aisha, this is psychotic. Why did I decide to do this? I don't know. So good. So you've got this on DVD. I didn't know this. This is actually captured with a 6.5K camera. So I thought this was a much lower res movie and I thought, I don't know how this is gonna look. It looks really good in 4K, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, but as it should. <clears throat> this is another classic that I haven't seen, but this was part of the 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers. They did this remaster last year, Cool Hand Luke. There's a lot of, I have a lot of blind spots when it comes to these old classic 60s, 70s, 50s movies that are considered classics, but uh, you know, I'll get around to it eventually. The Cornetto Trilogy. If you love a good, wholesome, good time, the Cornetto Trilogy is where it's at. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz and World's End from Edgar Wright, of course. You can't miss with these, these guys. Nick Frost, Simon Pegg, all timers. <clears throat> the contractor, the commuter, the accountant, the beekeeper should team up. That is the holy trinity or the holy grail of Avengers, of non-superhero characters. <clears throat> um, this trilogy is pretty damn solid. One of them is directed by a first time director. 
Um, and it started with the amazing Ryan Coogler, Creed, Make Me Cry Every Day, Please. Creed 2 from Stephen Cable Jr., a really good follow-up to Creed in my opinion. And despite everything that's been going on with Jonathan Majors, I think Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut in Creed 3 is really good. I am not mad to be owning this trilogy. They're a really, really good set of movies in my opinion. Did I miss Rush Hour? As in the traffic jam or the movies? Because uh, we're not on the Blu-rays yet. Emma Stone is Cruella. Honestly, I have not seen this yet, so I can't vouch for it. Uh, it might be good, it might not be. I don't know, you tell me. This one popped up on Amazon for $12. Cujo, the killer dog. Had to get this one. This is a Kino Lorber remaster in 4K. It was literally $12. You literally cannot say no. It's so good, so cheesy. I loved it. This one came out, I think, maybe two weeks ago, I pre-ordered this literally the moment it was available to pre-order. Dark Man from Sam Raimi, starring Liam Neeson. If you have not seen Dark Man, good God, man, what are you doing? Who is Dark Man? This was basically a, a more indie, cheesy, lower budget version of Batman. It's so good, it's one of the best, and it looks very, very good on 4K. Of course, with it being um, a 4K remaster, it's all done in 35 millimeter. The visual effects are these processed scans, these processed um, effects and all these sorts of things. So it looks a little rough at times, but that's just how the movie looks. There's no reason to clean that up. That's part of the character of the movie. So really happy I was able to get this one. Yeah, see, Darkman is a beautiful 4K. Thank you. Um, again, say what you say about the, uh, say what you want to say about the director. Yes, his movies are very um, hit and miss. This is directed by the guy who directed Man of Steel, and it's written by the guy who is directing Superman. Zack Snyder and James Gunn team up for Dawn of the Dead. This, is, in my opinion, is a really, really good movie. I really uh, have enjoyed it, and I'm really glad that Shout Factory or Scream Factory decided to do a remaster two months after I bought the Blu-ray version. Thanks. Tom Cruise classic, Days of Thunder. Can't go wrong. Thank you, Paramount, for sending me this one. The Merc with the Mouth, Deadpool. Bought this one, it originally came out in 2016. I don't even have a, any clue if it had a slipcover when it first came out, um, but I need to get Deadpool 2 to complete the set. <clears throat> Deepwater Horizon, pretty solid movie. I don't know if this is like a must own, but it was on sale for seven bucks, so I thought, well, I'll blind buy it, and if I like it, I'll keep it. If I don't, I'll get rid of it. Peter Berg, uh, Mark Wahlberg, I think they're a pretty good pair. All right, we made it to the DC Extended Universe, so strap in. As I mentioned, I do not own Man of Steel on 4K. Um, it wasn't available back when I started collecting, and I just never gone back to get it because I'm pretty happy with the set that I have. And I've heard kind of mixed things, truthfully, about the 4K remaster. So I I'll wait until maybe they do a second pressing, but. I do have Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, the Ultimate Edition. This is the newest 4K that they did, where Zack Snyder went back and did a ba basically a, a new remaster. This has the original IMAX footage restored at the full resolution. Then I have Suicide Squad in 4K. Woof. Wonder Woman in 4K, which looks great. Justice League, the theatrical cut. Woof. Then I've got, oh, there we go. Then I've got, I accidentally picked up Justice League again. Then I've got Shazam, Aquaman, which looks amazing, Birds of Prey, which I really enjoy, Wonder Woman 1984, and not so much.
Zack Snyder's Justice League, which credit where credit is due, all of the DC movies, except for Man of Steel, I believe are mastered in 4K. They all look really, really good. I think a lot of them, not I don't think all, but a lot of them were also shot on film. So they have the advantage of being scanned in at really high resolutions. They look really solid. So I, I think they look really great. The Suicide Squad from Jimmy Guns, who as we all know is running the DCEU now or the DC Universe now. This one looks really, really good. This one is, is actually done in the full digital IMAX ratio, one nine to one. Um, Black Adam, I really wish that it would have been better. Sadly, not so much. Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Didn't love it, unfortunately. I really wish I would have loved it. The Flash, no. Michael Keaton's great, but otherwise, not. I didn't really like it. This was a surprise for me. I adored Blue Beetle. So good. Loved this movie. Then Aquaman 2, the final installment of the DC Extended Universe. I also just got this in the mail yesterday. Uh, sadly, a disappointment. I did not love this movie. So I have all the DC Extended Universe on 4K Blu-ray. I don't have Peacemaker yet. I do want to get it. Um, but yeah, Peacemaker is another great addition. Deep Impact, classic. Classic from the 90s, baby. You can't go wrong. Devotion with Glenn Powell and Jonathan Majors. I haven't had a chance to see this one yet. Paramount sent me this one. I'll get around to it eventually. One of the best Christmas movies out there. I don't care what you say. Die Hard. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. W uh, Wonder Woman 84 was mid, even if Papa Cito Pedro was in it. Unfortunately, that is the truth. That is the truth. Adam, as we near three hours, I might need to tap out, but I will stay for another 15 minutes. Have I been live for three hours? Are you serious right now? That is crazy. The only redeeming quality of Black Adam is Dr. Fate. Truth. 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 The bad thing about this stream is it's pointing out holes in my collection. Hey, like I said, you don't need to own everything. Own what you love. It's worth mentioning that I'm lucky enough that studios do send me a lot of these things early too. So I, I have them because the studios send them to me. Uh, Dirty Dancing, the 35th anniversary. This one is from Lionsgate. Really nice. Looks great. Dolby Vision. You love it. For some reason, I own this movie like four, I own four copies of this on Blu-ray because I guess I love it so much. District 9 finally came out with a 4K Blu-ray not too long ago. I loved this and adored this movie when it first came out in theaters in 2009. I saw it so many times and it inspired a lot of things in my life and inspired a lot of my like creativity as well. Detective Pikachu, it's not bad. I think I like it more than most people. It's pretty good. If you have not seen this movie, immediately watch it. Immediately. It's amazing. The sequel to The Shining. Ewan McGregor plays the, the older Danny. It's got Rebecca Ferguson. What more do you need? It's so good. I heard this was very bad. Yeah, I heard this was not great. I have not watched it yet, and I don't know if I will. An 80s classic, I believe this is an 80s classic. 1981, Dragon Slayer. This is the steel book. I do need to put a protective case on this one. So I'll definitely be applying one of the Malco protectors on this. The cool thing about this steel book is that it actually has a slip cover. So this is the slip and this is the steel book cover. Look, that is fucking dope. That's so cool looking, give me a break. So really cool that it has the slip to protect the steel book. And then if I wanna be super protective, I can put an additional Malco protector case on it and really protect the movie.
I showed off this one earlier, but I'll show it again real quick. Doom Part 1, 4K Blu-ray plus 3D. This one I got from the UK. This is in an acrylic case. This is also an acrylic case from Malco. This part slides off and then the movie comes right out. In my opinion, this is a little bit easier than their plastic cases, um, but this is definitely like something you're displaying, not something that you're like turning, turning away and not showing off the front cover. Um, I love this protective case, it's so cool. I put a link in the description for the Malco protectors and I know some of the mods, Wes, thank you so much, is, are putting the links in the chat as well. If you want to protect your steelbooks or even your standard 4Ks with the slip covers or any other sets that they might have that will fit, I know their stuff also fits Criterion, definitely check them out. It's worth checking out in my opinion. Uh, this was so good. I had no clue that this was gonna be any good. I love this movie, straight up, it's awesome. Another Chris Nolan must have, Dunkirk. I think Dunkirk was the first movie that he shot exclusively in 65 millimeter. So this switches aspect ratios from 220 to 178. Uh, really, really good movie. And the shortest one he's ever made in an hour and 45 minutes. I know I showed off the, the 3D version earlier, but this is the 4K for Edge of Tomorrow. I wish they would have just put the damn 3D Blu-ray in here and made my life easier, but no. The one that everybody loves that I think is fine, Elf. I don't dislike it, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. East of Eden, James Dean, haven't seen this one yet. This one was sent to me courtesy Warner Brothers, so thank you. I'll eventually get around to watching it. For the love of God, don't tell my grandmother that I still haven't seen Elvis. She will literally kill me. She's been telling me to watch this movie for like a year. Um, no reason why I haven't seen it. I just haven't gone around to it yet. But Austin Butler was great as Fade Rotha in Dune Part 2. So I will swear to God, I promise I'll watch this soon. But it looks really good. Um, Paramount Presents is a line from Paramount Studios that does these really cool remastered either on Blu-ray or now they're doing a 4K movies with these really cool collector uh, collector packaging. This is Elvis Blue Hawaii. Um, I haven't had a chance to see this one, but it looks really, really good. <clears throat> do you have my favorite Christmas movie, Scrooged? Uh, yes, sir. Sure do. For the first time on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, Scrooged. This remaster looks very, very good. Love it, really good. Bruce Lee, the one and only, Enter the Dragon. Yes, sir. Uh, this remaster also looks really good. Warner Brothers doesn't usually miss. Like, I don't know the last time I saw a uh, Warner Brothers movie on 4K remastered that didn't look good. I'm sure there's one, but I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, truthfully. Shout Factory is kind of my go-to for the Carpenter classics, Escape from New York, Kurt Russell at his finest in the 80s, Snake Plissken, you love him. Listen, if 13 going on 30 doesn't have a 4K, and daddy don't own it. I'm calling your grandmother right now, Adam. Ah, don't tell her, please. Austin Butler will never not be Fade Rotha now. Doesn't matter what role he has in the future. Yeah, seriously. May your blade chip and shatter, mama. That's so funny. Let's see some foreign films. Um, I have a few, not a ton. I have some cool collector sets. Actually... Where the hell is my one car Y collection? Oh, it's down here. I'll, I'll show it to you later. I have my one car Y collection, really good. 
Sorry, I almost like freaked out because I was like, I bought that thing when it went on sale. Where is it? And I do, of course, own the sequel, Escape from L.A. I, I think people regard Escape from New York as the superior one, and I would agree with that. I still think Escape from L.A. is kind of a good time. It's not as good, but I'll give it to them. Then I have this copy of E.T. This is the one that I got after I bought the first one, and then before I bought that other one I showed you earlier. Event Horizon, this is an amazing steelbook uh, from Paramount. They sent this to me. And this, again, is in the Malco Protector. So this steelbook also has a slipcover over it to protect it. So when you take the slipcover off, it reveals whatever's underneath here. But it's great because it's not going to get damaged because it has the amazing protective cover. Best pick winner, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Listen, I think it's a good movie. I don't think it's the greatest movie. People went crazy for it, which is fine. Um, it's very good. I will say that for sure. It is very good. I've got me some Evil Deads. This one's super solid. I need to complete the set though. I don't have the rest, but I do have Evil Dead Rise, which a lot of people said was really, really good. So I gotta watch it. I haven't had a chance yet. I'm pretty sure that this is the first 4K Blu-ray I ever bought. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Ex Machina from Alex Garland. I was really blown away by this movie. It's got Alicia Vikander, Donald Gleason, uh, Oscar Isaac is in it. This was kind of the first time I was introduced to all these actors. This is really, really good sci-fi. I, 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 I think it's pretty incredible, truthfully. Um, if you don't own it, watch it. I've got some spots in my Exorcist collection, so please don't hate on me. The original Exorcist, which this 4K looks really, really good. There's a couple of, of issues in it, uh, particularly in the subway scene where you see the subway headlights. There's you know a little bit of um, overexposure and not so solid of a remastering work done on those, uh, but it's still good. Exorcist 3, which I haven't had a chance to see this one. This was part of the lot that I bought. Um, where the person was getting rid of a ton of stuff. And then this one was sent to me on behalf of Universal. I have heard not so great things about this one. So, you know, I'll eventually get around to it, but it's not priority. And David Gordon Green's not even doing the sequels anymore. So who knows if they'll, even get, if they'll ever even get made. If you want some insight into Spielberg's life, The Fablemans... I got this one for a, for a discount, obviously. I got it from Barnes & Noble. Absolutely hate that the stickers are on here. Who the fuck does that? Why do you do that? Yeah, Ex, Ex Machina does have a really good score. <laughs> we have hit three hours, which means Wes is leaving, and I don't blame you. Jesus, if I spent 15 seconds per film, it would take me over three days. How dare you? Are you judging me right now, Adrian? Is that what's happening? Or are you saying that your collection is so enormous that you would never get through them? Tom and Adam, what do you have with the HD Blu-ray after the 4K restorations arrive? What do you, oh, what do you do? That's an excellent question. I've got a whole stack of uh, HD movies down here that uh, I will be selling soon. And I will let you know when I'll be selling those. Um, I'm gonna be selling them on whatnot, just so I can, you know, get rid of some of my inventory and just clear things up a little bit. Um, definitely keep an eye on Discord and on my social media. I will definitely be promoting that when that happens. If you have the WhatNot app, you can actually search my name and add me on there now. And then as soon as I'm free, freed up to do my first live, I will. I recommend the Korean film, The Good, The Bad, The Weird. Okay, awesome. My dad walked out of the theater with The Exorcist. I don't think he'll ever, he's ever seen the entire thing. I haven't seen it at all. It's good. Do you rip all of these and put them on your Plex server? Zero key. If I had the time to rip these all to my Plex server, I would. I am so, oh my God, my girlfriend just bought me two glasses of water and she just hit something on the mouse and stopped the live stream. No, she didn't, just kidding. Um, 
I wish I had the time to rip all of these to my Plex server. I don't currently, and I don't technically have the space to do it either. I have a ton of stuff on our server that I need to consolidate and I'll eventually get around to it, but I would like to, yes. My notes for episode 19, my, my notes for the episode, 1907 to three hours, Adam goes through his collection. Thanks, Wes. Thanks. The stream has now surpassed Avengers Endgame runtime at three hours and two minutes. Fuck me. We haven't even gone. We're not even through the ease yet. What am I going to do? How long is this thing going to be? I will be here streaming by myself at three in the morning while my girlfriend is sleeping. Probably. Should I do that? Is that dumb? That's probably dumb, isn't it? Well, anyway, here we go. Like I said before, I'm not the biggest fan of Fantastic Beasts, but I have them thanks to Warner Brothers, where to find them, and whatever the fuck the sequel, sequel is called, The Secrets of Dumbledore. I've never watched them. I've got folks in the family who are Harry Potter fans, so I hold on to them for the time being. Do you have Denis Villeneuve's Incendies? I do. I do. I can't do a part two because I'll never get around to doing it because next week we're doing a regular podcast. And then every week after that, we're doing a podcast. So when am I going to do it? When am I going to do it? I don't know when. Um, these were sent to me by the studios, so it's the only reason why I own them. Like I said before, I would rather just own them in one collector set. The shrink wrap is still on them. That's how much I haven't watched them yet. F9, The Fast Saga, and Hobbs and Shaw. I actually think that this one probably wouldn't end up in a collector set. Um, I actually really like this movie. I don't know why I haven't taken this out of the plastic wrap yet. I should watch this. Some of the digital codes expire, and I probably should just redeem the damn things. Might as well. Oh, wow. These ones are actually coded with Dolby Vision and HDR10+. Plus. Damn, Universal, you did good. HDR10 plus and Dolby Vision? Holy shit, who would have thought? This one came out not too long ago. This is from Shout Studios, Fargo, from the Coen Brothers. This is classic cinema. You gotta watch Fargo. I know the show gets all the, all the praise, but this is the one that started. You gotta watch this movie, it's so good. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, classic. You gotta love it. Thank you, Paramount. See, this is why like, this is why the protective covers are so helpful because I get so many steel books now and I don't want them all scratched up. So thank you, Malco Protectors. Um, I've never seen a single Fast and the Furious film. Kira, what the fuck? Come on guys. Get with the program. If Christopher Nolan endorses it, it must be kind of good. Uh, no, I'm kidding. It's not for everybody. I think if you're just into a fun, if you just want a fun time with action, it's it's they're they're good. I like them. They're fun. Saw the first Fantastic Beast and thought it was okay. I have no real interest in seeing the rest. There you go. Is there a 4K you haven't been able to find yet? Funny enough, the Fifth Element. This was a remaster done by Sony uh, a few years back. And then Studio Canal picked it up and did another new remaster. And I hear that that remaster is actually better. I have not been able to find the one from Studio Canal. It's hard to get, um, but yeah, eventually at some point, but it still looks pretty good, honestly. I shouldn't say pretty good, it still looks good. If you, if you didn't, if you put them side by side, you might notice a difference. If you don't, you probably wouldn't. Five Nights at Freddy's, I have not seen this movie yet, but I know the game is super popular, and I think the movie did well enough that they're gonna do another one, right? Last Dance, 80s classic, thank you to Paramount for this one. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet, but it's a classic and I've heard nothing but good things, so I'm sure it's pretty solid. The fact that this one, I don't think, doesn't have the soundtrack is kind of a crime, but one of the things that inspired Star Wars, not this version necessarily, but the idea, the concept, Flash Gordon from the 80s, this is an Arrow, this is from the Arrow collection, really good, and the soundtrack is done by Queen, so what the fuck else do you want? We're on to the Fs. 
Uh, there's a sequel confirmed for FNAF. Nice, nice. It's at 3:30 a.m. You'll be showing off Zo Zoolander, Zombieland, and Zootopia. Yeah, and then we'll have all the HD Blu-rays to get through. I just can't get over Shaggy being purple, man. Dude, Flashdance. I gotta watch it. Carpenter classic, The Fog. This was, I think, the first movie that him and Jamie Lee Curtis did after Halloween. Um, it's so good. I love it. Um, Star Lord, Peter Quill's favorite movie, Footloose, starring Kevin Bacon. This one's sem semi new as well. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. Uh, Paramount also sent this one over. Ryan Reynolds reunited with uh, Sean Levy for Deadpool 3. This is Free Guy that has some pretty cool cameos in it. Maybe some of those cameos will show up in Deadpool 3. Who knows? Long Live the Fugitive. This movie is so good. You're leaving me, Wes? Bye, folks. You be good while I'm gone or there will be hell to pay. Thanks, Wes. I feel like I need to keep the I feel like I need to keep the Kubricks away from my girlfriend before she's like, oh, I'm gonna watch a movie that doesn't break my brain. Let's watch Full Metal Jacket. Jesus Christ. Really good though. Fury from the director who won't stop talking about Suicide Squad on his goddamn Twitter. Let it go, dude. Just let it go. Good movie. I love Gattaca. This came out in like 1997, I think. Ethan Hawke, Jude Law, and I think it's Uma Thurman. Um, a really interesting like sci-fi movie from Andrew Nichol. Um, I haven't seen it in a really long time. So I gotta, I gotta throw this one in. I gotta watch this one at some point. This one surprisingly does not have Dolby Vision, but it does have Dolby Atmos. So it must be pretty good. <clears throat> Ang Lee's Gemini Man. I think I could be wrong. Someone correct me. It's been a while since I put this one in the 4K player. This one, no, I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that the 4K disc is not at a higher frame rate. I'm pretty sure the 4K disc is, am I wrong? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure the 4K disc is at 24 frames per second and not in high frame rate. Oh no, I'm wrong. Film and special features in high frame rate, 60 FPS, which is so weird because the whole point of why he did, um, well, this movie was actually shot in 120 frames per second and I saw it in I think one of three theaters in the whole country or the world that was playing it at 120 frames per second in 3D. It was an experience, it was interesting. I think it's just a little too jarring for me. I think 60 frames per second would have been plenty for the 3D to look smooth. Um, I also honestly just think that 48 frames per second looks fine with, um, with 3D as well. I don't even think you need 60. I definitely don't think you need 120. Watch Gattaca in biology class. <laughs> Gotta get my weed on. This is getting deep. You better get that weed quick. Yeah, be like Elsa and let it go, David Ayer. Shit. All right, now that the mods are gone, let's throw a rave. Who's on the lookout for the cops? Oh, boy. Was going to mention your collection rivals Nick Frost characters. <laughs> Was going to mention your collection rivals Nick Frost characters in Hot Fuzz. Uh, well, you never know. Wait, 120 FPS plus 3D? That's a lot. It was. I mean, it took maybe the first like 10 minutes to get sort of adjusted to it. Um, but once I got adjusted, it was it, 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 it was fine. It's just not my preferred way. I think 48 frames like Avatar The Way of Water was plenty. 60 is already too much. You know, I'm, I, I think that it's okay if 3D has a little bit of motion blur. Plus now there's a company out there that does really good 3D mastering and they can use high fr the high frame rate remastering and they can really tone it so it looks like 24 frames per second. Um, so it's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna take a break for literally five seconds to use the restroom really quick and then I'll come back. So please bear with me, don't leave, I'll be right back, I swear.
What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for sticking around. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys are having a good time. I know this is like, I knew that this live stream would be pretty long. I kind of expected it because I one have a do I do have a really big collection, and two I'm not gonna just like be like Gattaca, this movie, that movie. I like to give a little bit of context. So even if I take ten seconds per movie and there's a thousand movies, um, it's kind of impossible to not spend time. So I'll definitely try to go as fast as I can because I know that you know not everyone's gonna stick through this for the foreseeable future. At some point you're all gonna bail out and I'm gonna be talking to myself on a stream. Um, one of the things that we've, we've mentioned multiple times is now we have like a little bit of a studio space. So any support from you guys, whether it's through Patreon, through Super Chats, um, through your viewership, it massively, massively supports us and it helps us to keep the studio it's not a definitive thing. You know, if we get to a point where we're unfortunately not bringing in enough revenue to hold to the, hold on to the studio, then it's gonna be the first thing to go because we have other priorities that we have to pay for. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoying having you guys here. So thank you so much. I know that the stream is long, um, but it's so cool to just hang out with everybody. If you have questions, by the way, that are not related to a damn thing that I'm talking about, ask away. This is really the most time that we've been able to have one-on-one -on -one time and I really love it. So if you have questions about anything, for sure ask away. It doesn't necessarily have to be related to the Blu-rays that I'm showing you. Um, even if it's like personal questions or you have questions about um, the channel or whatever, go ahead and ask away. It's just me and you, it's just you and I hanging out. So take advantage of it. He doesn't have the Super Chats turned on. I do have the Super Chats turned on. Um, did I miss any? Let me double check. Yeah, the last one that I saw was from Liam, Liam Morgan um, asking me if I worked on Pacific Rim. So I hope I didn't miss any. That's all I can see. So I'm sorry if I've missed it. Not speaking for everyone, but your time is precious, Adam, and thank you for giving so much to us. I'm in the long run from this stream. Let's fucking go. I'm off today. This is fucking dope. I just checked my Libib and I have 397 movies, TV, DVDs, and Blu-rays. It wouldn't take me nearly this long to go through them. Are you judging me? Are you judging me right now? I'm curious if Adam is in top chat mode. I'm in live chat mode. I think he skipped over my question a couple times now. Oh, let me see, JMB. Did I not? JMB, was your question a super chat question or was it just a regular question in the chat? Because if it's a regular question in the chat, it doesn't get flagged, so I may accidentally skip over it. Um, but I'm not doing it intentionally. I might be, it might be when I, your question might come through while I'm in the middle of talking about a movie. So that's about it. Do you have The Exorcist? Yeah, I actually just showed it off. I have the 4K remaster of The Exorcist. I got this, I don't know how long this has been out now. This has been out now for I think like six months maybe. It's good, I really like it. For some reason I'm fixated on the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I need a steel book of that. Uh, yeah, I, th I think you could still get them. I'll get, them. I'll get to them shortly. No judgment, but watching this made me curious as to how many I actually had. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Sorry, it wasn't gonna get paid tomorrow. Oh, I mean, you can still ask questions. I'm up late setting for a midterm tomorrow. Thanks for giving me something to tune into in the background. No problem. I did send a super chat sometime back that got skipped. Let me see, Pirate Dad. I wanna make sure that I get to all of them. Will you, oh, was it the one about picking up the newly announced Disney Plus shows on Blu-ray? I thought I answered that question. Um, I will be picking them up, yeah, because I, from the Mandalorian, the 4K Blu-ray versus the streaming is much, much better. So I will be picking those up. Um, oh, as a fellow Czech and massive nerd, I approve of this collection. Yiki mots, yekui mots, yekui, yekui, yekui. That's really cool. Um, super appreciate that. Thank you, Pirate Dad. Did I know that you were Czech? I may have known that, may not have known that. Would you also kill the baby in Aquaman 2? Listen, y'all, I'm not trying to get this stream shut down. Nice, that's my favorite movie. I own it in 4K steel 
Sealed book edition. Oh, the Exorcist. Yeah, I <clears throat> I was really debating whether or not I wanted to go out of my way to get like a really definitive version. There's there were quite a few, and I think I settled. I was like, I think I'm good with this one that I got from Warner Brothers. I really like the movie. I don't know if I love it so much that I need some collector's edition. Hey Adam, how would you recommend starting out on building up your physical media collection? Like starting out buying the physical versions of media you like, maybe or shadow buying like you did um great question in my opinion you should start out with movies that you genuinely love and adore movies that you don't want to go hunting on a streaming service for movies that you want to be able to just walk into your room pull off a shelf and immediately watch that could be 10 movies that could be 40 movies that could be 600 movies start small buy one at a time um, you know, set aside a, maybe a budget for yourself every month. You got 40 bucks to spend 60 bucks to spend 4k Blu-ray is a little bit more expensive. So if you can, you can give yourself like 40 bucks a month, you can usually find most things for a deal too. Uh, you just got to use blu-ray.com. They have a really good way of tracking deals for stuff. Look at, um, things like book off Hamilton book. Dot com is really good. You might find stuff. So you just got to do a lot of research to find out where to where to get the best deal. Um, eBay can also be really good. Some people are just trying to get rid of stuff sometimes. So I would say start with just what you want, absolutely want, um, and then go from there. And as you discover more movies, continue buying, and pretty soon, uh, before you know it, you'll have a thousand movies. <laughs> I gotta imagine it has to at least start with media you want love. I can't imagine spending so much money on stuff I don't even care about myself. Absolutely, JMB. There is absolutely no reason for you to own every movie in the history of movies. It's just not necessary. I own a lot of stuff because like I mentioned earlier, the studios send me quite a bit. If it wasn't for that, I would still buy quite a bit, but it has obviously offset my costs. But that being said, I'm more willing to be a little bit more adventurous with my purchases. So, you know, whatever money I don't have to put into buying a movie that I want to own, I'll roll the dice and, and buy something that's maybe outside of the norm of things that I would own because I have the budget to play with. Any dream must have movies that you have been trying to hunt down but haven't got your hands on yet? Great question. I currently don't think so um it's not so much about the movie it's the format like 3d movies are a big one for me i would love to own the entire mcu on 3d blu-ray i would love to own the entire dc and star wars franchise on 3d blu-ray um but i think for the most part i have everything that i would generally want in either hd blu-ray 4k blu-ray um, but there are there are things that are not available yet on 4K Blu-ray that I would love. I would love Baraka. It's a beautiful like documentary film um, that's kind of like just a look into into the life of everyone and everything on Earth. It was shot on film in 65 millimeter. It had an 8K scan done in like 2007 or 2008, but they've never put it on 4K Blu-ray. They did take the 8K scan. They remastered it in 4K and then put it on HD Blu-ray, but they've never put out a 4K Blu-ray yet. That, when that comes out, that will look incredible. Do you have the Hobbit trilogy on Blu-ray 3D? If not, would you be interested? I'd be glad to donate them to you guys for a reaction. I don't have a 3D TV, so they're wasted on me. Groove King. These are the only two Hobbit movies that I have on 3D Blu-ray. Battle of the Five Armies, and An Unexpected Journey. I have number one and number three on 3D Blu-ray. If you have the middle, the middle one, I'll take it. Let me know. Um, if you genuinely want to part ways with them, I can definitely send you our PO box and you can send them to us. Um, we're, we're happy to like, you know, PayPal you some money for them. Just let me know how much. Um, and either I'll take them or Augustine will take them or Hector will take them. Um, but yeah, let me know. Thank you for offering. 
Aki, thank you so much for those 2,000 yen. Very much appreciated. Hector sometimes talks about buying physical media in Japan. Have you ever bought one? There are many unique Japanese 4K UHD box sets and 3D Blu-ray discs to add to your collection. I would love to. I would love to. I would love to just go to Japan and buy them, truthfully, um, just so I don't have to pay all the shipping costs and stuff because they're, they're like $90. The only one that I currently own that is from Japan specifically Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This has the 4K and 3D version. When Hector went to Japan, I actually wanted to give him a whole list of them to buy. Um, but I'm kind of glad he just went, he bought one because I think I would have overspent too much. But yeah, I would love to own more of these. I really wanted the B Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Talo Khan Steelbook because in Japan, they have it with the 4K and the 3D. Uh, it's been so hard to find, but I would love to. Yeah, I, I, I think in 2025, I'm going to come to Japan finally, which I guess is next year. So I'll probably end up buying um, a ton of them. So if you have recommendations, let me know. Or if you are able to send some, like I'll pay for them and we can figure that out. I can PayPal you. Um, let me know. Let me know. Where was this? Thank you for the super chat, by the way. I think 3D TVs were a little ahead of their time, but I have a feeling they'll make a comeback in full swing. Maybe people are really um, snobbish about wearing the glasses. I don't give a shit. Like I wear glasses and I still wear them. It's fine. Um, sorry for all the questions again, but correct me if I'm wrong, but 3D TV stopped being produced, right? They're so hard to find these days. Yes, they stopped being produced in I believe 2016 or 17. Um, there's a list. Let me actually pull it up. I have a list that I found of all the 3D TVs that were manufactured. One moment. Where is it? Dee -dee -dee -dee. Where the hell is that list? Where are you? I knew, I know, I had a list and it had all of the 3D TVs that were manufactured and I can't find it for some reason. It was on my tabs list for a while. Well, if you Google search, huh, weird. If you Google search, uh, like just type into Google, all 3D TV models, it's like an AV forum link, I think. And it has a list of all of them. Just so if you're, if you're like in the business of trying to find a 3D TV, um, you can get access to all the models. I have the I have the UH 8500. It's an LG TV. It's a passive 3D. It also does 4K. Um, but yeah, so. Come here, Adam. I'm sure Aki and I can play your tour guide. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely hit you guys up for when I go to Japan for, for recommendations. My, my Blade Runner 2049 is a special DVD box set with K's gun toy that got sold here in Japan. That's amazing. Batman vs. Superman had a remaster with better color and IMAX scenes restored in the 143 aspect ratio and a later Blu-ray. It looked pretty impressive, even though, even though the film is mostly bad. I have that one. This was a made-on-demand title, an MOD title, so they didn't put a slip cover with it, which is kind of annoying. I wish they would have. But this is the one. This is the one that has all the IMAX footage restored and has the better color. Um, it doesn't come in Dolby Vision, it looks like, but I'm sure they did a new pass on the HDR. So, but yeah, it's 143. It's 143 and 239. I don't think it has any 178 stuff. I've been wanting one for so long, but sadly when someone's selling one, they're like 500 miles away. That's the tough part. Hector drove to San Francisco to pick up a new 3D TV not that long ago. All right, Hannah, thank you so much for hanging out. What is your PO box? One moment, let me grab that. Um, we are sharing a PO box right now. Oh, nice. Thanks, John Lang. That's really cool that you posted that in the in the uh, Discord. Um, we're sharing a super chat, a super chat, we're sharing a PO box with Hector's girlfriend at the moment. Um, she was kind enough to let us use it. So when you send us stuff, you have to address it to her name, but then just put like courtesy of Heroes Reforged just to make it like easier. 
Whoops. So it's... Ah, one second, hold on. You just gonna put you have to put a space after four ten. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Flip it, flip it like Louis said. My bad. Um, yeah, you just to space it out better because I wrote it incorrectly. I'm like standing and typing. It's so awkward. Have you ever come across a laser disc you wanted to buy? No, I haven't. I haven't yet. I would probably want to maybe own like the Star Wars movies, but when is so when someone is running from Michael Myers, you root for Michael. I might, depending on the person. Okay, I've got a curious question for you. Have you seen many of the Disney Channel, Disney XD, Nickelodeon cartoons? Because if you've seen Gravity Falls, if you've never seen Gravity Falls, it is one of my favorite shows of all time. I haven't, unfortunately. I, I would love to watch as much stuff as I can. The reality is, is that because I'm working on so many of our video projects, it is really tough for me to get free time to watch a lot of shows. So most of the stuff that I'm watching is... Um, most of the stuff that I'm watching is movies and current shows, but not a ton of stuff like Disney related things. How does the stream look, by the way? Does it look fine? Does it look choppy? Does it look not clear? Let me know. Because I'm looking at my preview window on YouTube and it looks like absolute shit. I think a lot of people are tired of buying TVs when the price of food is going up and up and up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wearing the glasses, though, is all part of the experience. I don't get why people throw such a fit. I get it. You know, it's not ideal, but whatever. Does TV media get the same treatment as movies with the 3D and 4Ks? Um, some 4Ks, yeah, but mostly they're available on Blu-ray. Sometimes, um, DV a lot of time, DVD. Oh, it's crisp? All right, weird. Well, I'm not going through OBS. I'm going through from vMix to YouTube. And so in YouTube Studio, I have a preview window and it looks like absolute trash. So I was worried that the stream looked like dookie. Anyway, I don't even remember where I left off. The Gentleman, directed by Guy Ritchie. I almost said Guy Pierce. That is absolutely not who directed this movie. Uh, it's, it's a fun, it's like a fun, typical Guy Ritchie action movie. I, I enjoy it. Quirky comedy. It's good. My 3D TV didn't come with glasses, so I've never bought any. Oh, well, do you know, is it an active 3D or is it a passive 3D TV? Can you use the glasses from the movie theater? Um, or do you have to get the battery powered ones? Because usually you can buy almost any type of battery powered ones as long as they are compatible with the brand. Will this stream be converted to Blu-ray? Let's start with me. Uh, I did get this amazing cover. This amazing remaster of Ghost in the Shell, this cover is beautiful. Like, if every Blu-ray cover was like this good, damn, man. Like, it even shimmers. I don't know if you can really see it, but it shimmers. Look at that thing. Poor Things is on Hulu! That is so raunchy for Disney. This is a good movie, though. My girlfriend and I really love that movie. I just bought this, like, last week. It was a deal. Augustine sent me the link for it. It was like $36 for both movies in this collector steelbook. So can't wait to bust this out. We're going to be watching Ghostbusters Afterlife um, very soon. Which I do have right here. I have passively watched this movie. So I haven't actually like sat down and properly watched it. So I'm looking forward to doing so. You know, I didn't hate this movie. I actually thought it was pretty good. I get it. It's like not everybody's cup of tea, but I was entertained. I liked it. The sound, the sound design on this thing was great. It's Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. It looked really solid. Gremlins, a Warner classic. This looks great in 4K. No notes. Really good.
I unapologetically loved The Green Knight. Really solid movie. Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, A24. They don't do a ton of 4Ks for whatever reason. Um, I think it's a shame. This is I. This is probably one of David Lowry's better movies. Um, I didn't see Peter Pan and Wendy, but I did not hear good things, unfortunately. Green Lantern, Beware My Power, another DC animated original. Haven't had a chance to see this one yet. Uh, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it must be pretty good. So I'll get around to watching it uh, soon. Um, Gran Turismo was one of my favorite movies last year. I've seen like five times. I didn't love it that much, but I did like it enough that I would watch it again. Did I skip Gladiator? I did skip Gladiator. How you got a better eye than I do, Leah Soul? Damn. Um, Gladiator, the classic. You love to see it. 4K. Focus, you damn thing. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to rewatch this one before the sequel comes out. I know that it doesn't have, obviously, Russell Crowe in it, but um, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, it's a really nice transfer. It has the theatrical and the uncut versions, so why not give it a watch? It's Ridley Scott. The Green Mile, Tom Hanks, the late gray Michael Clark Duncan, you can't go wrong. <laughs> have you seen Villeneuve's Polytechnique? Highly recommend. I have not. Actually, you know what? Some of those Villeneuve movies, I know it's not Villeneuve, it's Villa, Villeneuve. I don't speak French, I'm sorry. Um, Polytechnique, and then there's like one or two other ones that I think are only available on Blu-ray, but I haven't been able to find them. I maybe just need to do better research. Maybe they're not even available on Blu-ray, but I would like to find some of his earlier stuff too. Um, I also have Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, another Steelbook, another Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos combo from Sony. Really, Sony and Paramount are the ones that are doing, and Lionsgate are doing a lot of the work putting um, a lot of the movies back on steel in steelbook editions with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Well, Dolby Atmos is pretty standard, but Dolby Vision has not really been standardized on a lot of 4Ks, which I wish they would be, because I think most major movies are presented in Dolby Cinema, therefore meaning there is a Dolby Vision um, grade available. So, The Guns of Navarone, this also uh, was like a recent repressing that a Steelbook edition that has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Um, I have not seen this one. Surprisingly, this movie is not rated apparently. So I guess that means that it's like, it's that um, non-violent. I forget what year it's from. I think it's from like the early, early 60s, maybe 50s. But yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet, but I will soon. <clears throat> how long does it take you to do your hair um this took me like five minutes the big the key the let me tell you the secret sauce to my hair it's in the blow drying okay you gotta blow dry it you gotta blow dry it you gotta make sure that it's all good you know you gotta blow dry it in the direction that you want it to go you gotta comb it nicely. I use like a I use like a pomade that I put in there, a little blow dry, and then if I'm feeling really extra, I'll finish it off with a little spritz of hairspray. That's about it. May have missed this earlier, but do you have an appreciation for VHS? I have appreciation for all physical media. I don't think you need to own everything in 4K. I think it's totally solely dependent upon like what your passion is. If your passion is VHS, buy the VHS. If your passion is Blu-ray, buy the Blu-ray. If your passion is 4K, get it into 4K. I'm about future-proofing, and I would ideally like to have whatever the best director-approved version of the movie is. That tends to be 4K. Um, and I think nowadays a lot more directors are getting their hands on or getting involved in the um, distribution or the releasing of the home video releases. So I'm all for it. 
the 4K tends tends to be the best, not always, but tends to be. So that's kind of how I want it. But damn, if I had the space and the money, I would absolutely have a CRT with a VHS player. I would have a, a, um, a video CD. I'd have laser, I'd have all of the formats and just pick and choose like what I'm in the mood for on what night and how nostalgic I want to feel. Um, but yeah, if you want to, if you want to own VHS only, go for it, do it. Lots of questions. Um, I'll hold you to that. Have you have you been to Soul Food House in Tokyo? I heard. Oh, this is clearly not a question for me. J and B out here, just living their best life. When someone asked about a twenty four hour live stream, I th I think I know how we could cover a chunk of that. Kira, no, please, no, don't do this to me, please. Adam, Hector, and Augustine should do classic Mexicans where you guys do old black and white movies. I'm down to watch anything. I will literally watch anything. I think it comes down to the time aspect. In a perfect world, if things were firing on all cylinders and we had like um, a studio space we have access to 24 hours a day, um, I would watch two movies a day and I would watch you know maybe like one show every month or something. Um, have you seen The Martian? Absolutely, I own The Martian. It's really good. What's the oldest movie you have on Blu-ray? Maybe The Mal Maltese Falcon? Or Casablanca? Or it might actually be The Wizard of Oz. It's something from like the early 30s. Thir Wizard of Oz I think is 39. Maltese Falcon I think is like 19th, around the same time. Maybe 40, 41. I've got some old stuff. Joseph... Bustamante, where is your adult film collection? Thanks. I'm a disappointment when it comes to adult film collections. I don't have any. Sorry. Um, what's like the I'm trying to think what's like the most inappropriate movie that I have. It's probably nothing. Probably nothing, truthfully. It's not my style. Do you collect movie theater merch, Adam? Like the popcorn tins, cups? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Like I have the metal tin from Avengers Endgame for popcorn. I don't have the Doom Bucket. I kind of want to get it. I know it's dumb, but I kind of want to get it. Sometimes I will uh, collect some movie theater stuff, though. What letter are we on? We're on We're on G. I'm, I'm still pushing for y'all to finish Studio Ghibli. Yeah, uh, yeah. North by Northwest is good. I like... Any silent films? I don't think in my collection. Do you collect physical music as well as movies? Yes. Yes. Pause for a moment. <clears throat> Segway for a minute. Man of Steel on Deluxe Edition CD. Arrow Season 4. Arrow season whatever, seven. Arrow season three. The Flash season two. Arrow season five. Arrow season six. The Mask of Zorro. This is a new one from La La Land Records. It's awesome. I've got the, I think it's the three discs of Hook. This also just came out like maybe two months ago, three months ago. So good. Um, yeah, if you're into buying CDs, La La Land Records is where I get a lot of them from. They do a lot of collector editions. They're great. Um, what else do I have? From La La Land record, Spider-Man, Sam Raimi Spider-Man, so good. I've got Batman Forever, Elliot Goldenthal, got this on eBay for a deal. The Flash, The Flash, Supergirl. 
Supergirl? Oh, this is Crisis on Earth X. Supergirl? I dropped a couple. Supergirl and The Flash. Shh, shh. I have a lot. Thankfully, there's still some of them are still in plastic, so they're okay. Uh, Superman 4. Superman 2 and 3. And The Godfather. Um, yeah, so Arrow, or not Arrow, La Land Records had a deal going on maybe like two, three months ago where they were trying to get rid of their inventory. So it was like, if you buy, if you buy two, the rest were like $2. So I was like, oh, that's a deal. I'll get them. So I was able to get them for a really good, really good deal. But yeah, this one's really cool. I bought this in like 2013. This is pretty old. What are some of the newest movies that you have on VHS? I don't think I have any VHS tapes here. I have them all in my, my mom's house. I think I have like the Batman trilogy. Not much left over, truthfully. Which Nolan film has the best soundtrack? I'm gonna have to go with Interstellar. Like, the Dark Knight trilogy is good, but I think Interstellar is my number one, truthfully. What camera do you use? Um, I use a... Fujifilm X-T4, the one, the one that you're seeing me on is X-T4. I also have an X-T3 that I use as like a B camera. I have a friend who had a, I had a, I have a friend who has a friend who occasionally gets copies of the physical copies of the scores. I know you'd be interested in collecting physical scores, Adam. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Give him my name. Give him my number. Tell me, please. I would love him. Do they work somewhere where they like distribute the scores or how does that work? <clears throat> you know, I don't have much to say about the director, but his movies are good. Hacksaw Ridge with Andrew Garfield, I thought was a pretty solid movie. So, and it looks pretty great in 4K. I already went through the Halloween collection, so I'm not gonna go through it again, but I have all of them from Scream Factory and I have the 4K steelbooks of the new Halloween trilogy. So, I didn't show off this one. This one was cool. Uh, Paramount sent this to me, so I'm not gonna turn it down. It is the uh, 25th anniversary edition of Halloween H2O in steelbook. So it's a really cool steel book that actually has a slip cover. So when you take it off, it's got Michael Myers, it's got the J card on there. So I'll definitely be putting it in one, in one of those um, Malco protective cases uh, as well, just so I can make sure that the bottom or whatever doesn't get all scratched up. It's already got like the tiniest little scratch. You probably can't see it. I'm not gonna be able to get it focused. Yeah, you can't see it, but very small, but I want to make sure that I'm like preserving these as best as I can. <clears throat> I already know that people are going to have thoughts about this. I don't disagree with you, but um, I've never seen all of these, so I wanted to at least buy it so I could see whether or not I even liked them. The Harry Potter collection, all eight movies. So this is kind of a thick daddy. But it's because it's got the Blu-ray and it's got uh, the 4K editions in here. So all eight movies on 4K Ultra HD and on Blu-ray. 
I somehow lucked out and was able to get this for like a crazy good deal. I think I paid like $40 for this. So it's not bad. Heavy Metal and Heavy Metal 2000 on Blu-ray. Um, I've never actually seen Heavy Metal, so you know I don't really have any thoughts on it. I have yet to watch it, but it's a pretty awesome steelbook in my opinion. I think it's really cool when studios go out of their way to make a, an edition of the movie that looks really, really good. I'm a fan of thick and thick. J and B, J and B, be careful. You know, looking at the cost of a Fujifilm X-T4, I might just stick with my iPhone camera for now for making YouTube videos. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Is that fridge water or Brita water? It's Brita water. I have a Brita. <laughs> I sometimes like, sometimes my stomach gets weird if I have just regular tap water. And we live in, we, we live in Southern California. Like the water's for the most part's fine. But every once in a while, man, it like makes me feel a little sick. So I got a Brita filter. It's good stuff. Yes, they do work for a distributor that gets a hold of them for orchestras and other places. And they're like full size scores. Like they're ones that conductors sometimes have in front of them. Are you talking about the sheet music? Yeah, you must be talking about the sheet music, right? Is that what you're referring to? Because you're talking about sheet music. I don't know if I have any use for sheet music. I can't play an instrument to save my life. I mean, I could probably learn. Dude, heavy metal is awesome. Well, that just gives me more motivation to want to watch it, if I'm being totally honest with you. I really need coasters. Getting like water all over the place. <clears throat> I thought Adam would be helpful, Puff, too. I went to the Warner Brothers studio lot where they have a Harry Potter exhibit or like museum thing. And I think it sorted me into, I think it sorted me into Hufflepuff. I could be wrong. You cannot like JK Rowling being transphobic and like the Harry Potter movies. Very true. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. There was something that Jake, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter, but something that she tweeted out, and I was like, oh my God, stop, lady. If you were to learn an instrument, what would you learn to play? I would love to learn how to play the, key, the piano, the violin, and the guitar. I think those would be my top three, top three that I'd want to learn. The cello would be cool, too. But I think cello, the violin over the cello, I think. Just check that 4K steelbook is pricey. I saw it and I wanted it. Now I'm sad. Which one? The one for heavy metal? Guys, that's the thing. Like, I sometimes don't even know. Sometimes I'm a bit oblivious to what's in my collection. And here's the thing. Like, my collection, this is going to sound very strange, is considerably small for someone who gets stuff from the studios because the studios work with third party places and I don't get a lot of their stuff. Like there's a lot of creators that I know that I'm friends with online who get literally every edition of every movie. They're on the list for every single physical media release. Um, yeah, it's, it's insane. Like every single thing, like they'll post every day. I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. They're running out of room for stuff. I don't necessarily want to get to that point, but it would be really cool to get all that stuff and then choose what I want to keep and then offload the rest of it. Cause I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to keep, you know, five copies of the same movie. If the steel book is the most beautiful thing is the most beautiful edition of that movie. I'll keep the steel book. Yeah. The two packs, it's 150 bucks. Uh, oh, the heavy metal one? Oh, wow. Holy crap. I did not know that. All right, here we go. So this is an interesting story. Hell or High Water, not in fact on Blu-ray. It is on 4K. I let someone borrow the Blu-ray. It might have, I don't know who it was, truthfully. I let someone borrow the Blu-ray and I never got it back. So I have the slip for the Blu-ray and then I just rebought it on 4K. And I think there's a steel book coming out not too long from now. I might buy the steel book. The art on the steel book looks really, really cool. I love Hell or High Water. This is like, I think it's Taylor Sheridan who wrote it. 
and he may have directed it as well. Someone might have to correct me on this one. But yeah, it's it's a really, really good movie. I really like it. You haven't seen it? I highly recommend it. Oh, David McKenzie was the director and Taylor Sheridan wrote it. Really good. I've got the Hellboys. Hellboy 1, Ron Perlman. Come on, figure it out. Uh, from Guillermo del Toro. And uh, David Harbour Hellboy, which... Oh. Love David Harbour. Don't love the movie. Hereditary from Ari Aster. Hereditary is super, super good. Super creepy. Um, I love it. It's great. It's great. The classic Highlander, which I think I'm bummed because the, um, the slipcover is a little bit banged up. You can see on the back, it's a little banged up here. Um, I might go out of my way to try to get another one. I think there's a steel book coming out, so I might go for that. I don't really know yet. We'll see. I like Highlander, but I don't love it enough to like go out of my way. Um, Hitman's Bodyguard. I actually think this is a pretty entertaining duology of movies. I don't have the second one, but they were fun enough. And it was, this was like $7.99. Hocus Pocus from Disney. This was back when Disney was sending me a lot of their 4Ks. They stopped sending them to me for whatever reason. I don't really know. They were like, we don't see your coverage for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I'm like, I've tweeted about it. I've Instagrammed about it. I really don't know like what else you want me to say about it. And then they never stopped sending me stuff. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I love Hook. I love this movie. Listen, does it take a while to get to Peter Pan? Yeah but I still really, really enjoy this movie. I think it's really good. Howard the Duck was on sale for literally $6, $7. I was waiting for this to go on sale for so long. I love this movie. It's Marvel, baby. Marvel before Marvel. George Lucas was the producer on this. Um, what else is there to say? Now he's voiced by Seth Green and he's in the MCU. Who would have thought? The Howling, another part of the lot that I bought from someone who was trying to get rid of their entire Scream Factory collection. Like, yeah, throw it in here. Let me get some crazy uh, werewolf. I think werewolf and vampire, or is it just werewolf? Oh, this restoration was done actually not by Scream Factory. The restoration work was done by Studio Canal. So I guess they were just a distributor on this one. Got this one recently from Lionsgate, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, the new Hunger Games movie, The Ballad, the, what the hell is this? The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, a prequel. Um, have not watched it yet. Let me know if it's good. I know a lot of people like Rachel Zegler. I did not think she was good in Shazam. I haven't seen the new West Side Story, so perhaps she's good in that, but I was not that impressed with her in Shazam. The Hunt for Red October, Sean Connery, Alec Baldwin, who knows what's going to happen to that dude. Uh, the 30th Anniversary Steelbook, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, I believe, yes, from Paramount. Paramount's been crushing it with the Steelbooks, man. They're so good. I got to put a protective case on this one, too. So, I'm going to show you these really quick. Um... I'm gonna spotlight the brand. So this is from Malco Protectors. These are protective cases for your physical media. This is what the company logo looks like. These ones in particular, this is a 10 pack, I believe. Malco Blu-ray Slipcover Protector or PS4 and Xbox games. Um, so this is for, I believe, standard Blu-rays that have slipcovers on them. And then this one is for regular Steelbooks. I opened it, so um, this is also a 10 pack. So it just comes like a plastic sheet like this. It looks a little murky. It's because they put a protective film on it. So when you put it in, put the put the seal book in there, um, you're not scratching it up or messing it up or whatever. So uh, it's kind of easy to put together. You really just have to like, it comes flat. So you have to fold all the edges. 
crease the edges just to kind of get it going. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still doing it, baby. We out here. It's like back in boarding comics. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to crease all these edges. Because, like, here's the thing. I know that I get some of this stuff for free, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm also not trying to, like, um, not be grateful in the sense of, like, not taking care of the things that I really enjoy. I love my Blu-ray collection. Um, I will be a Blu-ray collector until streaming gets to the point where it's fast enough to um, basically outpace or outdo a Blu-ray. But until then, I'm gonna be collecting. All right, so it has this like little film on here. And you literally just peel it off. It's so well manufactured that it is literally the easiest, one of the easiest things to remove. Like it comes off like butter. Look at that. Just, this is so pleasurable. Don't tell my girlfriend I said that. Boom. There's the film. Look how clear that thing is. So nice. So then I'll just go through and I'll just kind of fold this in just to get it prepped. Where's that stupid ass movie? Hello? So then I'll go through, hopefully I can do this so you can actually see it. I'm gonna open this up a little bit. Bend it open. And then you just go. Shoop. There it is. Boom. And it even has the J card in here. So I'm not, I'm not one to like throw stuff out. I like holding on to all the pieces. Cause it's like, look, the J card might be annoying, but it is part of the set. They put it there for a reason. So I know most people get rid of them, which is totally fine. Like do what you gotta do, man. Put that in there, fold this one over. Get in there, baby. And you might say like, isn't it annoying having to constantly like take it out? Well, here's the thing. I'm not taking these movies out every day. You know, I'm gonna watch one, then watch the next one, then watch the next one. So I don't mind doing it. Cause again, I'm preserving the quality of the thing that I enjoy. You know what I mean? Boom, it's got this tab system. I don't know if you can really see that. See the tab? You put the tab through, super solid. Boom, that's it. That's all it is. And now you don't gotta worry about it getting scratched up. Can't go wrong, baby. Looks like they're going for $20 for a pack of 20 on eBay, not bad. Yeah, and so the I have a link for them in the description of the video. Um, obviously, you know, you can go through eBay, um, but if you use our link, we do get a little bit of a kickback for it. So we obviously would super appreciate it um, if you use the link down in the description. But look, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You can use the link, you cannot use the link. It's all up to you. Um, but you know, you're doing us a solid if you use the, if you use the link. Let me find it. Got you, boo. And, I, and I'm pretty sure it's the same price if you go through eBay or if you go through their website. Yeah, so it's like you get the 10 pack, I think it's 10 bucks, 20 pack is $20. And I think if you go above that, like the 40, 50, 60, 100 or whatever it is, um, I think the 100 pack might be like 80 bucks, 100 bucks. They, they try to like be reasonable with it. Don't take the film off until after 25 to 30 years, Adam. <laughs> I know, seriously. Ain't she right there? Oh, my girlfriend? No, she's in bed. She's she's smart. She went to bed. You're going to get Andor and Kenobi on physical media, right? Saw your comment on that post. Absolutely. I recycle all my cases and sleeve and sleeves the disc in. I receive that. Hello, English. I recycle all of my cases and sleeve the discs in a single Mylar sleeve. My collection went from 10 five-shelf bookshelves down to three media totes the size of a mini fridge. 3,000 discs. Jeremy, you're a much wiser person than I am. Hot take, I prefer Crimson Tide over Red October. Fight me. Hey, 
You do you. Good night, Joshua. Adam, a true collector and lover of discs. It me. It me. I've removed the J cards and the steel books I have, but I've still held on to them. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to hold on to them for as long as I can. I like them. To me, it's kind of satisfying to just have like the whole thing and you know for sure what it is and da 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 da. I like having the information on the back. Um, I like a quick reminder of like, oh yeah, who directed this? Oh, John McTiernan directed it. What year did it come out? Oh, it came out in 1990. I like having all that stuff. Um, holy shit, this is rated PG. I did not know that. See, and I wouldn't know that if I took the J card off. Um, does Criterion have its own section in your collection? It does. It's in the Blu-ray section because I don't have, I only have like one or two 4K Criterions right now. Once I get more of them, there will be just a Criterion section. Um, otherwise, right now, the 4K stuff is just inter intermingled into everything else uh, in alphanumerical. But the Blu-rays, I have a few that I have in uh, under Criterion. I use those protectors. They are good for slipcover protection and makes lenticulars look great. Thank you. Kel own what? Kel own eight. Damn it. What? Kilo. I'm going to figure this out. Something tech kid. Anyways, thank you for vouching. Um, I know sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, well, they send you stuff for free. So of course you're going to promote it. I promise you, these are so good. I love these. I discovered them on my own last year. I didn't even, I wasn't even in contact with them. And I bought and bought and bought them. And then finally I was like, let me just DM them on Instagram. And so we started talking and I said like, hey, I've got the stream coming up. I'd love to promote your stuff. What else do you got? Um, let me know. And if you want to send me stuff, I'm happy to talk about it. So they did. Um, now that we're actually here, they do have a new product. They do have a new product that they are just kind of working out the kinks. Oh, Kelowna is the city I'm from. Kelowna Tech Kid. I'm so dumb. Thank you for clarifying. Um, they are working on these brand new protective like sleeves, you could say, for steelbooks to essentially let you um, keep them open on your set. So this is how it looks inside of the protective case. It's open, you can fully display it if you want to. Um, so if you wanna get like a stand, you can just have it on your shelf like this. Up here. Whatever you want to do, you know, I know that that's like a very, very, very niche thing. You know, not everyone's going to want to do that, but it's a pretty cool option in my opinion to be able to just like have this on the shelf like that. It's pretty nice. This is the steel book for Black Hawk Down. Um, the only thing that is a little bit of like a quote unquote negative is there's nowhere to put the J card. So you can obviously leave it on here if you want, if you're okay with having overhang, because the J card will overhang on this side, obviously. You could cleverly kind of conceal it on this side if you're gonna try to just display it with this artistic side out. So you have some options, you have some options. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. So again, Malco protectors, man, they're, they're great. They just sent this to me. They have barely rolled this out. They only sent me two of them um, because I don't think they have that many. I think they're still trying to kind of refine it a little bit. It's a little tricky to get it in there, but once you, you basically have to like crease all the sides first um, and then it'll be good to go. But yeah, it is a really cool idea. I love it. Definitely check them out. Um, you know, I, th I think it's worth it. I think if you want to protect your steel books, it's really cool and it's very flexible. Like it's not moving. So it's good, I really like it. So a great option for those who want it. And by the way, Black Hawk Down uh, on that steel book, it's a Dolby Vision, um, not a re-remaster, but it's a repress. It looks amazing, amazing. Um, have you gotten many of the collector's editions that come with the mini posters and concept art cards and such? A lot of the Marvel stuff recently have these variations available in initial Blu-ray release. Um, I have not some stuff I do like sh the scream factory stuff. Sometimes I get early enough that it has posters and things like that, but Marvel stuff, I didn't even really know. So here's the thing. And this is dumb. This is really dumb. But when I got into this debacle with Disney about sending me 4k Blu-rays and they were basically like, you're not, we don't feel 
it, they didn't say this to me, but it felt like they were saying, you don't promote our stuff enough. I'm like, I promote all your releases on Instagram and Twitter. So I stopped buying the Marvel stuff. Also, like I haven't genuinely loved phase four and five. So I've been like, whatever, I'll get to it eventually. But the thing that I think I messed up on is I should have just bought them because I think a lot of the slip covers are, are now not available. So I got Guardians of the Galaxy not that long ago. And, you know, unfortunately, volume three doesn't have a slip cover. It's like an out of print thing. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of a bummer. I would love to have the slip cover with it, but. So, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning too as a collector that sometimes, you know, you're not gonna make the best choices, but you also gotta do you, you know what I mean? Is there a big difference between one and two tabs? I'm about to order a couple of hundred packs. Oh shit, please use our link, <laughs> please. So the two tabs is it basically, let me put my hand out. Two tab is, I gotta do this, let's do this. A little sneaky peeky. Two tab has a tab at the top. Let's do this. Tab at the top and a tab at the bottom. Uh, single tab, the bottom part will just have no tab. It'll just be squared off and it'll just be a tab on top. I, I actually have not tried the single tab ones, so I don't really have an opinion about them. Um, I think maybe what is appealing about the single tab is you don't have to deal with the bottom part, um, but the two tab kind of gives you options to slide it out whichever way you want, the bottom or the top. So it's really just like a personal preference. I have the two tab. I think it's totally fine. Sometimes things might get caught on the bottom tab, like if it's a J card or something. Um, but for the most part, I don't really have any issues. So it's really up to you. I would say maybe buy 10. Like I wanna tell you to buy 100 cause it'll make us look really good that you bought so much using our link. But maybe buy like 10 with one tab or maybe do 50-50, like 50 one tab, 52 tab. And then you can decide which ones you prefer. I've just been importing the Japanese for the 3D. Ah, uh, man, I I want to do that. It's just so expensive, like ninety dollars for a Marvel movie that I don't even think is like necessarily that good. Just to have the 3D version, it's hard for me to justify. Kind of hard for me to justify. I tend to collect enamel pins and only have so much room for DVDs and such. So I only buy the DVDs for movies that I really love rewatching. As you should, Summer Star. You're doing it the right way. Are you getting the Eros Tour on Blu-ray? Uh, if they announce one, hell yeah, I will. Absolutely. 4K Blu-ray, please. Like, come on now. Get with the times, y'all. Like, there's no reason for that movie to not be on 4K Blu-ray. Give me a break. Like, that thing was amazing. I got my Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and UPS tore up the slipcover at the bottom. What the fuck? That's so annoying. I've had that happen too. Adam, you got The Last of Us on Blu-ray, right? Uh, no, sir. I have The Last of Us on 4K Blu-ray. Old. A shabam. You know it. You love it. The Last of Us on 4K. There's no way I would not get the 4K. I mean, okay, I should rewind. I asked Warner Brothers for the 4K. But I would have happily purchased the 4K. What letter have we made it to? Don't ask, for God's sakes, don't ask. Well, could buy five of each, then buy the remaining 95 of the one you prefer. That's very true too. Do you ever do any Alamo Draft House? If there's one near you, go, go see movies there. When they do the Mondo ticket combos like the cool, oh yeah that's a good that's a good thing to bring up brisk yeah i actually did i went to go um what was it the last jedi i think and i got one from them but yeah i i would love to you know i'm i'm um yeah i would love to i would love to go to every theater for every experience it's just hard sometimes do you have arcane on blu-ray uh can you go tell netflix to put it on blu-ray and i'll buy it damn all right let's keep going I recently got this one. This is the Arrow remaster of, is it the Arrow? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Arrow. The Arrow remaster of uh, Hugo in 4K. This, like Dread, also has the 3D Blu-ray because they're smart. It looks really great on 4K and it looks great in 3D. This is, a, the 3D version is also, they, 
did the 4K remaster, they took that 4K version, and even though they didn't render it in 4K for the 3D Blu-ray, they used that 4K version and scaled it down to 1080 to make a new Blu-ray press, new 3D Blu-ray press, it's great. Nineties classic terror. I know what you did last summer. So good. Uh, my crush on uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt was at its peak in this time. She still looks great, by the way. In the Heights, courtesy of Warner Brothers. Thank you so much. Are you gonna focus or should I call for help? Um, Anthony Ramos is in this, who's been showing up in a lot of other stuff. He's great. Um, I already touched on Inception, Chris Nolan, you love to see it, come on, excuse me, thank you. The Incredibles 1 and 2 on 4K Blu-ray, I love both of these movies. I especially love the first one. The second one, don't get me wrong, the second one's good. But the first one is like a masterpiece to me. As Hector says, it's the best Fantastic Four movie, and I agree. Uh, these look great. Independence Day, the OG, 4K Blu-ray and two Blu-ray discs. I think one of the discs is the special features. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. It's so good. I don't own the second one because... Um, I actually have heard it's not good, so I was like, I'm not gonna bother. But you know, at some point I'll probably buy it. So I know a lot of people have been waiting on these. Um, yeah, I don't know, like when's the Ironheart thing even gonna come out? The BD form thread has a lot of discussion about the Hugo Aero 3D disc. Oh, really? Uh, good, bad? Because I, I didn't watch the entire movie. I watched a lot of it. A lot of it. There are issues with the 3D disc. Oh, what issues? Maybe I need to throw it in again. Because I, I put it in and it was fine for me. <laughs> what do you mean? Did they end up fixing it? Because I didn't buy it when it came out. I bought it months, months later. So I'm curious um, what was wrong with it. Because I started watching it, but I didn't watch it all the way through yet. So I'm curious what the issues are. Damn. I was lucky enough that a local IMAX theater was showing the Guardians of the Galaxy Marathon for the rest of Volume 3, for the release of Volume 3. Got some really sick exclusive posters from that event. That's awesome. We love that. I had a PS5 for like 11 months before I realized it played 4K discs. It does. It does. You're welcome. Take advantage. I forever have a crush on Jennifer Love Hewitt. Same, 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 same. I couldn't have been at a barbecue. <laughs> the underminer was undermining. Do you collect any classic cinema movies like Metropolis? What just happened? Did my light just dim? What happened here? Um, Metropolis Nosferatu cab Cabinet of Dr. Caligari Ma Actually Metropolis Is one that I have not Been I have looked for it But I haven't like Sought it out so So hard but um That's another one I would like to own on 4K At some point they're gonna remaster that thing In 4K I don't care how bad It looks which I don't think it will but um, but yeah, I would love to, I would love to, I would love to own it. Um, I, I want to know, Kelowna, the 3D Blu-ray, what the fuck? Let me know. According to the latest update, Ironheart releases on D plus on September 3rd, 2025. Where the hell did you find that date? Tell me. Oh, I almost put this back. So this was actually how I discovered Malco protectors. I got these from Paramount and I was like, damn man, I really need to figure out how to, protect these things because I do not want them getting ruined. Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I was like searching and searching and searching and then someone on Instagram posted their um, their Blu-rays with the Malco protectors. And I was like, damn man, I gotta get these. So I found them and then I bought a bunch of them. Um, and I bought a pack of 10 just to see if, whether or not I liked them. 
This was such a good buy. I have all of them. I even went as far as to buy the steelbook for Dial of Destiny. Uh, because I was like, well, if I have all four of them, there's Temple of Doom. Here is The Last Crusade. Here is Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which is actually not as bad as I remember. And then when it came out, just so I didn't miss out, I bought the Dial of Destiny. Kind of annoying that they didn't like bother to make a cover that looks like it could fit with the other four. Hello, Disney. Like I get it, those were Paramount releases, but I don't know, use your brain. This one was sent to me from Paramount. I have not had a chance to see Infinite yet. If y'all have any thoughts, let me know. Could be good, could not be. I don't know if Gl Inglorious Bastards ever had a, a slipcover, but unfortunately I did not get one that had a slipcover. I would love one. Um, at some point I hope that Tarantino maybe puts his movies out in a box set and then I'll buy that. And then I'll offload these, um, these like single ones that I have. Uh, Summer, thank you so much for hanging out. I know it's been a long stream. You are a real champ. I know you've been here for a long time. So thank you so much for hanging out. I super appreciate it. I have a feeling that Augustine and Hector are gonna be like, you streamed for seven hours? You psychopath. Oh, US Copyright Office website lists the projected date of publication 9325, gotcha. Have you ever heard of that Indiana, J Indiana Jones game coming out for Xbox? Supposedly it's an in-between for one of the movies. I don't know which ones yet. Oh, I have no idea. No idea. I don't really keep, um, I don't really like uh, uh, keep track of games. There's, <laughs> have you seen my collection? There's just too much to keep track of, but I, I would like to at some point. I'm jumping ahead here, but you own the screen movies on 4K. How do they look? A lot of them are on sale on Amazon. They look good. Yeah, I've got screen one, two, three, five, and six. Yeah, yeah, so, and they look good, they look good. <clears throat> uh, I have thoughts about Injustice. You know, I, I get it, I get the appeal of it. I think it's a fun video game. Um, I think it's cool that they turned into an animated movie. I definitely don't think that uh, uh, it's the way to build a film universe. Would you get custom steelbooks? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely consider it if there was someone who I found who was like making really good ones. If you have a link, definitely let me know. I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely into the idea, that's for sure. I got this off of a Whatnot stream, Insidious on 4K Blu-ray. These, uh, the folks that were selling this sold it to me for literally $4. So, Really no reason to not get this one. And look at the condition of this steelbook. Like, pretty flawless. Definitely one of my favorite movies. This one has a shifting aspect ratio, 178 to 239, because I don't think this has any 65 millimeter. That's non-IMAX. Uh, it is interstellar. Love, love this movie. Showed it to my girlfriend and she thought it was The Martian accidentally. So that was a really fun time for her to discover. Oh, it is not in fact The Martian. It is a whole nother movie. Um, it's really good. I really love it. If this gets a re-release this year in IMAX 70 millimeter, run. Like sprint like a motherfucker to go see it. It is so good. And I actually have a couple of film strips. 
or film cells, I should say. I don't know how well you can see it, but let me see if I can get this light a little brighter, brighter. It's the house. And then it's the space shuttle. Yeah, and these are actually like, um, these are actually like IMAX sized film cells. This is what IMAX film looks like. It's this big. It's huge, huge, I tell you, it's huge. Does Etsy sell custom steel books? Man, I have no clue. I'm sure someone does. There's a lot of people who actually sell custom slip covers. And I've been tempted to like reach out to them and be like, hey, let me buy some from you. Because they do sell them. Um, maybe at some point I will go about doing that. You know what I'm also really bad at? I'm also really bad at redeeming the codes. I've had so many codes expire on me <clears throat> because I just sometimes don't get around to opening it in time or whatever the case may be. And I kind of miss out, which is a bummer. The Invisible Man, this was such a cool take on this, like, not even this mythology, but this character, this idea, this concept. Elizabeth Moss was so good in it. Um, the co-star is Oliver Jackson Harper, I think. He was in, uh, he's been in a lot of Mike Flanagan stuff. He was in Haunting of Hill House. He's really good. And um, Eldon, uh, Aldous Hodge, who plays Hawkman, is in this. Uh, it's really, really good. Check it out. I've got me some a double feature of the Muschietti movies, It and It Part 2. I really dig It Part 1, Chapter 1. It Part 2 is pretty good. Um, I definitely think the first one is superior in my opinion, but I still think they're pretty damn good movies, and it's a good set, a good collection to have, so check them out. Where's the porn stash? That's about all you're going to get, truthfully. Uh, then I have two copies of It's a Wonderful Life. I should probably decide which one I want to keep. I've got the Steelbook, and I've got the regular 4K edition. I'm not quite sure why I've been holding on to both of them. Um, I probably should just hold on to one and then sell the other one. Good movie. Classic movie. It's great. <clears throat> the first one, I think, is way better. Jack Reacher. Really solid movie. I know there's obviously a, always a controversy about Jack Reacher and Tom Cruise and the size and stuff, but I don't know, man. I think he's pretty good. I know Rotten Tomatoes doesn't matter, but 73% for Interstellar. I mean, I think the, I think the ending kind of threw people off. Um, you know, you could still try the codes, had at least one expire, but still work. Yeah, a lot of them still work even past the expiration date. Really, Warner Brothers is the only one where the codes don't work because they want you to go to HBO Max to watch it or whatever the hell their idea or plan is. I don't know. Um, that restaurant knife kill is amazing. Oh, what movie are you talking about? I must have skipped over the, I must have went through the movie too quick. Um, I redeem code so that my son can watch the films through the family voodoo account now that he's no longer at home. Good idea. Good idea. Not sure if you'll answer this, but are BDR retail copies considered legitimate? I recently bought the collector from Amazon and it's clearly a BDR. Um, ooh, that's a good question. Let me, I'll look into it, but I don't, I haven't done a ton of research. Um, I, guess, I just haven't done a ton of research on that in general. So I, I don't want to give you a, a false answer. What do you think of Universal's doc, Dark Universe? I mean, I don't know if we're ever going to really get it. But if we do and they do it well, then great. I'm looking forward to the Mufasa movie this year. I wonder what the story will be. I'm a sucker for Lion King. Yeah, Lion King's great. I'm curious myself. The Arrow release of Hugo didn't use the correct strings for each eye. One of them used the 2D feed. Oh, what the fuck? Did they ever fix that? Because I bought it, I bought it maybe three, four months ago and it already had been out at that point. So I'm curious if uh, they ended up fixing it. What? That is so crazy. Uh, 
How the hell do they do that? <clears throat> oh, Invisible Man, where she meets her sister at the restaurant. That was nuts. Where are the pirated films? Uh, on my computer. I bought a hundred. I bought hundreds of movies, but I've never received a BDR. Purple die until this film. Weird. Arrow never responded to my email. Strange. That's so strange. Weird. Um, I was able to get this one from Universal, like right when it came out. Here's the ironic thing. It's got this lenticular cool 3D cover. Jaws, baby. Jaws. This movie also got a 3D conversion. 3D remaster. They have never put that out on disc. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that it will end up on the Apple Vision Pro at some point. I guarantee. It's great. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. Like, it's a really nice way to experience Jaws. It comes with this, like, it comes with this really cool collector's book as well. There's the movie for you. Pretty standard, but looks and sounds good. I got no notes. Mostly no notes. They did a they did a 4K rescan of the movie, like, in 2012 or something for one of the uh, Blu-rays. I think it was the... Th the 40th anniversary Blu-ray. Um, and then five years later, re-released in 4K. So go figure. I did go ahead and get Jaws 2 as well, since that also came out pretty recently. Um, it's not as good as the first, obviously, but I still think it's a good sequel. Not great, but it's good. So why not own it? I would actually wouldn't mind if they put all four of them on 4K. I don't think I'd buy all four of them, but I know that they do have two, three, and four in a set that they put in after the 4K came out that was like, hey, we don't think we're gonna remaster all four of these, but here's a really nice uh, collector set that kind of looks like it fits the 4K. Um, but I just waited for this one to come out. <clears throat> I love me some John Wick. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and I don't actually own chapter four. So that is the one um, blind spot that I have in my collection. I'm gonna be totally honest with you, and this is very strange, because this has never happened. I never saw John Wick 4 in theaters. I don't know why. I literally don't have a reason for why I never saw it in theaters. I was so stoked for it. I don't know what was going on at the time that I didn't make time to go see it. I'm super bummed about it though because all three of these movies were such an amazing experience in the theater. I literally have no answer for why I didn't go. I think I just put it off and I put it off and put it off and then it was out of theaters. Love the 3D conversion in theaters. Oh, you got to see, you got to see uh, Jaws in 3D in theaters, that's awesome. Yeah, Hector and I went to go see it and loved it. Or was it Hector or Augustine? I can't remember. But yeah, we loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Loved it. Yeah, <laughs> love scratching the lenticulars, me too. Has anyone heard anything about the Coffin Joe replacement discs? I haven't heard back since the initial response from Arrow customer service. Man, I thought Arrow was like way, 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 way better with all this stuff. That's a bummer. If you guys could do an Oscar watch party, would you? Yes, we would, um, or I would at least, um, but we didn't make any plans for it. I'm not sure when Augustine comes back from his trip, so um, otherwise I would totally be down. I think that would be so fun, um, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. We never planned for it, and I'm, I'm not gonna try to plan something now. It's way too late in the game, and I already made um, I already made plans with, with um, my girlfriend and stuff to watch it, so. That won't be happening this year, but maybe next year, we'll see. So what is the steelbook industry as of now? Because I saw today Best Buy officially cleared off physical media and all their stores today. Oh, Robert, damn, really? I didn't know that. Uh, had I known that, I probably would have gone over there and tried to like buy as much as I could because I'm curious if they have like a blowout sale for getting rid of all that stuff. Um, let me know. Pirate Dad, probably will be heading out soon. I'll be back tomorrow after my shift to catch the end of the stream though. Oh God, I hope not. Fall asleep for a bit watching this and had a dream of you talking to me about DVDs and DVD packaging. You came to the right stream, Natalie. I have the, I have made the mistake of getting rid of my J cards for my Steelbook movies. You know, I think that's why I'm like, in that regard, I'm a little bit of a completionist. I like to keep all of that together. 
and then I'll decide down the line whether or not I want to keep it. Sometimes they've gotten like crushed from moving them around or I've let people borrow them and they've kind of mishandled them. So I end up just tossing them, but 99% of the time I hold on to them. Walmart seems to be with Seal, Sealbook HQ now. Yep, it is. It absolutely is. Um, and even Amazon is stepping up a little bit. Like The Departed, The Crow, some of those titles are getting Sealbooks on, on Amazon as well. And then Walmart exclusives too. Do you guys have a plan for WonderCon? I we act, we don't. I'm sorry. I we haven't talked about it yet. I I think we're gonna go. I would like to go at least for one day to check it out. Um, but we have no plan as of right now. It would be just cool to go and hang out for a few hours. Wasn't it the Moonlight La La Land year that Hyper RPG did an Oscar stream? Yeah, yeah, that was my suggestion. I really wanted to do. It. I thought it would just be fun, and it <laughs> it was a perfect year to do it. How long have you been collecting? Um. I would say I've been collecting regularly now for five years, 2024, 2019, six years. I started kind of collecting in like 2010, 2011, and then 2014, I ramped it up a little bit. And then I've been pretty, um, pretty um, consistently collecting since like 2015, 2016. Get your extra large Duncan ASAP. We in it for the long haul. Hell yeah. Is Duncan open? Damn, I could use a coffee right about now. How many of us are going to dream about this tonight? <laughs> I have an accordion folder for the J cards for now. Oh, that's good. That's a good call. Somebody was asking earlier, where did I get my shirt from? It is from, oh my God, what's the name? It is from Lordy. Oh, Super Yaki. S-U-P-E-R-Y-A-K-I. Um, I don't think these are around anymore, or they might come into rotation every once in a while, but I got it basically right when it went on sale. Have you have you seen the Michael Rosenbaum Nicholas Holt podcast? Yeah, I've seen I've seen most of the episode, not all of it. Uh, I like Nicholas Holt. I think it's cool that he went on there to just talk about Lex Luthor. Um, yeah, I, I the Michael Rosenbaum podcast is great in general. Inside of you, uh, he I did interview him and Tom Welling when they were starting their Smallville rewatch. This is already like two a year ago, two years ago. I don't even know what time is anymore. Twenty twenty two, because it was right around the time Halloween Kills was coming out. 2022, it's been two years almost, Jesus. I'm in New York City, Uber Eats serves me well or too much. It's not a bad idea, truthfully. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Todd Phillips' Joker. I have mixed feelings on the movie, but the 4K looks really solid. It's shot on 65 millimeters, so you can't really go wrong. Apparently this is getting in, not an IMAX 70 millimeter, but it will be an IMAX laser in the tall one four three to one ratio. I don't know how true that is. Um, that I don't, hasn't been confirmed by anybody, but uh, it, might, it might happen. We've got Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Was this the... Was this the second one in the trilogy or is this the third one? I could have sworn I had both of them. Somebody remind me. There's too many movies. Um, if this is the third one, oh, if this is the third one, then I think I need the second one. And then I have Jungle Cruise. Emily Blunt, The Rock. I didn't really like this movie that much. I wish I would have liked it more. Um, the visual effects needed a lot more work. And I think it's a bummer that Disney did not give the VFX artists more time to get the VFX done. I think it had potential, but yeah. Okay, so this is the second one, not the third one. What's the third one called? I forget. Help. Truthfully, if Universal didn't send this to me, I would never buy it. I do not like this movie. It's rough, man. And it has the original cast. Like, how do you, how do you mess this up so bad? Blech.
All right, so we've got all... Oh, Jumanji Next Level was the third one. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Um, I just got this not too long ago, Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1. This is, I believe, a three-part retelling of the Crisis on Infinite Earths story in animated form. I think Part 3 is the last time Kevin Conroy does the voice of Batman, I believe. And I think he also has a scene with Mark Hamill as the Joker in this. So this is definitely gonna be something to hold on to for sure. Then we've got Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. So more of the DC Universe animated movies. Justice League versus the Fatal Five. Like all of these digital codes have expired. And I don't think I redeemed a lot of them. I should have. I should have. Justice League War World. Like some of these. Oh, this one's good till 2025. So I got time to redeem this one. Haha, -ha, David Zaslav. Gotcha, sucker. <clears throat> then I've got Justice Society World War II. Come on. Boom. And then I've got this crossover. Um, yeah, I believe this is a Rooster Teeth co-production, if I'm correct. This is Justice League XWRBY Superheroes and Huntsmen Part 1. And then I have the same thing, but Part 2. Isn't it, isn't it Rooster Teeth? where the RWBY comes from. I don't really know Rooster Teeth that well, but I remember people have been talking about it. So I don't know if it's like some story they created or whatever the case may be. Help. <clears throat> um, love this set. Uh, again, J card, hello. The Karate Kid, <clears throat> beautiful box set put out by Sony. Uh, it's all three Karate Kid movies. Look at this thing, just stellar. Stellar Skarsgård. Um, I actually already owned the first one and then uh, Sony was like, hey, would you be interested in this? And I was like, uh, yes, please. So you've got the first. And I do love that it is the, um, that it has all of the slip covers. The second and the third. <clears throat> wax on, wax off. How tall are you? Are you 5'10 or shockingly 6'5? Uh, I'm 6'1. Yeah, Jeremy, you're definitely right. Warner Brothers codes definitely expire and they don't last very long. No, they don't. They don't. And some things last way... Sh some things don't last... How am I trying to word this? Some of the code... Are you a fan of the Jaden Smith, Jackie Chan version? Um, oh, what happened? Did my stream go down? What happened? There's no way. I'm not getting any issues on my end. Hmm, weird. Um, I don't I don't dislike the Jackie Chan Jaden Smith one. I think at the time when it came out though, to me I kind of looked at it as like, oh, it's trying to um trying to sort of like, uh, this is also like a dumb thing and I, and I think a lot of people do this a lot. Even though it was a new one, it was a remake and it did things differently and all this stuff, it was never gonna take away what the originals did. So I didn't look at it that, that way back then, but now I do and I'm like, oh, it's fine. They coexist in the same universe now and they're doing a crossover, so that's really cool. So I'm fine with it. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I would love to know um, what it looks like now, but yeah. King Kong. The Peter Jackson one, mixed feelings on this one. I 
I liked it in theaters. I thought it was really long, but I definitely want to rewatch this one and just get a kind of a feeling of how I feel about it now after so many years. Knives Out, I absolutely love. Like, probably in my top three Ryan Johnson movies. I think it's so, so, so good and so clever and so smart. Krampus, another classic. I want to say the 80s. Oh, 2015. What am I talking about? I think there was... Uh, why did I think this was from the 80s? Did they... What what movie am I thinking of that came out in the 80s that was... Wasn't there a Krampus, like, in the 80s? But this one is directed uh, by Michael Doherty, who did Trick or Treat, which I thought was really good. I knew that this was not a uh, 70s movie. I don't know why. But, yeah, looks really good. La La Land, which I know a lot of people don't love, but I actually really like this movie. Um, and I think, oh, sorry, Silent Night, Deadly Night, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, I think it looks good. I think this was mastered in 2K and is up rest of 4K, but in my opinion, it looks solid. Last Action Hero, which I honestly don't think I'm even going to open. There's a steel book coming out, and I think I'm going to buy that instead. This is an okay cover. It's not my number one. It's fine. Some folks are saying that my audio is cutting out. Let me know. Um, I'm not having any issues on my end, so it must be an internet thing. I don't know. Just let me know. I can pause. But everything looks good on my side. No audio issues here. All right. Um, Labyrinth, Dark Crystal. I don't have Labyrinth or Dark Crystal. Um, I would love to get them though. Uh, at some point I will, at some point. I, those are movies that I didn't necessarily like grow up watching. So I don't think I have that affinity for them like other people do. But I will definitely make an effort to get them in my collection at some point and rewatch them. I think The Last Duel is massively underrated. One of Ridley Scott's latest films. Great cast, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Adam Driver, Jodie Comer. I didn't see this in theaters either. I waited too long to watch this on streaming and I immediately went and bought the 4K Blu-ray because I really thought it was, I thought it was a really solid movie. Last Night in Soho, Anya Taylor-Joy, Thomas and McKenzie, Matt Smith, um, Terrence Stamp is in this. It's Edgar Wright. You can't go wrong. Like, it's a really solid film. I love all his, I love, I would say I love most of his movies. Um, I also really like Baby Driver, which I surprisingly don't have in my collection. I thought I did, but I guess I don't. Um, but yeah, really good. I already showed you The Last of Us, so I'm not going to bust it out again. This was, this one was tough to come by. Um, I did a lot of waiting, a lot of patience, and then eventually it came back on Amazon. It was like backordered like a son of a gun, um, and I was able to get it. Lawrence of Arabia, the 50th, the 60th anniversary, limited edition steelbook. So pretty cool. It's a great movie. I really, really, really enjoy it. And on top of that, maybe 10 years ago, I got this. <clears throat> Are you ready? It's kind of a, kind of ridiculous. The glare. The glare though. Yeah, this thing is amazing. Beautiful remaster of the Blu-ray. This is the 50th anniversary box set. Um, limited edition collector's packaging, all new 4K restoration of the feature film. So it was restored in 4K, then pressed on Blu-ray. Blu-ray disc two has a bunch of special features. Blu-ray disc three has a bunch of deleted scenes. There's a soundtrack for the movie as well. This is like prime time. I got this at Barnes and Noble. And I think at the time I paid, I want to say maybe like $50. So not too bad. 
This is not a laser disc. This is a freaking Blu-ray. Um, yeah, and there's a book in there, I think, too. Somebody should actually look up and see like what the value of it is. It it may not have any. It may just be like, you know, one of those items that um is still kind of relatively available out there. But yeah, it has like this whole book. The Blu-ray is not in here. I think I accidentally took it out and I have it in the other Blu-rays. But like, look at this thing. Beautiful. A whole thing from Leonard and Malton talking about the movie. Um, it's a preface by Leonard and Malton. Just like beautiful shit, man. I love this sort of stuff. Like I'm a sucker for coffee table books that are about movies. And especially if it's like a making of. Look at all that. Come on. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And this one also has an authentic uh, 70 millimeter film cell in there. Can't really see it. But yeah, really cool. I love this stuff. This is like, this kind of stuff is the reason why I love buying physical media because I really like, I wouldn't say that Lawrence of Arabia is like one of my favorite, favorite movies of all time, but I really appreciate and I love, I love what the film, I love the craftsmanship of the movie. And um, I just think it's really impressive. So I had to own it. And I bought this one like 10 years ago, so. How much, how much did y'all find it for? I think I saw 150. Yeah, I definitely did not buy it for $150. Pretty sure I bought it for maybe like 60 bucks. So I definitely got a, got a deal. Looks like I bought it, well the code expired in 2014. So I'm assuming I bought it maybe like 2012 or something. Yeah, let me see. I jumped out of frame really quick to see if I could actually find the Blu-ray. It's somewhere around here. I want to make sure I get it back in the box because I took it out because I was watching the movie and I didn't want to consistently take it in and out of the box. So I ended up just kind of like, you know, tossing it in. Yeah, really cool set. I'm super happy that I own this. Um, Adam, did you order the Lighthouse book from A24? I have not. Is it still available? Is it going to cost me $5,000? Someone please tell me. It's comforting to have well-done physical copies of your favorite or just classic films. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Just trying to find the 4K steelbook is freaking expensive. Yeah. And I didn't get it for an expensive price. I paid like 30 bucks for it. So I didn't have to pay, you know, like $400 or something ridiculous for this thing. Yup, looked, 150 to 170, hmm, okay. What's the total amount of titles in your physical media collection? I got slightly above 1K in total DVD, BD, 4K series and movies. Yeah, I think mine's about this. I think I have like, I wanna say I have maybe like 1400-ish. I could be wrong. Um, maybe it's closer to 1200, but yeah. Adam, do you not have fingerprints? These cases are clean. I mean, I, tr you know, I, I, I do sometimes dust and wipe down stuff. You know, I don't go through and like go one by one, but you know, I'll dust in these areas and I try to just keep stuff stored away that I don't have on display. And I just want to, you know, take care of it because I think it's, I take a lot of pride in collecting physical media. And I know that there's a lot of things that I have that, you know, I, they're not like my favorite, and I'm, for lack of a better term, I don't necessarily care for them, but <clears throat> I still want to take care of the stuff that I do own um, because I think it's important. I, I, I feel responsible in some ways to curate a movie collection that I can show my friends and family and let them discover new things that they probably would have never discovered before. I'm so grateful that my girlfriend is so flexible with me when it comes to watching movies. Um, we watch stuff that she's never seen. She's totally down to clown. She's down to watch things that she's never seen. And it just makes the experience for me so much, so enjoyable. Um, 
yeah, so it's it's a really fun time, and I'm super I'm super grateful uh, to her for being so open and willing to watch stuff with me, and um, yeah, it's it's a good time. I believe Lighthouse is forty five dollars on a twenty four site. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. They are really good in really good shape. Yeah, I mean, I do my best. Have you seen the Unbreakable trilogy, Unbreakable Split Glass? Yes, I was not a fan of Glass, but I really like Unbreakable and I really like Split. Sorry, fifty for four K directors collectors edition. That's 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 not bad, not bad. All right, let's keep going. Let me put this back. What hour are we on? Someone tell me. I'm scared to look. Um, I didn't show this one earlier. I should. This one has like a full on like I don't know. Is this a C card? I don't even know, man. It's like look at this thing. It's crazy. We're on hour five. Holy shit. Is my girlfriend still my girlfriend or has she left me yet? Um, all Quiet on the Western Front. This is the Netflix uh, remake or it was bought by Netflix um, like a last year, a year before that. I had never seen the film and I thought, well, damn it, if I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it. 4K, Ultra HD, Dolby Vision, HDR10, Dolby Atmos, DTS HD. Dolby Audio, there's like a whole book that kind of goes through the making. Oh, I got scared that the disc wasn't in there. I was like, where the hell did the disc go? Um, but a little like behind the scenes, I think on the making. Damn, I keep hitting the mic. Uh, Legion of Super Pets. In case you missed it, I said that this was fine. What other reactors do you like? Oh, I like Blind Wave, Real Rejects, our friends of ours. Um, Akasan is a buddy. Um, quite a few. I like all of them. I would I wouldn't mind collaborating with all of them, truthfully. Yeah, instead of touch some grass, go touch your mic. <clears throat> I know I don't know how I keep bumping it. I don't know. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. I mean, I talked about I talked about Legion of Superheroes and I talked about Legion of or Super Pets. Then I also do own the Lego Batman movie in 4K. So I've got the 3D and I've got the 4K. The Lion King, the remake, which I didn't necessarily care for too much. It's fine. I think visual effects wise, it's about, it's really impressive what they did, what Jon Favreau did. Um, it's an okay movie. It just doesn't hit the emotional beats of the original. Little Mermaid 4K remaster, so I have this in 4K and in 3D. It'd be great if I could just have one that has both. Absolute stunner of a movie, Logan. This also has Logan Noir, which has the black and white version of Logan as well. Um, what we thought would be the last appearance of Wolverine is in fact not. It includes theatrical and noir version. Lone Survivor, based on a true story, not bad. It's not a bad movie. Mark Wahlberg does a lot of these, and I think these are all Peter Berg movies. He does a lot of stuff with Peter Berg, yeah. Um, they're good collaborators. Peter Berg's a pretty good director, and he was an actor too at some point, so. I loved Looper, another like Ryan Johnson banger. Bruce Willis, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Emily Blunt. Something just fell over in the bathroom. Now I'm not gonna go look because I'm scared. 
Um, oh man, the Lost Boys, the slip cover got a little dinged up. I don't know how that happened. That's a bummer. This 4K remaster is really solid though. I really, really liked it. Um, the movie's really good too, really fun time. Luca from Disney, um, kind of indifferent about it. I think it's fun. Uh, it's not great, it's not bad, it's fun. I'm never, I never get to watch these streams because I work at midnight, so imagine my surprise when I take a break at work and Adam is still streaming. Imagine, what a dummy, what a dummy. Augustine is gonna wake up in Europe and freak out when he sees Adam still going. Let's see, there, it's like seven in the morning there. So it's possible. I need you to collaborate with Akasan again. Yeah, well, maybe if we, if I, if I do go to Japan, um, I can do something with him. That'd be really fun. Physical media hoarders rise up. Oh God, oh God. You play Fortnite? I do not. One of my favorite oddball ones in the collection is the TV show Kingdom Hospital, scripted, created by Stephen King. The tin case edition I got for twenty five dollars years ago is one hundred and fifty dollars on eBay now. See, see, see. Remember Peter Berg was trying to do Dune for the longest time. Oh, no shit. I did not know that. Logan is one of my favorites. Mine too. Would you ever do Roka's Cinephile podcast for the right movie? Hey, invite me and I'll do it. JGL and Hairline and Looper though, I know. Do you watch a lot of comedy movies? I do, but it tends to be older comedies from the set, like pre... Uh, prior to the 2010s, mostly, um, yeah, actually even maybe prior to the 2000s, it depends. It really depends. I think the comedy films in like the pre 2000s tended to be better. Um, I think the humor just hit a little bit better. I feel like now the, the humor is just, I don't know. It doesn't really work that well. It, I feel like back then the humor was smarter. Now it kind of takes like shots at your knees and I don't know. It's it it's okay. Hour five. Give it up for hour five. You have any of the Blade movies? I sure do. The OG Blade on 4K Blu-ray, baby. I think I have Blade 2 on regular Blu-ray. I don't have Blade uh what is it, Blade Trinity? I don't have that one. Does he have white chicks? Uh, I don't have white chicks. Rush Hour 1 and 2 gold. I actually have all three of them in one set. Do you have How to Train Your Dragon in 4K? I do not. I do want those though, the whole set. Um, I can't wait to see Godzilla Minus One on that shelf. Yes, I, I also. Wait, have we seen the Scream movies yet? Uh, we're only on L, or yeah, we're on L. We're not there yet. Which John Wick box set you have? I don't have any box set. I have them all individually. I showed them off a little bit earlier, but I have, I don't know if you can see, no, it's off camera. But I've got one, two, and three. I don't have four yet. I would like to get it soon. I wouldn't mind getting a box set if there eventually is one. I love to stay in here, but I did work today and my brain is demanding sleep. You're only half halfway through 4Ks. At this rate, you'll hit nine to 10 hours easy. No, con no context gifts have been posted. Good night. Oh God. Thank you, Senator. Oh, Train Your Dragon Trilogy 3D 4K sounds great. Yeah, do you got, do you got Mean Streets? I don't, I need to get that one. I went and I bought um, Raging Bull and I accidentally bought the Blu-ray instead of the 4K, so I had to return it. But yeah, I'll eventually get the Scorsese ones. That Bible box set that had one, three looked cool. Bible box set that had one, three, three. Oh yeah, I don't know which one you're talking about. Were those steel books? I'm not sure. <clears throat> the Mad Max Anthology, this one includes Fury Road in 4K. So I have that one in 4K and 3D, and then I have all the other ones in 4K now, which is really cool. I think the remaster for the first one, if I remember correctly, was done by Kino Lorber, but I don't know if they just did it through Warner Brothers and then Warner Brothers gave them the license to sell it. Um, yeah. The Maltese Falcon, this one, this is an older one. This one I think is from like 1941. This is definitely one of the older movies that I own. Um, I, I had the DVD and I started watching it, but I didn't get a chance to finish. So now I have a reason to go back. 
I bought this because my girlfriend said it was good. And then we started watching and we're both like, it's not that good. It was on sale for like $7.99. So I didn't really spend money on it. The man who shot Liberty Valance, John Wayne movie, uh, James Stewart. This is another part of like the Paramount Presents line. Uh, they were doing just like regular Blu-rays for the longest time. There were 4K restorations on Blu-ray disc, and now they're doing them in 4K. So I'm slowly picking those up, or they're, sometimes they're sending them to me. And now we get to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ever read that Mad Max Fury Road behind the scenes book that came out like two years ago? No, but I should get one because I worked on that movie. Don't know if you have, don't know if you have time, but I love this background. Could we do this for new movies you have you've bought received once a month so we can see the boxes? Don't necessarily need to be watch movies. Yes. I could definitely try to carve out some time. Yeah, maybe do like new movie Tuesday, maybe like once every two weeks or something based on how much stuff I get. Um, how many copies of Power Rangers the movie you got? Uh, a one, one Blu-ray copy, thank you. Um, you didn't like Mamma Mia? Uh, I mean, it's not that I didn't like it. I just, I think she maybe overhyped it for me a little bit. And then we're watching and we're like, it's fine. Like it's not the greatest thing on earth. You get that universal monster box set that Alex Ross did all the cover art. I did not, and here's why. I Well, I'll show it to you in a bit, but I literally bought both volumes three, four, or five months ago, maybe five months ago now. I bought them like right around October, September, October. And then they announced that like three months later, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna get it if I just got these, so no. All right, MCU time. <clears throat> Iron Man 1. The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, The Avengers. Now I obviously have some blind spots. I don't have Thor and I don't have Captain America the First Avenger. Um, I, well, first of all, I have these under M because they're under Marvel Studios, Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then I have them in release order after that. Some people think that's absolutely chaotic. I understand, I totally get it. It's just what works for me. I like being able to just go to M, MCU, and then I see all the movies in release order and I can just pick whatever I want. Um, for whatever reason, The Incredible Hulk never had a slip cover. So, you know, it doesn't have it. I was lucky and I got Avengers 4K. I used to have like the Disney reward points where you scan like the Disney codes and they give you points and then you could redeem them. So I um, redeemed it for Avengers 1. Yeah, Cap 1 is really good. And then I think, I think all of these are phase, well, some of these are phase two and some of these are phase three. Yeah, so I have a lot of blind spots in my MCU collection on 4K because I have all the 3Ds. So I was like, can I, justif can I justify owning everything in 4K and in 3D? So sometimes when I don't have the 4K version, I have the 3D version. So we've got Iron Man 3. Black Panther, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Thor Ragnarok. Then we've got Captain Marvel, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which like has a lenticular and I'm like, why? Why did you do it for these, for this movie and not for the other ones? I don't know, weirdly inconsistent. And then Avengers Endgame. My gripe with Disney is they, I believe all of them are put on 66 gigabyte discs, which in theory is fine if they're not long movies that 
don't require a lot of like data for good quality. These are such visual effects heavy films. This should have been on a 100 gigabyte disc. No questions asked. It's three hours and one minute long. It's VFX heavy. It's no reason for this to be on a 66 gigabyte disc. So kind of a disappointment in that regard. Um, if they were to ever redo these, they should put them on 100 gigabyte discs for sure and put them on there with the IMAX versions, not this bullshit cropped stuff. And then my friend, then my friend Billy, yeah, and there's no Dolby Vision on them either. So it's, it kind of sucks. You buy the, you buy like the ultimate collector's edition or cinematic universe edition, no IMAX scenes, no 3D, no Dolby Vision. They're pressed on a, on a low capacity disc. It's kind of weak in my opinion. I don't know. As much as I like the spider, uh, as much as I like the MCU, I don't know, I feel like Disney really is kind of like screwing collectors over in that regard. Um, but my friend Billy was was nice enough to give me this. He didn't want it. This is the Target edition of Avengers Endgame. It's this really nice, like, thick boy collector's edition. I think it looks really cool. It has, like, some fun stuff in there. Boom. Yeah. And then to close out Phase 3, Spider-Man Far, Spider Far From Home. So pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. <clears throat> and then I mentioned earlier, um, WandaVision, the steelbook for the complete series. I think this looks so good in 4K, way better than what you can get on Disney Plus, obviously. Um, still good, but you know, this is gonna look way better. I'm gonna put that in a protective case. Black Widow, it's fine. It's got Florence Pugh, so I can't complain. I love Florence Pugh. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Simu Liu is great in this. I think the visual effects are a little dodgy sometimes. Um, but overall, I think it's a really fun movie-going experience. I think Simu Liu is great, and De De Destin Daniel Cretton is a great director. I haven't had a chance to open this one yet because I really don't want this one getting ruined, but it's the 4K steelbook of Loki season one. It even has the damn, is uh, any compromising information on here? No. First season of Loki. I mentioned, uh, well, this is Spider-Man No Way Home, the regular 4K in the US. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is the last movie that Disney sent me before they were like, you don't advertise our movies enough. And I'm like, I post them on my Twitter and on my Instagram all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. Then this is the Multiverse of Madness from Japan. My plan was I was going to take the slip cover off of the other one and put it on here. But this is a thick boy. The slip cover won't fit on there, unfortunately. And then I just got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. No slip. I would love a slip. Love a slip. Mary Poppins Returns. I love the original Mary Poppins movie. I thought this was a fine sequel. Emily Blunt is charming as all hell. I love her. Uh, it was it was good. It, she's no Julie Andrews, but like it's still good. One of my favorite movies of all time, The Mask of Zorro. Um, they currently have a seal book at Walmart, and I might get it. As much as I think this version, like this cover, looks cool. That steelbook is fire. We've got the original Matilda from the 90s with Mara Wilson. This is another steelbook. This has Atmos, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. Great movie. I always enjoyed this movie as a kid. It was a fun time. Now this I got this I got really lucky with. So I I already did own the first Matrix movie on 4K Blu-ray. I got it courtesy of Warner Brothers, and then uh, I went to Book Off, and all of a sudden I see the Matrix trilogy, the whole trilogy. It was on sale for I think twenty dollars. Pretty sure twenty dollars, um, and it has the Matrix, obviously. The Matrix Reloaded, Reboot, 
and the Matrix Revolutions. So the only reason this has a this has a slip cover on it was because I previously owned it, like I said. So I took the slip cover from there and I put it in here. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but you know, sometimes you can make a tight fit work just fine. Now I also do own the Matrix Resurrections. I did not like this movie. I know it has its defenders. I know that a lot of people are saying that, you know, it's a specific type of movie and I'm like, I just don't get it. I just didn't find the appeal. Sorry. Uh, love the Meg. So I definitely wanted the Meg too, I, but I still need to add the Meg to my collection. I think the Meg is in 3D, so I might try to get that first. Another Meg, this is Meg in from Blumhouse. Um, they put this out on Blu-ray and then of course, like eight months later, they were like, oh, by the way, here's the 4K. And everybody was, um, everybody was rightfully upset. So I waited and I got the 4K. Men in Black, the 25th anniversary edition steelbook. You can't go wrong, no notes. Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, you love it. Love it so much. How we doing over here? Blame Bob Iger cutting costs. Yeah, I know, it's super annoying. Hey, that Target Endgame is what I was referring to with the collector's edition with the extra goodies. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't normally go out of my way to get those, primarily because I was getting them truthfully for free from the studio, so I was like, eh, I'm not gonna bother, but I probably should have. I probably should have gone out of my way to get them, but you know, wasn't the Infinity Gauntlet box set release a huge mess like some people didn't even get it? Yeah, I don't really know how that went down with that whole box set. I wanted to buy it, but then I saw the price and I was like, ah, that's all right, I don't need it that bad. Who's better portraying both Peter Parker and Spider-Man, Hall and McGuire or Garfield? Uh, I think they were all good for the, what the story required of them, truthfully. Batman's favorite film, Zorro. Wasn't it the mark of Zorro? Still waiting for the new 2024 Spanish Zorro TV show to have a subtitle release at least. The Zero subtitle version is on Tubi, but I only understand English. Oh, the one that's on Amazon Prime? It doesn't have subtitles? I just wanna point out A through M makes up the first half of the alphabet and we are at five hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I do have Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Paramount sent it to me. Looks great on 4K Blu-ray. I think this is the first digital Mission Impossible movie that they shot. And then we've got the MonsterVerse, which consists of Godzilla, which came out not that long ago. His digital code already expired. Dumb. Um, Godzilla, or sorry, Kong Skull Island. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Godzilla versus Kong. All these digital codes expired, I think. <laughs> We are, we are gonna do a rewatch, I think, of Godzilla versus Kong in anticipation of Godzilla X Kong. We were thinking about doing all four movies, but we just don't have the time to do it, unfortunately, so we'll get around. Um, then there's this piece of shit. Huh. It's still in my collection. I bought it just so we could watch it. God help me, this thing is torn up. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> then we've got all the Mortal Kombats. We've got the Mortal Kombat, the remake from 2022-21. This is Mortal Kombat Legend, Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms. Probably also expired like five years ago, the digital code at least. Um, Mortal Kombat Legends Cage Match. Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind. I will probably never watch these. I probably should like off, well, this one I will hold on to, but I think these ones I'll probably never watch. I should probably offload them.
I've got The Mule from Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood's been doing a lot of movies in his old age that are like directed by him and starring him. This one also has Bradley Cooper. It's a pretty good cast. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I don't know if it's any good, but uh, we'll see. I'll probably watch it soon. Who knows? Um, this was sent to me on behalf of MGM and Sony. This is No Time to Die. This looks really good on 4K Blu-ray. I would eventually like to own all of the Daniel Craig films in one collector set. I don't think that they'll ever do... I think I'd be okay not having one box set. I think I'd be okay having like the Roger Moore, the Pierce Brosnan, the Sean Connery, the Daniel Craig, you know, movies. Um, George Lazenby played him like once, right? So I don't know where you would put that, but maybe, maybe just loop it in with something else. I don't know. Jordan Peele's Nope is a big yup. It's super good. It looks great. It sounds great. Great. Um, like thriller horror film. A lot of people have mixed feelings about The Northman. I personally love it. This is a Robert Eggers movie, the same director who did, um, wait, is it Robert Eggers? Please tell me it's, oh yeah, directed by Robert Eggers. Um, same director who's doing the new Nosferatu movie, who also did um, uh, The Lighthouse. So I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Robert Eggers' work. This is good. The Nun Part 2. This came from Warner Brothers. I've not seen The Nun yet. I'm still getting through The Conjuring Universe. I haven't seen all of them. Um, but, you know, pretty good, pretty good. I really liked Oblivion. This is directed by Joseph Kaczynski, who did Top Gun Maverick, and he also did Tron Legacy. I didn't know if I was going to like this movie or not, and I watched it at a friend's house when I was house-sitting and really liked it, so I bought it right away. I just got this a couple days ago, the steelbook for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Most of my, Tar a lot of my Tarantino movies are steelbooks, so I'm just kind of continuing the trend here. So I think probably I'll see if there's an Inglorious Bastards one, and then when Kill Bill comes out on 4K Blu-ray, I'll probably go with the steelbooks as well. <sighs> Y'all know, Oppenheimer, baby. 4K collector steelbook, and, and because I'm a psycho, the Icon edition of Oppenheimer from Walmart. I actually like this cover more than this one, but I still wanted the steelbook. I like the steelbook, but I like this cover more. So I bought both. Don't judge me too hard. This is... This is a Mad Max collection that I had from a friend. And um, yeah, I still have it. Oh, huh. why did my monitor go out? One second. My monitor just went out and I have no idea why. Hello? Very weird. Hmm, one second. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. That was weird, I don't know why my monitor just went out all of a sudden. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if I need three copy, two copies of Oppenheimer, but Universal also sent me a copy of Oppenheimer, so that was a whole thing. He's 84, George Lazenby, dang. 
So you've got Oppenheimer. Now for the obvious question, do you have the Barbie movie? Of course. You missed it though, because we were on B a long time ago. Barbie, baby. All right, time to show off this some bitch. The Middle Earth Collection, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings in one collector set. Funny story about the digital code on this. This expired, I think this expired, I don't even know, I think it expired December 31st, 2023. So I tried to enter the code. It was, I entered the code in way before the date and it wouldn't redeem. So I had to go through like four levels of uh, emails through for uh, with people at Warner Brothers to try to get them to redeem it for me. They wanted a purchase receipt. They wanted all kinds of info. And I said, look, you sent this to me. You sent this to me to review it. So I don't have a receipt. I didn't pay for it. You gave it to me. So as soon as I said that and they were able to confirm, um, they sent me a new code to redeem them. And I did. Yeah, look at this bad boy. Augustine has seen this. Augustine is very jealous. Augustine cannot have it. I actually, they sent me another box set. They had like a first box set that they put out. That's just like a regular box set. I gave that to him. I gifted that and I said, hey, they're sending me a new one. You can have this one. So look at this thing, fucking crazy. And then it's magnetically, it's magnetized. And then you can open it and you can have all the movies like this. One, two, oh, I don't even have them in the right order. What a fool, hold on. Foolish, foolish I tell thee, gotta fix this. Three, four, okay, now we're good. So it's really cool and the bonus discs, bonus disc is in here and there's a, like a booklet and all kinds of stuff. Um, but the problem is, and this is why I was saying that you gotta hold on to that, uh, this one right here. This is the one that has all the special features on it. So this is still super valuable if you want all the behind the scenes on how they made everything. This is cool, but this doesn't have all the special features that this one has. So I'm holding on to both. But yeah, pretty epic set. Pretty cool. These also have slip covers on them. They're very simplified, but I love them for the simplification. Very, very nice. They did a good job designing this. I just wish that it had all the special features. So kind of a bummer in that regard. I even have the J card for this stupid thing. That's how extra I am. I already showed this off, but I'll show it off again. Mitsumar, the director's cut. This is the 4K straight from A24. <clears throat> and then I don't have these actually on the shelf yet because I need to make room for it, but I got this recently. The Conan Chronicles, Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. New 4K from Arrow. You gotta love it, you gotta love it. I haven't had a chance to watch this yet. I'm so pissed because I didn't buy the Dune version of this like box set. So I don't actually have David Lynch's Dune in my collection. I have it like a review disc, which just comes in like a really simple, slim plastic review case. Um, but I don't actually have the box copy, which I wish I did. Someone earlier was asking me if I own Crawl. Um, I do. It's in the Paramount Scares Volume 1 collection. I did a whole video on this on my Instagram and on YouTube. It's on the Heroes Reforged channel. This has Rosemary's Baby, Crawl, Pet Cemetery. Um, what else is in here? Um, Sweeney Todd is in here. 
And one other thing. One other thing that's a little bit more current. <laughs> Adam, and I say this with all due respect, you are a media monster and I respect it. Thank you. Thank you. What's that third disc-like thing in there? Um, third disc-like thing. Oh, in the Conan set? It's like a booklet. It's a booklet of goodies. Um, I haven't had a chance to open it yet. But as soon as I do, I'll be able to, um, you know, give you more info. So it has this, like, Fangoria magazine in there. Which is wicked. <clears throat> it's got this really cool sticker set. Oh, it's Rosemary's Baby. And then it's got Crawl. Smile, <clears throat> which was the one I couldn't remember the title. Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, which was like a secret surprise announcement. And Pet Cemetery from 1990. 1992, maybe? Or 1989, I think, Pet Cemetery, the first one. I think Pet Cemetery 2 might be 1990. Yeah, so it's a really cool set. I think it's on sale right now on Amazon for like $75. So if you're interested in it, I highly recommend it. 75 bucks for five movies isn't bad. And it's a really cool box case. It's like a vinyl set, man. Yeah, yeah, I did make a video about it. So really, really cool. I know, I can't believe there's over 100 people here. You guys are crazy. <clears throat> let, me let me rephrase that. You're crazy, and I love you. <clears throat> Someone look up how much this, how much worth this has. I think this might be worth in the 150-ish dollar range. I bought this and I just looked it up um, yesterday or the day before. I went through my emails and I found the transaction. I paid $32 for this. It's from the UK. The Stanley Kubrick Masterpiece Collection. It's got basically everything. Pretty much everything in here. I don't know how I even, I think this was on Zavi. Zavi's website, <clears throat> there was like a deal for it. It was $32 shipped to my door. Um, it's pretty dope. I'm trying to like not overbend it, but I didn't really make a space for myself here. Let me see. <clears throat> so it's got this really cool painting of Mr. Kubrick, which I think is pretty dope. Oh, it says, Stanley, 1972 oil on canvas, Christiane Kubrick. Um, I'm assuming that might be his daughter <clears throat> who did that. It looks amazing. There's this amazing book, Stanley Kubrick, The Masterpiece Collection. 110 to 200 bucks. All right. Yeah, I paid $32. Crazy. There's a bunch of uh, photos of Stanley Kubrick in here. I'm not sure exactly which camera this is, but 35 millimeter camera. Um, just a, like a ton of stuff. Bunch of photographs, concept art, <clears throat> all kinds of things. So really, really cool. I don't even know, I wasn't even necessarily like looking for something like this, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, I gotta have it. And for $32, like give me a fucking break. So nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. If, if studios paid more attention to this sort of stuff, I think I think these sets would do really, really well. Um, there's also just like a little, little pamphlet that talks about the making of the thing. <clears throat> and then the big show, the whole Blu-ray set. It's got Kubrick all over this damn thing. Young. Old, everything in between. See if I can get the glare out of here. There we go. Dr. Strange Love, 2001, Clockwork Orange. Uh, what is this one? Oh, Lolita. What else we got in here? 
The Shining. Barry Linden, full metal jacket, eyes wide shut, and then all the bonus material. So <clears throat> obviously I own a lot of these on 4K because Warner Brothers has been doing these restorations, but there is absolutely no way in hell I would ever get rid of this because this is beautiful. Such a beautiful box set. <clears throat> Very nice. I like. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And I agree. I think if studios put in the effort for this sort of stuff, I think people would buy it. I just think you got to give people a reason. You know, and if you give people a reason, I think they'll I think I think they'll shell out the money for it. But they really also got to obviously like love the filmmaker or love the thing, which, you know, what's not to love about someone like Stanley Kubrick? Big fan base, you know. So it has the potential to do well. Then on top of that, <clears throat> Paramount was nice enough to send me this collector's edition of Titanic. Really cool 25th anniversary edition. It's got this semi-translucent um, like slip, I guess you could say. So you can pull that off. Be careful. So, it's got this in here. Pull this out. <clears throat> it's a really cool cover. It's been five and a half hours. I know. I know. So, another kind of one of those, like, pictorial things that has um, BTS and pictures and all kinds of stuff. And in the back, it's got the discs. For the 4K and the Blu-ray, special features, all kinds of stuff. So I think it actually looks pretty good. Um, this is like one of those rare instances where there's not a ton of digital noise reduction. They, I don't know if Paramount gave them some parameters to not do that. Um, and then there's like a whole goody thing that are like replica props that are like boarding passes and maps and blueprints of the Titanic and all kinds of stuff. So it's a very, very in-depth collector set uh, of the for the movie, and I think if you if you like Titanic uh, at all, then I think it's kind of the perfect, uh, kind of the perfect thing to buy yourself. Yeah, and it was a two it was a two tape VHS back in the day. Crazy! It's so insane to me how uh, how things have changed so much that we can just put a movie on one disc now. And you can get the whole thing on there regardless of the length of the film. The only thing that's going to change is the quality of it technically, uh, depending on the bit rate that you author it at. So this is a really cool set. I was very surprised that they sent this to me. I asked them if they'd be willing to, if they had extras. And they said, yeah, if we have one, we will. And they did. So they sent it. Again, it's just nice to like have something that has such a cool presentation. Uh, I did show the Dark Knight set. I, I don't remember how long ago it was, but you can definitely scroll through the live and try to find it. I kind of wish that somebody was time coding, which please don't anybody do this, but um, I should have maybe like paid better attention so I could have time coded every movie. At this rate, it ain't gonna happen. Question, do you also collect movie art books? I saw one for the actors for Across the Spider-Verse at Barnes & Noble recently and have been thinking of picking it up. I, I do for some, yeah. I picked up some for, I picked up one for like Oppenheimer. I just picked one up for Dune that hasn't come up yet. I've been gifted some by like friends and family uh, for like the Batman, all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> I can show it really quick, but I'm not gonna like break the whole thing down again. This is the whole set. I'm not gonna show the whole thing, but I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse. Uh, this is the limited edition box set. <clears throat> Inside of it, it has like this uh, commemorative letter from Christopher Nolan. Uh, it's got all the discs and all the books in there. It's a really cool set. There's like lobby cards and stuff as well. Um, if you can still get your hands on one. Did anybody check to see what this was going for, by the way? 
This is the only Dark Knight collection where you can get the original IMAX footage on the special features disc. I kind of wish that they, um, kind of wish Nolan put on all of his movies, but he doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> The Mummy Ultimate Trilogy. The first two, I think, are bangers. The third one's all right, um, but I'm happy to own them. I love Brendan Fraser, and I love this cast. This is a really cool, just like easy to, to kind of carry around set. The only thing that, I, that I'm not super fond of is that the discs come out from the top, so you have to kind of like pry them out. It's not the smartest design, but you got the 4K and the Blu-ray for each movie. But... Listen, I'm happy to own all of these. They're good. <laughs> Nutcracker in the Four Realms. This was something Disney sent to me. It's not bad. Uh, Mackenzie Foy, Kira Knightley, Morgan Freeman, Helen Mirren. It's 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 okay. It's enjoyable. <clears throat> Love this. Bob Odenkirk, nobody. Kind of like Taken, but Bob, kind of like Taken and John Wick, but it's Bob Odenkirk. It's so good. Ocean's 8, not that bad. Not that bad. I don't really mind it too much. Um, I didn't really realize that Sandra Bullock was supposed to be the sister of Danny Ocean. So maybe hopefully someday they'll get a like a reunion. I don't know. The Outsiders, Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, I think this was like a somewhat limited press. It could be wrong though, but this was also put up by Warner Brothers. This also includes the theatrical version. Huh, I didn't even know that this itself, oh, The Outsiders is the complete novel. You know Coppola, man, he's got his, um, he's got his, um, whatchamacallit, he's got his longer cuts. <clears throat> What is happening with alphabetizing? Oh, so the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, that's in the Middle Earth collection, so it's under M. Um, then some of the other ones I just showed you, because they're big collector sets, they're not alphabetized, they're just put on bigger shelves. So that's the only way I could get them to fit. So it's a little bit out of order. I didn't really feel like skipping through them and then trying to figure out, oh, I'm at the P's, I'll do the Paramount Scares one. Oh, I'm at the T's, I'll do Titanic. Just get them all out of the way. El Labyrintho del Fauno, Pan's Labyrinth, a classic. For whatever reason, Warner Brothers sent me like four copies of this movie at one point. And I was like, you, please stop, enough. <clears throat> Somebody was asking about this earlier, Parasite. I do have this one. I am tempted to get the Criterion. I'm not sure if the Criterion is 4K or Blu-ray though. Um, I think it's Blu-ray, which is part of the reason why I didn't go for it. Um, but if they do a repressing in 4K, I'll definitely get it in place of this. <clears throat> Patriot Games, classic Harrison Ford from the 90s. You love it, you know it. Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. This is another Screen Factory remaster. I used to watch this a lot as a kid, not knowing what the hell it was and it used to scare me, but this was another part of the lot that someone was getting rid of. And I think he sold it to me. I think it ended up coming out to like 20, 20 bucks a title, 18 bucks a title. So much cheaper than what you would pay for these things. I think these things go for like 25, 26 bucks. A very recent purchase of mine, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet, but I absolutely refused to watch it the first time on Netflix. Um, this is a 4K Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos remaster from the Criterion Collection. No chance I was watching this on Netflix first. Uh, Dead Men Tale No Tales. Love Javier Bardem. Love most of this cast, truthfully. Um, just really couldn't get into like the later movies. Pitch Black from Aero Video. 
Um, in my opinion, a pretty damn good 4K remaster of this one. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun movie. I got to watch this initially. Um, they sent me like a, it's like a promo disc to basically watch it and be like, is it good, is it not good? I think it's really good, blah, blah, blah. And then I bought it. Um, how do you how do you get movies sent to you? Um, well, I have I have established relationships with the studio just from all the screenings and all the things that we go to. So I get in contact with their home video department, and I'm like, hey, if you want, I'm happy to like um, tweet, talk about, stream, whatever your movies. And the hope is that I can encourage people to maybe buy the movies that you guys put out there. So that's why you'll see me tweet about like, hey, this is upcoming. This is a new release. Um, I, I want to, I want to be doing more of it. Truthfully, I've just been so exhausted by all of the other work that we have going on and we've been having technical issues with Adobe Premiere. So I, I want to be able to have more time to talk more about physical media releases. I just unfortunately haven't had it. So I'm doing my best to just at least talk about the fact that they're coming out. And if I can write up a short little tweet or blurb about them, um, whenever I can, because I want to promote them as much as possible. I see one of the Dark Knight sets on eBay for 60. Is it the same one that I have or is it that smaller one? Um, Cause I know that one, that one is going for cheaper. Um, you excited for the Ocean's Trilogy coming to 4K on April 30th? Yes, I'm hoping to get it. I actually just bought the Ocean's Trilogy on Blu-ray like two weeks before they announced it, but I was able to get it for a really good deal. I think I got it for like $15 or something like that. So I don't mind, I don't mind getting it the 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 steel books. Whoa, that's Marvel set though. Yeah, I talked about it earlier. It's a good one. It's a good one. How come open map versions of Avengers films, Blade Runner, etc., leak online on torrents? Yeah, I'm guilty of torrenting myself. Um open mat versions. Well, Avengers 1 is in 185, so that's technically the open mat version. Avengers 3 and 4 have an IMAX version in 190 to 1. So that's technically the open mat version. The only one that doesn't have an open mat version that I've seen is Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, Blade Runner, isn't Blade Runner shot with anamorphic lenses? Is there an open mat version? Uh, I'm not totally sure. But yeah, I mean, they're out there because a lot of people sometimes will get the original like film the actual prints and the prints sometimes are soft matted, which means that there's masking in the theater that would crop it to whatever size it needed to be. And it, you know, you had the extra space to allow for reframing if you needed to, but then some movies are hard matted where they have black uh, letter boxing actually printed onto the film. I'm not sure what was more common, but yeah, those open mats definitely exist. Any, anything is better than streaming services, my guy. I say sail the seven seas if they're going to keep making more of them and charging more every month. Seriously. Am I hallucinating? Adam, are you still alive? This must be a fever dream. I'm here. I started my physical media collection not too long ago, but could you recommend an external USB player I could use on my computer? External USB. Oh, you're talking about like a like an optical drive? Um, what do I have? <clears throat> I have this Ultra HD Blu-ray player for my computer. It's a little dusty. Excuse me, pardon me. Um, I have this plugged into my computer. This is the BP60NB10. That's the BP60NB10. This is the April 2021 model. I got this one because I could firmware hack it and then I could rip, um, rip my Blu-rays on there basically. Don't tell anyone I told you that. About how many 3D Blu-rays do you own? Do you have the TV to watch them on and the glasses? Yes, yes, yes. Um, these are all 3D Blu-rays. I have a 3D TV. It's the UB800 or UB8500, the LG. And then I have a 4K laser projector that also does 3D. So I have plenty of access to 3D stuff, and I got plenty of glasses too. All right, at the six hour mark, I think I'm gonna have to call it a night as much as I really wanna stay through. Hey, this stream will be available later so you can rewatch it. <laughs> Adam went to bed, this is AI, AI dim now. Yeah, I mean, it should be at this point. Um, BP60NB10. 
EPC. Yep, that's the one. Yep, 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 yep. It's LG Slim Portable UHD Blu-ray Player DVD Writer. <laughs> it's a film stream and tech support at the same time. Nice collection. Stop collecting a few years back. Well, maybe you are the smart one. <laughs> um, what else we got? <clears throat> Planes, trains, and automobiles, 4K Ultra HD, pretty good remaster in my opinion. Poltergeist, this looks really good on 4K Blu-ray. I really enjoyed this one. Code is going to expire at the end of the year, so I better redeem it. Recently got this one as well from Shout Select, Point Break on 4K Ultra HD. Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves classic. You gotta love it, baby. 100% pure adrenaline. Um, back when Warners was really into their 4K remasters of holiday movies, the Polar Express. Very nice. The 2017 Power Rangers, which I don't think is necessarily a bad movie. I just think that there's some things in it that don't work as well as they could. It is absolutely insane to me that this is going to be eight years old this year. What the hell? 2017 was eight years ago? Seven years ago? Holy shit. How is that possible? Jesus Christ, I need to, I need to get out of here. <clears throat> that movie came out as as long as the stream is about to be uh the predator on 4k blu-ray they restored a lot of the film grain with this new scan it looks much better in my opinion looks very good what did you think about this 10 at 70 millimeter imax i got to see it in irvine recently as well oh yeah that's where i went to go see it it was great i really really liked it it's funny i went up to the projection booth and they were actually telling me that the print was very dirty because it had been kind of like locked up in storage for three years um so they had to really kind of like clean it up a little bit uh before they ran it and the more they ran it the more it sort of cleaned itself but i thought it looked and sounded great for being three years old and just kind of like sitting in the storage the Departed Mean Girls and the Oceans Trilogy coming out in two weeks apart are going to kill my wallet. Yeah, I think I might be getting a lot of those from the studio, but I'm not totally sure yet. Wow, that sounded judgy. I mean, ripping would explode my brain capacity. <laughs> I mean, ripping ripping's not a bad way to go if you just want to, like, buy the movies, rip them, and then sell them off to um, some third-party retailer or private party, whatever you want. 100% pure adrenaline is about the opposite of how my tired ass feels right now. Time doesn't exist. We're getting old, Adam. That's because the last five years felt like 20. Guys, 2000 to 2000, sorry, 2020 to 2024 feels like 18 months. The fact that it's been four years is crazy. What's 12 times four? 48? It's been 48 months? Fuck. The Prestige, I just showed this to my girlfriend for the first time, I think yesterday or the day before. We, I really like this movie. She liked it as well. Um, I'm bummed this doesn't have a slip, but yeah, I, I, I think I own every Christopher Nolan movie on physical media. I really like this one. This came out in between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. It's great. Gotta support our boy Dan Trachtenberg. Pray. On 4K Blu-ray Steelbook Edition, this movie is so fucking good. Loved it. Loved it, loved it. We have a reaction to this one on our channel. Carpenter Classic, Prince of Darkness. Love this movie. Rewatched it, I think, the year before last, or maybe 2022. I was house sitting for Keller and I rewatched this. Um, it's so good, man. It's so good. Gotta love it. Somebody had asked me earlier if I have this one. I do, in fact, have The Prince's Bride on 4K Ultra HD Blu ray from Criterion. That is some weird aliasing happening or more A happening on the screen, it's because the, the book is textured. That's why you're seeing the weird squiggly lines. 
That is so interesting. I never knew that my camera, there we go. Never knew that my camera would do that. It's when the pixels align that it like struggles to hold the signal together. But if I turn it sideways, it's good. So yeah, there you go, good one. <clears throat> also showed this one to my girlfriend for the first time a couple weeks ago, Pulp Fiction. 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, Steelbook Edition, very solid release from Paramount. They did a great job with that one. Everyone knows I'm very behind on this, but Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, I kept thinking that there were like four of these movies. Turns out they were animated series set in between the movies, and there's only two. There's Puss in Boots and then this second one. Go figure. Ralph Breaks the Internet, the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph. I have Wreck-It Ralph in 3D up here, so this one just kind of lives on its own in the 4K section. Then of course, I've got Rambo First Blood. I've got Rambo First Blood Part Two, and Rambo Three. Um, I think there's five movies total, right? There's Ram, there's, there's John Rambo, and then there's Last Blood, I think, right? Um, I don't have the other two. There was a Steelbook set, I think, at one point, and I thought Lionsgate was going to send it to me, but they didn't. But maybe at some point I'll upgrade and get it. Rampage, which was like, uh, this is based like, based it's loosely based on the video game rampage but it's fun ready player one on 4k blu-ray this is how it came from the delivery i know somebody else said that they got something that was all like squished up someone like stepped on this thing it was all kinds of messed up but ready player one i have it on 3d and now i have it and i also have it on 4k blu-ray um, it, I mean, it looks great. It looks great on on 4K, and it's got Dolby Vision, so it looks solid. Real Genius, an 80s classic starring Val Kilmer. Um, this one is also Dolby Vision. This one's from Sony. So it's weird to me that like certain studios are very consistent with what they put out. Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, um, and then some are just not consistent at all. Some of these have other audio tracks available as well, like DTS HD. Some have like their original stereo or mono, so. James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause. I've actually never seen this movie. At some point I'll get around to watching this. Thankfully, the Digicop is also still good. Co-starring Natalie Wood. So I have, to, I have to imagine that this remaster has also done really well. Reign of the Superman, another DC animated movie. I really just need to put the DC stuff in one section. DC Universe, DC Universe movie should just be like its own universe and just have all of them in alphabetical order or something. You want to get fucked up? Requiem for a Dream from Darren Aronofsky. This is the 20th anniversary Director's Cut Edition. Um, I believe this is also Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, also from Lionsgate. Um, yeah, this movie is a trip and a half, but it's good. It's good if you're into weird, freaky stuff. How are we doing? I thought Pulp Fiction was about dancing. Did not expect the strap-ons. Oh, goodness gracious me. Yeah, my um, my girlfriend also didn't totally know what it was about. And she was like, man, I really thought the dancing scene was going to be a bigger part of the movie or a bigger deal. It's always kind of the imagery I remember from that movie. But she still really liked it. Uh, I do have following in Insomnia, Louis. Prey is a masterpiece. Yeah, it's really, really good. We need more Predator movie set in different times. I think that's what they're going to do with the Prey sequel. Um... We don't talk about those. The fourth Rambo is my favorite. Um, ZZ Baby, JMB. What does Marcellus Walls look like? Is the PS5 a good 4K UHD player? Or should I buy another one? Listen, if you already have something that plays 4K Blu-rays, just keep using it. I had the Xbox One S 
and you know it's a little bit of an older console at this point and then i bought the ub820 blu-ray player last year in like august or september it definitely color it it definitely is able to read and process and exhibit the colors in a much better way but it also helps that i have like the nicer projector i have brand new cables you know all the right cables to play all that stuff um, before i was playing a lot of that stuff on my xbox one s and my tv that didn't have the newest version of dolby vision because it's an older tv and i can't get the software upgrade to be able to play the newer vision uh, version of dolby vision so if you've got something that works for you for now there's no reason to get if you sell the if you end up selling the ps5 then yeah get a blu-ray player but you just use what you got you're not the man of steel i am Where's your arm, Jared Leto? I saw Requiem for a Dream once, loved it, never need to see it again. Sounds about right. Please tell me you have the rest with Mickey Rourke. I don't. I've actually been holding off on um, buying that movie because, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm convinced it's going to come out on 4K Blu-ray at some point. So I'm just going to wait for that because I think that one shot on 16 and 35 millimeter. So I think if they did a really nice, solid scan of it, I think it would look really, really, really good. But I love that movie. It's awesome. <clears throat> then I've got the 4K restoration of Reservoir Dogs. Um, this is Quentin Tarantino's, I think everybody knows at this point, his first movie. But it's really, really good. And I accidentally... Where is it? At some point I'll get to it. But I accidentally bought the Amazing Steelbook but I didn't know that the Steelbook was not 4K, it was Blu-ray. So I technically also have this really cool looking Blu-ray Steelbook. I'm gonna hold on to it, it's really nice. Um, so yeah, I technically own two copies of the movie now. <laughs> Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. I honestly don't know if I will ever freaking watch this thing. Have any of the Resident Evil movies in the last 10 years been good? But is that I think that's an animated one too, so maybe there's more hope for that one. Do you own a VHS collection? No. I I think that I could be pretty picky choosy with what VHSs I would want to own, but I just don't think I have it in me to buy a whole collection of VHS tapes right now. I got a PS5 recently, but I prefer my Sony UPB, UBP because I'm a sucker for Dolby Vision. The PS5 doesn't support Dolby Vision 4Ks. What stupidity on Sony's part. But yeah, that's the one thing is if you want the flexibility of Atmos, Dolby Vision, all that stuff, you kind of have to look into something that can support all those things. And they tend to be more expensive, but, you know, it, it's it's not necessary. Like your disc will still read the HDR, your um, PS5 will still read the HDR10 just fine. Um, but yeah, you know, if you want that extra, that extra sauce, then Dolby Vision, but also depends on the TV. Like if you don't have, if you don't have a TV that even supports Dolby Vision, then don't bother. Um, I don't know if I missed it, but do you have Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2? I do, but I have them on Blu-ray because there's no 4K. What are some good budget sound bars you recommend? Still call to and so I'm on a limited budget. Oh, that's a hard question. It's a hard question because... I don't keep up with those things all the time. I recommend going to um, rtings.com, literally R-T-I-N-G-S.com. They do a ton of reviews on all electronic products, TV, sound bars, and I think you could probably find something in there that is uh, reasonably priced, but still good quality. So definitely check it out. I don't own any laser discs, unfortunately. The only quirk I've seen with the Sony 4K players, you have to toggle Dolby Vision on and off and depending uh, depending on if you have it. Oh, yeah, so my projector will automatically pick up Dolby Vision if it recognizes it on the disc. What do you think are the odds of getting a 4K version of Chef? Um, I don't know. I think it's possible because I think that's a Lionsgate release. So it's possible. I just don't know if there's going to be enough demand for it. I think it would look good. I don't know if it'll look that much better, but I think it would be a decent transfer. Um, I think it's shot, I think Chef might be shot on film too. Can't remember. Uh, oh, The Revenant. 
Leo the Caps, Tom Hardy. It's great. He's great. Uh, Rio Bravo, Howard Hawks production. I have not seen this yet, so I cannot vouch for the quality of the movie, but I have a feeling that the uh, transfer is probably really good. Uh, Rocketman was better than uh, the other one, the one about uh, Queen. What was that one called? Was it called Queen? Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, and I love Queen. I love Queen more than Elton John, if I'm being honest. But I thought Taron Edgerton did a better job. Uh, I think just the movie was better overall. Uh, he, he was really good in it. Uh, so this is a weird one. It's like something, something broken in here. Oh yeah, son of a bitch. The case is broken a little bit. So a little bit, these are a little bit controversial. Not controversial, but not people don't love these transfers for the Rocky movies. They do have Dolby Vision, um, but people, a lot of people have said that the transfers are not the best. And people also don't like the fact that it doesn't have the other, you know, three movies. Or, let's see, what's missing here? It has Rocky Four, so Rocky Five, Rocky Six, which is Rocky Balboa. And I think that's the last Rocky movie. It's kind of a bummer that they put out this set, but they didn't put out the set with all of them. You would think that they would. Um, but this does have the new cut of Rocky IV, Rocky versus Drago, the ultimate director's cut. So yeah, I, I did get it because it was gifted to me, but I've always wanted the Rocky movies in 4K. I love the Rocky movies. So regardless of how great the transfers are or are not, I think it had to do more with the audio than the actual visual quality of the transfer. All right, Adam, it's been fun talking with you. About time I head to bed. Have a great rest of your stream or night. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Uh, Roman Holiday. Haven't seen this one. This is a Paramount release, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Uh, I, I do need to watch this one. I've heard nothing but good things about this movie. I just haven't had a chance to put this one on yet and experience it. What are you rocking for your surround sound, Adam? Wouldn't it be funny if I was like, um, I just have uh, the sound coming out of my TV or coming out of my projector. Uh, I did for a bit. I did for a bit, but the the sound actually from the projector sounds really good. It's DTSX sound and it sounds pretty damn good. But I did upgrade eventually and I got the Nakamichi Shockwave, what was it? 7.2.4 system. So it's a sound bar with multiple speakers inside of it. And then it has two surround speak or sorry, it has four surround speakers that I have in a in a dipole, bipole, bipole setting. I think it's bipole, where you have the speakers connected as one and it projects sound in, in more directions. And then it has two subwoofers. So the house definitely rattles. <laughs> Can't believe you're still going. I can't wait to go back to see what I missed. Good luck. Am I on hour, am I on hour 15 yet? Like how how are we doing here, folks? Am I just is this just too crazy? Doesn't even tell me how long. Oh, six hours and seven minutes. Holy shit. This is dumb. Why did I do this? Saving private Ryan. A classic. This one has uh, Dolby Vision as well, Dolby Atmos. This is like, I mean, everyone knows that this is like prime time right here. This also has so many actors who in, who uh, went on to become so famous. I think isn't isn't like it's either this. Tom Hardy might be in Black Hawk Down, but there's a bunch of actors in this as well who went on to become super super famous. Saw unrated. I actually really like the first Saw. I think it's a really, really good movie. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get this one. Carrie Elways, Danny Glover, Monica Potter. I was really blown away by this when I first saw it. So it's a, it was kind of a must have. 
Al Pacino Scarface. This one has had a couple of like deluxe editions. Um, I like Scarface. I don't love it enough to like shell out a bunch of cash to get like the ultimate premium um, version. So I think this was totally fine for me. The transfer is nice. It looks good. Um, this is a universal release. I don't think this one has Dolby Vision, but it has DTS and DTSX, DTS HD. So plenty of sound options. Oh, Scoob. I never actually, I haven't watched this one yet. I don't know if it's any good or not, but it's got, what's that character's name? What is this superhero? It's not Birdman. I forget this character's name, but he used to always, didn't he have his own cartoon on, um, on Cartoon Network? This one has HDR 10 plus. So the nice thing with HDR 10 plus is this is also dynamic metadata like Dolby Vision. Uh, it just doesn't have the Dolby Vision name, but I don't see HDR 10 plus on a lot of discs. It's mostly HDR um standard hdr which is which doesn't have dynamic metadata the way that they produce the disc they kind of do an average of the highest high and the lowest low and they kind of find the in-between point where nothing is clipped one way or the other whereas hdr 10 they can adjust the brightness and colors and all that stuff uh, on a shop for shop basis if they want to so that's cool Scott Pilgrim versus the world. This was the first movie that I saw. The pandemic wasn't over, but this was the first movie that I saw when I went back to theaters finally in 2021. Um, and I tweeted about it and uh, Edgar Wright actually shared it. And this one has all the bells and whistles, Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision. This 4K remaster looked amazing in theaters. So really happy to have this one. And then finally, finally, um, I don't have the complete set, but I do have a, I have quite a bit of, quite a few of them. Wes Craven's Scream, the original. This one is a remaster from Paramount. It looks, it looks really good. Um, I thought there might have been issues with the aspect ratio with this one, um, but I think it, I think it ended up being fine. But it's a pretty good transfer. Then I do have Scream 2, I've got the Steelbook. I don't know why Paramount sent me such like inconsistent versions, but this also looks pretty solid. This one does have Dolby Vision because it's the Steelbook. And then I have Scream 3 in 4K. And then I don't have 4, but I do have Scream the 5th that came out a couple years ago. Um, I thought I had the 6th one, but I guess I don't. Um, I'll eventually get around to getting all of them, uh, just not yet. I already showed off Scrooged earlier, but then I have the Schindler or I have Schindler's List, another Steven Spielberg classic. He made this movie literally right after he shot Jurassic Park, which I think is so crazy. And I think this came out before Jurassic Park too. Um, I believe Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, but yeah, such an incredible film, so good. Oh man, the man that I love to love, Mr. Jack Black in School of Rock. You gotta love it. This is another 4K remaster from Paramount with Dolby Audio, DTS. It's such a solid movie. But see this one, I haven't had it in a protective case. It's getting a little slopped up, just a little bit slopped up. So I need to put that in a protective case because I will regret all my life choices if that one gets ruined. With this, all the stuff going on globally right now and threats to end all the satellites. Hang on to your physical media. I have mine because I have health relapses where I need to be physically quiet. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, physical media for life. You know what I mean? Did you see the Saw movie with The Rock? I forgot the name of it. I think that was called Jigsaw. Uh, I did not see it. It's 1219. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, the Shinning. The Shining is uh, just one of the best movies ever made. I love The Shining so much. If you do a double feature of The Shining plus um, Dr. Sleep, you're in for a good time. This one also has Dolby Vision, has HDR 10 plus. I feel like they just need to put all their movies on each in, in uh, Dolby Vision. I don't know why they don't. <clears throat> 
for sure one of my favorite Denis Villeneuve movies, Sicario. This, I think, was like the second or third Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray I ever bought. I've had this one now for a long, long time. This movie is unbelievable. I love it so much. So good. Silence of the Lambs from Kino Lorber. Unfortunately, did not get the seal, uh, did not get the slip cover, so I had to get the version that has the price tag on it. <laughs> not my favorite, but you know, it is what it is. The Shawshank Redemption, another classic from the 90s. Really good transfer, everything looks really solid. Um, yeah, no notes really. It's a great film if you haven't seen it. Randomly on a whim, this was on sale for like $8, and I thought, why not? I like Martin Freeman, and I like Benedict Cumberbatch, so I'll get this Sherlock BBC original series. It's like three 90-minute episodes, so I'm like, yeah, I think this would be worth it. So, not mad about it. The Sherlock adventure continues with uh, Robert Downey as Sherlock Holmes, with Jude Law as Watson, and then Sherlock 2... What is this, A Game of Shadows? Um, I kind of mixed on the second one, but the first one I think is really good. This is kind of Guy Ritchie at his, at his betterness, not his finest necessarily. <clears throat> A 4K steelbook of Shooter with Mark Wahlberg. I think this is another, well, this is Anton Fuqua, not Peter Berg, but Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, all the bells and whistles. Shrek in 4K. I want to get the 3D version of the first three because I worked on all of them. Hopefully, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. Really solid Scorsese movie, Shutter Island. I know when it first came out, I was kind of like indifferent about it. I was like, yeah, whatever. Actually, I've really come to like this movie quite a bit. Another really great um, steelbook from Paramount, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, The Bells and Whistles. It's really good. I need to put this one in case too. We've got Singing in the Rain from Warner Brothers. The 70th anniversary edition. Um, no notes, really. I haven't seen this movie yet. So at some point, I got to rewatch a lot of these or watch a lot of these classics um, that I've had for a while now. There is only one Space Jam. Don't anyone tell me otherwise. Thank you. Absolutely not. If Warner Brothers didn't send it to me, I'd never buy it. Good shit. Kirk Douglas, Spartacus, cinema, baby. Absolute kinema. Have you ever been to the Academy Museum? Yes, I have. I just went, I just went in like, uh, we're in March. I think I went in January. My girlfriend and I went, I didn't even get a chance to post any pictures of that. I don't know why I never did, but I did go. It was really cool. I loved it so much. It was, it's, it's really cool to kind of just be in, in the thick of it, for lack of a better term. There's so much really cool stuff to see. And they had some really cool um, exhibits on John Waters and a few other directors. Uh, it, was, it was great. I recommend it. I recommend it for sure. Who has the time to watch all these movies? Well, I mean, I have a good reason to. Uh, I have a projector in the living room with a really nice 100-inch screen, so I'm pretty motivated to watch them, truthfully. <laughs> Space Jam. It's amazing. That is all. Watching this has made me realize how many of my 4Ks don't have slipcovers. Yeah, I... <sighs> the thing is, if you don't buy them like within the first 30 days that they're out, it's going to get trickier and trickier to get slipcovers. Because I get them early... A lot of the time, um, I, I luck out and I have slip covers on most of them. Sometimes I don't, but mostly I do. Uh, I love this one so much. 
the Spider-Man Trilogy on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. They've had a couple of version of these come out already. This I think was like the first one that they ever did. It's so good. Like these movies, these movies look incredibly solid on 4K. Spider-Man looks super good. Spider-Man 2. I watched these like as soon as I got them. They're they're really well done in Spider-Man 3. And then there's a bonus disc in here as well that has a bunch of BTS. For whatever reason, the um, the digital codes never worked on this. And I even tried emailing support and I never could get them redeemed, which is a bummer. But yeah, these have Dolby, Dolby Atmos. They don't have Dolby Vision, but they all look really, really good. And you gotta, of course, have the Spider-Verse movies, Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. At some point, I wanna get this one in 3D. I haven't been able to find, they have a 4K 3D version, and that's one that I for sure wanna get. So hopefully I can find one soon, but these look really, really fantastic in 4K. Uh, the first exhibition depend on oh, Miyazaki. Yeah, they did, yeah, it was Miyazaki. Even early, buying online is such a crapshoot. Yeah, it's tough. You know, you usually, I mean, it's hard nowadays because there really isn't, an, there isn't one place to go. But maybe Walmart. Maybe Walmart's kind of becoming the place to go to for new releases because they're carrying steelbooks now and all that sort of stuff. They're kind of like going all in on physical media. So maybe they are a good place to go on day one to try to get new titles with slips. What are some of your favorite films for rewatch on 4K Ultra HD? Anything Nolan, anything Villeneuve? Um... Spider-Verse, uh, damn, so much stuff, truthfully. I love watching Blade Runner, either one. Uh, what else? Interstellar is such a good one on 4K. 2001, a lot of the science fiction stuff really does well, especially when it's, uh, maybe if it's older and it has, and it's all shot on film and it's remastered in 4K. Uh, even if it's new stuff, as long as it has like really good high quality visual effects and has a good, 4K digital intermediate or 4K master, they all look great. Dune looks amazing on 4K Blu-ray. Six hours streaming, bravo. Oh, I bet those are good in 3D. Uh, well, they only did Into the Spider-Verse in 3D, not Across the Spider-Verse, but Into the Spider-Verse is really good in 3D. At some point, my girlfriend's gonna come in here and shut the stream down and go, go to bed, you psychopath. Star Trek The Motion Picture, the director's edition, uh, this came out, I think, a little bit after they put out the remaster for the original, like, four films. But I haven't had a chance to watch watch too many of these, but they look really good. Uh, they have Dolby Vision and Atmos, so. Then there's this collector set of the original four Star Trek movies. This is from Paramount. These are also done in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Thankfully, you know, for people who like want to future proof, but don't quite have a, uh, a 4K TV or player, they have a Blu-ray set and a uh, 4K set in one. So you have options, which is nice. It's not always the case with a lot of these like newer 4Ks. They're just doing 4Ks, no Blu-rays. And then we've got, for whatever reason, they like, these sets are kind of strange. I don't know. Then they've got Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Come yeah, on. There you go. And then we've got The Next Generation in a four-film collector set that I think looks really nice, too. And then it has like its own 4K packaging on here. Looks really nice in my opinion. And these are all, I think these are all mastered with um, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. Yeah, they are. So this is like the highest, highest quality that you could get for all these movies. And uh, why would you not want that? Some of these even have like, you know, Star Trek The Undiscovered Country it includes the director and theatrical cut. So that's nice. And of course, I have the Kelvin Trilogy on 4K Blu-ray as well. There's Star Trek. Star Trek Into Darkness. And Star Trek Beyond. 
I wish that they were just like, I know that they have one, but I don't have the box set that just has all three, but I should. Much easier. And then I got this too. Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch this yet. Strange New Worlds on a limited edition uh, steelbook, season one. I've heard good things about this. This one actually has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So this is like a rare occurrence where a show like this will have such a high quality physical media version available of a show. This is like movie quality for a TV series, which I love. Do more of it, please. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have my Star Wars collection here. I do have the box set that they released a few years ago, right after Rise of Skywalker uh, came out. Hector has it because he's ripping the movies to his Plex server. So I can't show you that, unfortunately. But I do have Solo, a Star Wars story, which I did rewatch it recently. It's actually pretty good. I thought it was way worse than I remember, but it's actually pretty solid. Uh, and then I do have The Mandalorian Season 1 on 4K Blu-ray on the Steelbook Edition. And I do have The Mandalorian Season 2 as well on 4K Steelbook. I haven't opened them yet because I didn't have any protective cases and I didn't want them to get ruined. And then I did keep, even though I have the collector set, I did keep this 4K Ultra HD version of Star Wars The Last Jedi on 4K Blu-ray because this one is, I believe, the only one that has Dolby Vision encoded on the disc. So I wanted to have the Dolby Vision version uh, as well. And I know, I get it, like people have controversial things to say about this movie. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff in this. Uh, I also just really like the embossing on the cover art. I wish that you could just like buy these damn things separately. We've got Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, another animated DC Universe movie. Super 8, very good J.J. Abrams throwback to the Spielberg classics, which, you know, he's producing it, so I guess that's going to be the case. The new Super Mario's brother, <laughs> Mario's brothers, Mario Brothers movie that I thought was very delightful. I wish that there was a 3D version available on disc, but alas, never, never, ever, ever. Then we've got Superman, Man of Tomorrow. A lot of these like DC Universe movies that are based on like these really, not obscure, but these random comic book runs or graphic novels. This one is not so random. Superman Red Sun on 4K Blu-ray. Very cool, very cool. <clears throat> and then of course, what kind of Superman fan would I be if I didn't have the holy shit package of Superman movies? Um, the 4K transfers in terms of the video are really good. The audio on Superman 3 and 4 is all kinds of fucked up. For whatever reason, I don't know what they did with the remastering on the audio, but they're using, especially for Superman 4, they're using like the wrong um, audio masters for the for the score. And I don't know, I don't know what they recompiled uh, in post-production, but it is not the original score as it was intended uh, to be heard. It's all kinds of weird, so well, I don't know. But I'm still happy I own the set. It's got Superman the movie. This is a new repress. Um, I think it's pretty much the same thing. I don't think there's anything different about it. Oh, actually there is. There's a, a one different audio track on this than was previously available. This has Dolby Atmos and Dolby D, or, and DTS HD. I think the previous pressing has um, the 70 millimeter like stereo track or something. I can't remember exactly. Superman 2. It's like kind of blurry, isn't it? Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. Came out in 2006 originally. 
Superman 3 with this questionable photo of Lois and Superman from Superman 1 on the back. I don't know what that's about. And then the classic Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, which I would honestly argue has the best score outside of Superman 1. Controversial, controversial. Um, but the box art is cool. And I think the, the Steelbook edition is also cool. The Steelbook edition uh, has like the original artwork on it. So it's pretty good. Does Superman include the scenes from the TV broadcast? No, but they do have that version available from Warner Archive on Blu-ray. I have it. Uh, the entire TV cut of Superman, the broadcast cut or whatever they like to call it. I would, I would love to own the Christopher Reeve movies, but I can't afford to buy anything anymore. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. You can always rent the 4K versions on like Apple TV or whatever the case or whatever the hell it's called. But so you got, you got options. You got options. Let's see, where are we at? It's 12.40 in the morning. Has my girlfriend left me? <laughs> Is she like, hey, you're a psychopath. You need to get off the internet. Oh, cool. I got an email saying that someone used the referral code to buy um, the protective cases. Thank you so much. I super, super appreciate that. Thank you very much for using the code. Um, yeah, so I mentioned this earlier, <clears throat> but... Um, I'm promoting, I'm helping promote this brand called Malco Protectors. They sell protector, protective sleeves for Blu-rays, for steelbooks. They have acrylic cases like this one that I have for Dune. I'm also going to be doing an Instagram and Twitter post about them. So um, if you miss out on it in the live stream, it's not a big deal. But this is an acrylic, acrylic case for my Dune copy. That's the 4K Steelbook with 3D. You just take this part off and this just slides out. So it's a really nice way for me to protect my collection. And you know, all I gotta do is like wipe this off and I'm good to go. I'm Gucci as the young kids say. They're really, really cool. These ones are a little bit more expensive, but these ones, these like clear cases, you can get by the barrel like a dollar a piece basically. So highly, highly recommend them. The link for them is down in the description below. If I remember, I will definitely remember to put it in the chat, um, but I will be advertising these as well on my Instagram and on Twitter. So like no big deal if you don't get to it right now, uh, there will be more information available later. I bought this not too long ago from Best Buy. It's the MVD Rewind Collection, the 4K restoration of Swamp Thing, Wes Craven's Swamp Thing. Guys, if you have not seen this movie, it is a good ass time. It's ridiculous, it's ludicrous, it's silly, but Adrian Barbeau is great in it. Uh, it doesn't totally make sense, but it's from the executive producers of Batman. Of all the Batman movies. If you don't own this, you're not allowed in this chat room. Or if you've never seen it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This is such a good movie. This Blu-ray press, this 4K Blu-ray press is incredible. Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. I've seen the bitrate on this thing jump to 150 to 200 megabits. It is absolutely insane the quality of this thing. They like did not hold back on putting the nicest version of this movie uh, uh, like possible on disc. It is so solid. It looks incredible. So good. It's just missing the 3D version, baby. Just missing that 3D. Speaking of IMAX 70 millimeter, Tenet. Tenet. There you go. There you go. Christopher Nolan's Tenet, probably like his most controversial movie, not really, but a movie that a lot of people didn't understand, which I totally get, because the first time I watched it, I was like, this might be Christopher Nolan's worst movie. Um, it's not his worst. It's definitely like tougher to, to understand on the first watch, but watch it a second time, and I think, you're, I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. 
Terminator 2 Judgment Day 4K baby I don't like it too much The DNR is just too much uh, noise reduction Should have let the grain in there That's what the point is, it's a movie It's a movie film, shot on film James Cameron, what are you doing? Anyway I like Terminator Dark Fate A lot of people didn't I thought it was pretty good I enjoyed it, would watch it again In terms of endearment, I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. This one came out not too long ago from Paramount Presents. Um, but it's a great cast, so why not? I'll eventually get around to it. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Got this one at Best Buy as well when they were still, uh, you know, supporting physical media. Now these turds don't, but I still got it. And... It's a, it's pretty solid. I did get a chance to see it uh, from a friend and then I bought it because I was like, this actually looks pretty damn good. This was a must buy, Ridley's Thelma and Louise. Classic, baby. Such a good movie, such good performances. Brad Pitt's first, first major role. Dolby Vision, though works, Criterion, you can't go wrong. The sleep deprivation is kicking in, but good impression. My sleep deprivation? I mean, it might be kicking in at this point. I really liked it from the first watch, but I get why some people don't or many don't. Yeah, you know, I think I think people come around to it. You know, Christopher Nolan, for how much I love Christopher Nolan, aside from that Dark Knight trilogy, I have not gone out of my way to get any steel books or anything for his movies, and I kind of regret it. I kind of feel like I should have put some more effort into getting, like, the super duper ultimate high-end collector edition of his films. Now it's too late, but um, I did it for Oppenheimer. Like I got the versions that I really wanted. What is the most rare 4K movie or TV series you own? I don't know, truthfully. Like I genuinely don't know. I have so much stuff that people in the chat today have been telling me so far like, oh, you've had this one. This one's worth this much. This one's out of print. This one's this. I don't know. I'd honestly have to go through and research every single title. Um, but I feel like mostly the rare ones, a lot of the time, are like the Steelbooks or any sort of special retailer version. If it's the standard Blu-ray, for the most part, you can still find them. If it's a regular Blu-ray, then there's possibilities that there's some stuff that you can't find as easily. Talking about kicking ass and chewing bubblegum, but being all out of bubblegum, they live. Another Carpenter classic, absolutely love this movie. The remaster looks stellar from Scream Factory. Uh, highly recommend. Parks View, thank you so much for putting the link in the chat for the protectors. Um, if you guys decide to buy them, um, it's an affiliate link, so I get a little bit of a kickback for you buying them through us, um, and I super appreciate it. Th this is like something brand new that I just started with them. Uh, I've just barely been talking to them for the few days. The last few days, maybe like last five days. Um, and these sample pieces came out like just in time for me to put them on the live stream. So I hope you enjoy them. <clears throat> if you didn't get a chance to see this earlier, uh, this is one of their new protective cases that they're promoting. It allows you to basically put the steel book in complete open position. So on one side, you have the discs revealed. And on the other side is like the actual art itself. And this is all one protective case. So it's got protection on all sides. You don't have to worry about anything coming out unless the discs are already loose. Um, but it's a nice way to be able to display this. If you so choose. You seen Kung Fu Panda 4 this week? Yeah, I was actually supposed to go to a screening on Tuesday. Um, but it, everything with our editing stuff has thrown me off so I didn't get a chance to go. So I, I will definitely try to go as soon as I can to go see it in 3D. That's an Apple Vision Pro? What are you talking about? Wish there was a printing of Dogma. Oh yeah, so like some of those movies that are a little bit harder to come by, I don't unfortunately have, but I would like to have. John Carpenter's The Thing, very, very solid. Love this movie. Probably one of my favorite sci-fi slash sci-fi horror films um, of all time, truthfully. Somehow I got away with getting this for $5.99. Lara Croft Tomb Raider and the Cradle of Life. 
I know that people tend to not like this one as much as they like the first one, which a lot of people maybe don't even like the first one, but for like $5, why not? Did I mention it's a steel book? That was literally a steel. I really like Tomb Raider with Alicia Vikander. I thought it was pretty solid. I would definitely love to see a sequel. I don't know if they'll ever make one. I don't know if it ever made enough money to make a sequel, but I'd be down. Now I already showed you that I have a 3D version of Top Gun, but did I tell you that I have the standard 4K version of Top Gun? And I also have the Steelbook edition of Top Gun which I wish this had a 3D version, but this one has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Does this one? Yeah, this one also has it. So there's really no, no reason to get rid of one or the other. I'll probably end up keeping the Steelbook though. And then of course, Top Gun Maverick, which was like such a surprise hit for me. I, I, I mean, it's hard to have a lot of faith in a sequel to a movie that came out 40 some years ago or 30, whatever years ago, and it being that good, I was shocked. I was really surprised. It's super solid. If you haven't seen Top Gun Maverick, man, you missed out if you didn't get to see it in IMAX theaters. It was so good. Speaking of Arnold, Total Recall, Paul Verhoeven, very good movie, I loved it. The Town, another classic. Love it, love it, love it. So good. I have no clue where the hell my Toy Story 1 and 2 are. I think Hector might have them. I'm not sure. But Toy Story 3 and Toy Story 4 and 4K. Very good. This was a weird one. I got this from Warner Brothers and I was like, I emailed them immediately. I'm like, uh, this doesn't look correct to me. The 4K edition of Training Day? In a Blu-ray Amaray. Weird. So I was like, oh, damn it to hell. How did you fuck this up? But uh, when you open it up, it is in fact the 4K Blu-ray. A really weird, really weird mistake. I had to like do a little bit of research and be like, uh, hello, what's happening here? And people were like, yeah, I don't know, some kind of weird manufacturing error. I'm like, okay, that's a really big error. Uh, somehow, for whatever reason, uh, Paramount decided to send me the holy shit package, the holy grail of holy shit packages for the Transformers. This is a steel book. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, this is the Steelbook edition of Transformers, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Dark of the Moon, Transformers whatever the fourth one was, Transformers whatever the fifth one was, uh, and it doesn't have Bumblebee. But yeah, it's got all of the trans, look how thick that shit is. It's a thick ass boy. Look at all that. It's crazy. I haven't opened it yet because I'm, I'm kind of scared, but thank you. And then Bumblebee, directed by Travis Knight. It's so good. Oh, Bumblebee was in there? Are you serious? Hold on. Did I not know that? Oh shit, you're right, Bumblebee is in there. Transformers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Bumblebee. Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Dark, Dark of the Moon, Age of Extinction, The Last Night, and Bumblebee. I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Damn, I had no idea. Son of a bitch. Okay.
And you know the thing that's kind of a bummer, or not really a bummer, but kind of annoying? This is the last thing that I bought for Transformers. This five movie collection. I got it on sale for $30, and I was like, $30 for five movies? That's not bad. But it didn't have Bumblebee. So I kept the Bumblebee Blu-ray. And now you're telling me that I don't even need the Bumblebee Blu-ray? Thanks. And then I did get, which kind of is a bummer now because I'm kind of annoyed. I have uh, Rise of the Beast in Steelbook Edition, but I can't put it in there. So no big deal, I guess. But this is a dope ass cover. Look at that thing. Till all are one. <laughs> hmm. Then we've got The Truman Show with Jim Carrey. Uh, unbearable weight of massive talent with Papa Pedro and Nicolas Cage. Very good. Oh, <laughs> at first I was like, oh, that's not how you spell Nick's name. And then I realized it's Nick Cage is Nick Cage. It doesn't say Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. That's funny. Unbreakable on 4K Blu-ray. Um, I don't have Split, but I want to get Split. But I didn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of Glass. I may get it just to be a completionist, but I don't know. I also don't know. See, this is the thing with Disney is I never know what size discs they press these movies on. So, you know. Uncharted with Spider-Man and Tom Hull, er, and uh, what's his face, Mark Wahlberg's. Uh, Brian De Palma's The Untouchables in a really, really nice 4K Ultra HD steelbook. You're talking shit over here? What are you guys talking about? Seriously, can't wait for Adam's Whatnot sale. There's a lot. There's a lot. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have like eight stacks of movies to sell. So. It will be a really good stream in my opinion. I'm not gonna do all the movies in one stream. I'll probably do a mixture of like 20, 20 titles and I'll mix it up between 4K and Blu-ray. Um, but I think it'll be good. There'll be some TV stuff, there'll be some collector sets, there'll be some um, stuff with slip covers, stuff without slips. It'll be good, it'll be good, it'll be good. Yeah, pretty steelbook. Then I picked up, because they were on also on a sale, I picked up both editions of the Classic Monsters from Universal. Had to get these ones. Super nice sets. This one's a little bit, this one's a, uh, this one. It's a little bit dinged up here, but not that big of a deal. It has, I think it's Creature from the Black Lagoon. It has it in 3D Blu-ray as well. So pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> Honestly, I keep scrolling past this video because I thought there's no way he's still alive. I assume Adam plans to never move ever again. I'm not doing a fucking thing tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday? I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing something tomorrow. I don't want to do a damn thing tomorrow. V for Vendetta, recently remastered by Warner Brothers. Love this movie by the Wachowskis. So good. Um, man, a lot of these Warner Brothers digital codes expired already, unfortunately. I never redeemed them, and I'll never be able to because they're stingy asses. National Lampoon's Vacation to go along with Christmas Vacation. I love these movies so much. These are the classic comedies that I love. This is definitely my style. I don't own it, but uh, very soon I'll be getting the Beverly Hills Cop trilogy. I love those movies so much. I thought I had Coming to America in 4K. I guess I don't. So weird. You know when you like think you have movies and you've convinced yourself you have movies, but then they're not in your collection and you're going, I'm pretty sure I had this. Did I let someone borrow it? I don't know. <clears throat> this is a newer one, 25th anniversary of Varsity Blues. This is like 
super, super classic stuff from my childhood. Uh, this was like one of the most talked about movies uh, out there for the longest time. Venom. What else is there to say? It's fine. War of the Worlds and When Worlds Collide on a collector's like Paramount Presents 4K edition. Uh, I think there was like one thing that was off about this remaster, but for the most part, people seemed really, really happy about it. George Powell, double feature. I really want to rewatch these. I haven't seen War of the Worlds in a really long time, probably since maybe before the Spielberg one came out, truthfully. Speaking of Spielberg, his version of War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise. I think, is it Duncan Jones that did uh, Warcraft? David Bowie's son? I never ended up seeing this. Was this good? I heard pretty good things about it. I like, thought I thought people seemed to really like it. <clears throat> of the 80-ish classics, Blues, Brother, Blues Brothers is my all-time favorite comedy. Yeah, that's a good one. Huge W that the stream hasn't gone sub 100 all night. We love Adam. We love movies on a disc. Really? We've had consistently over 100 viewers? That is fucking crazy. There's a sequel to When Worlds Collide, too. Oh, nice. I stopped watching Smallville after Rosenbaum left. Never felt the same. You're not wrong. Uh, I loved it, but I'm a girl. It was decent. I liked it. But the world is his game. Workout player of the movie was fine. Yeah. So that kind of is like the general consensus. What are your thoughts for all of you who like liked who did who were like kind of mid on the Warcraft movie? What did you think about the Dungeons and Dragons movie? Because I loved it. I thought it was so good. And I'm not a and D player by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I really really enjoyed that Dungeons and Dragons movie. I hope I kind of hope that they get to do a sequel, but it's got to be the same people. You can't just try to like force one. It's got to be good. People got to love it. It's got to be a good story again. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. I was buying movies I never even heard of. I, and I had to sell. A, oh, yeah. Man, I sold my Blu-ray 4Ks. I just didn't have the room. And I had to sell. Otherwise, I would just keep collecting. I was buying movies I never even heard of. Yeah, that's the danger. You can't do that. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, I'm very fortunate that the studio's will send me early review copies of, of a lot of movies. And I do my best to try to post about them on Twitter or Instagram. Um, by the way, if you, if you guys are not following me on Twitter or Instagram, definitely follow me because I try to post as much as I can uh, on, on any of the 4K or Blu-ray releases that I get. Um, but that's the danger. You really just got to buy what you really want to have. And then when you get what you want, then you can maybe splurge and do blind buys, but don't go crazy. Cause then you'll just keep buying stuff that you don't want or won't need. Oh, cool. So people seem to really like the D and D stuff. Hector Augustine Adam as a D and D party would be awesome. You would have to be really patient with me and you'd have to explain all the rules. I'm very impatient when it comes to D and D. I, yeah, I'm kind of snobby in the sense that I don't want to do it. So you got to really convince me that it's worth my time. I only buy movies I want to watch again. And that's all you need, man. That's all you need. I follow you where it counts letterbox. That's hilarious. So funny. The ultimate cut of Watchmen because Zack Snyder can't figure out what version is the ultimate cut. So he just puts out five different versions. Obviously, I have never watched this. Well, I've seen Watchmen, but I still haven't sat down to watch this thing. I'm scared to look and see what the runtime is. It might be longer than this stream. Watchmen Ultimate Cut, 215 minutes. Watchmen Director's Cut, 186 minutes. Under the Hood, 36 minutes. Can someone tell me what 215 divided by 60 is? And that'll tell us how long we've been here. Uh, the Way We Were, Barbara Streisand and Robert De Niro, Robert Redford, I should say. I had truthfully never heard of this movie. I did not buy it. It was sent to me by Sony. So I will at some point watch this, but I don't know anything about this movie. 
Whiplash, Damien Chazelle with J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller. This is amazing, an amazing movie. I had the Blu-ray and then this went on sale. Uh, I don't know when, so I, so I upgraded to the 4K. So good. Three hours and 35 minutes? Son of a bitch. My stream is longer than his movie. Who would have thought? Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Remastered in 4K a couple years ago by Disney. Um, I really hope that with the new deal in place that we'll get more um, Touchstone Hollywood Pictures movies restored in, in 4K. That would, be, that would be really cool. I think Disney has a huge vault of stuff that hasn't been put out yet. But it's not up to Sony. It's up to Disney no matter what. So hopefully they dip in and do some cool stuff. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. A classic. Love this Gene Wilder movie. It's just like a really feel good. Just like a really feel good film. And kids love it. The Vavitch by Ari Aster. I uh, also love this movie, Anya Taylor Joy. I think I, I think I low key might have like a little bit of a crush on Anya Taylor Joy, maybe. Um, don't tell my girlfriend, but yeah, the Vavitch is super solid. From the Vavitch to the Vavizard of Oz in 4K, another classic title. Uh, I do have this in 3D as well. At one point, I thought about getting like the 70th anniversary Blu-ray, which had the Blu-ray 3D remaster. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not too big. I'm not in big enough of a fan of The Wizard of Oz to justify that cost. So I went with the 3D Blu-ray and then Warners was nice enough to send this to me. The Vivolf of Wall Street. <laughs> the Vivolf of Wall Street. Uh, really good. I... Still think that Leo should have won the Oscar for this movie instead of The Revenant. But I get it. He was up against some stiff competition that year. So it's all good. But I love this one. This is the first movie, the first American movie, I should say, with um, Margot Robbie in it. It's crazy that this is already 11 years old. Wow. Um, and Margot Robbie is naked in it. Completely. Wonder Woman Bloodlines, another DC animated, uh, DC Universe animated movie. I think this came out today, or it comes out next week. Timothée Chalamet in Wonka. I got this early. I think I got this maybe like three days ago. So it might not be out till next Tuesday, or maybe it's been a week already since I've had it. I honestly don't know. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but it's Paul King who did the Paddington movies, so I have to imagine it's pretty good. Young Guns with Emilio Estevez, Charlie Sheen, Lou Diamond Phillips, Kiefer Sutherland. I forget who the other actor is who plays Dirty Steve. Oh, is it Dermot Mulroney? Yeah. It's a really good cast. So they had this at Best Buy, and I figured I got to get this one. X-Men First Class. I really like this movie. Matthew Vaughn directed this one. It's super solid. Fastbender and McAvoy are a delight. X-Men Days of Future Past. Also love this one. I know I mentioned earlier I have the 3D Blu-ray. But I had to get this one in 4K because it is a very solid entry in the X-Men universe. And then the last two 4Ks, Zombieland and Zombieland Double Tap. Which I think it's weird that they're advertising this as IMAX enhanced, fully immersive picture and sound. Like, what's enhanced about it? Is it in 190 to 1 ratio? No, it's in 239 to 1. What the fuck is enhanced about it? I watched this and I didn't, like, notice anything different about it. So what makes it IMAX enhanced? I don't understand. So weird. Huh. Huh. 
Uh, I think the first one was definitely better. So. Whew, holy shit. So we got through all the 4Ks. Uh, the HD Blu-rays are all that's left. And the, I, my DVD collection is so little that it's not even going to take me long to get through it. No Y movies, huh? Um, well, Young Guns. I have Young Guns. And that's I think that's the only one I had, right? Jason Bomback, thank you so much for that $20 super chat. Wow, now I'm on my lunch at work and you're still going. Here's to the marathon. After your movies, you're going to show any vinyl you own? Hell no, not in this stream. Not in this stream. I'd have to go into another room to get all that stuff, and I don't want to wake my girlfriend up. She's probably already concerned that I'm still alive at 1 in the morning. <laughs> I'm outraged. Outraged! Outraged, I tell you! Did you see the Wonka experience in Glasgow? Oh, yes, I did. Yikey, Nike. Very bad. Batty Anya. Have you seen Queen's Gambit? Sure have. Um, all right, should we get through these Blu-rays now? Adam's getting eepy. Guys, I had like barely a dinner too. But, you know, listen, I signed up for this knowing that it was going to be a long stream. I didn't know it was going to be this long. I just don't know how to like not talk to the chat room. I'm trained to talk to the chat room. I can't just sit here and be like, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, The Batman, Batman Gotham by Gaslight. I probably should to get through it, but yeah, whatever. All right, Blu-rays? Twenty One Bridges, R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman. Um, yeah, Russo brothers produced it. Didn't they direct it too? No, they just produced it. Um, Eighty for Brady. This will probably not be in the collection for very long because who the fuck wants this movie? Five Hundred Days of Summer. This one would be a pretty nice uh, 4K Blu-ray release if they eventually get to it. <laughs> JC Kilpack said, all right, I'm out. Fuck this. Love you, Adam and Chad. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Take care of you, too. Kira Rideout says, favorite Lois Lane. Um, Bitsy Tolik has been such a solid Lois Lane for the entire duration of Superman and Lois. Love her. Love her so much. So good. Starting with the numbers. <laughs> Just when I thought he was done, he pulls me back in. Oh my God, just woke up and got here. This is a really long stream. I want to see Adam text or call Hector Augustine to see if they're awake to respond. Absolutely not. I will not be calling either of them, especially Augustine who's in like Europe. 1883, the Yellowstone like prequel series. I haven't had a chance to watch this. Maybe it's good. I don't know. A Star is Born, I actually did watch this with my girlfriend for the first time like three months ago. I didn't, I avoided it because I was like, I don't want to watch this movie. And then we watched it and I was like, damn, it's actually really good. A Scanner, a Scanner Darkly, Richard Linklater, Keanu Reeves. This one is like rotoscoped animated. It's so impressive. I love it. The Adventures of Batman. I think this is from the late 70s, early 80s, maybe. Uh, it's the entire like run of the show, I guess. I don't know how many episodes are on here. Um, it's 378 minutes long. 34 exciting adventures featuring the voice talents of veterans Olin Soul as Batman, Casey Kasem as Robin. I think these were the same versions of Batman and Robin that showed up on Scooby-Doo once. Fun fact. Air, the story of how Michael Jordan uh, partnered up with Nike to make his first sneaker. I haven't had a chance to watch this, but Ben Affleck actually plays, I forget what the guy's name is who's this, who, who uh, created Nike, but the guy who created Nike, uh, his son is Travis Knight, the director of Bumblebee. Fun fact. American Sniper, Clint Eastwood, Bradley Cooper. Um, I know that Chris Kyle was like a very controversial figure. I think originally when I saw this, uh, I liked the movie quite a bit. I'm not sure how it holds up now, but I'll give it a rewatch. I know there's a 4K steelbook coming out soon. Oh, Phil Knight. Phil Knight is the guy's name. Annabelle Comes Home. 
you know, I'm kind of torn on the Annabelle movies. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Generally speaking, the Conjuring movies are sometimes the better ones, but this was okay. Annabelle Creation, watched this one not too long ago with my girlfriend too. We were, we were okay with it, it was fine. Um, I have a very incomplete set of Arrow, season one, season two, season three. Eventually I like to get the whole thing. Oh, and the eighth and final season, which was condensed into like, what, eight episodes or something? I don't remember now. Definitely a shortened version. Um, Apocalypto, which I had never seen. This one was kind of a hard one to get. I think I was able to get it like on eBay or something, but I don't know if they'll ever do a 4K of it, but I figured I'd get it. Apollo 13, which I do have a 4K on the way that I got from Walmart. I got it for a deal. So this one I can retire um, because I think the 4K will have everything that I need. This really slick seven film Audrey Hepburn collection that I got from Paramount that I think is super, super cool. The movies included our Breakfast at Tiffany's, Funny Face, My Fair Lady, Paris When It Sizzles, Roman Holiday, Sabrina, and War in Peace. The only one I have in 4K is Roman Holiday. So still plenty of movies to watch. I think my girlfriend would really, really like to watch these with me. There's a lot of these I have not seen. <clears throat> and I think, I think she likes these like classic films. So <clears throat> uh, Babel from Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu, Brad Pitt, uh, Kate Blanchett. Really stellar cast, really good movie. Gael Garcia Bernal, so good. Did you, ever, uh, did you ever try to even approximately count how much of these you have or are we doing it right now? Um, I, I, I have a spreadsheet that should have most of them. I think it's like 1,200, 1,300. I get stuff um, fairly regularly, so it's harder for me to keep a super, super accurate count, but I'll eventually get around to doing it. What's a 90s movie that doesn't have a sequel that you think needs a sequel? A 90s movie? Um, I think The Mask, I don't even think The Mask needs a sequel necessarily because you could just remake that but make it closer to the comic book. I don't know. I can't think right now. So off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Are you Mexican? Nope. Um, as far as I know, I'm not. Um, I just try to pronounce words correctly. <laughs> The 90s Sabrina remake with Harrison Ford is good as well. Has seen Internal Sunshine? I just wanted to hug my wife after watching that film. Yeah. Oh, has she seen it? Yes. She she actually really likes that movie. I need to buy the 4K. I think it's, what is it, Kino Lorber that I think did the 4K restoration? Or maybe it was Shout? Uh, I got to get that. Are there any fans of Babylon 5 here? Completely remastered, the Babylon 5 complete series. I don't know how many seasons it is. One, two, three, four, five seasons. Yeah, look at this fucking thing. Hello? It's insane. It is like the most comprehensive, insane thing I've ever seen. Disc on disc on disc. Crazy. So I've never seen Babylon 5. Do you think, knowing what you guys know about me, being a fan of science fiction, do you think I would like this show? Or do you think I'd be like, oh, this is 90s cheese on disc? Rendered in Lightwave. Wait, really? Are you fucking with me? Yeah. At some point, maybe I want to sit down and watch all this. I think it's cool they put it on Blu-ray. Like, look at that thing. This is thicker, this is thick as hell. It is insane.
the Back to the Future trilogy. So I I I have this on in a 4K set. It's in a box over there. I should have grabbed it. Um, but I do have the 4K of this. My 4K also has like the hoverboard collector's piece. Um, but I'm holding on to this because this actually has more special features than the other version that I have. So Back to the Future is great. Super, super good. If you've never seen it, what the fuck? You should watch it. Uh, the Ballad of Lefty Brown. This was also sent to me by Lionsgate. I don't know a damn thing about this movie. I still haven't watched it. I've had it for a few years, so I probably should either watch it and get rid of it. Um, I'll probably get around to it soon, though. Or I might not and just be like, hey, you know what? Someone take it. That boy, thick. There's definitely 90s cheese on disc, but you might like it anyway. Wow, that beats like eight discs of physical GTA 5. Don't ever think I saw so much in one box. Babylon 5 is deeper than Trek, but it's carefully crafted ongoing story. I wonder if Space has a Blu-ray box. I heard that Babylon 5 series is very good. I haven't seen it, though. Cheese in Elements. A definite good story, though, with the element that the creator, J. Michael Straczynski, says tidbits on Twitter about it. Some oh, did Michael J. Michael Straczynski write it? Hold the phone. I didn't know that J. Michael Straczynski created this. That's really cool. Did I, am I reading your message correctly that he's the creator? Oh shit, really? All right, he did all of it? I'm gonna have to watch this fucking thing now. Um, I don't know when. I don't know when, but we will get around to watching this series. I am vengeance. I am the night. I will whoop your ass. Uh, this is like the most comprehensive version of Batman the Animated Series that I think they have on Blu-ray. I know that there's a smaller box set. I lucked out and I have this big boy. I love it with every fiber of my being. Um, this actually does have Mask of the Phantasm and it has Sub-Zero. And I think that the versions of Mask of the Phantasm were, were, was made from the 4K restoration, but it's a HD disc. So, so good. So good. Good news, folks. I got more Batman for you. Uh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Batman Death in a Family. This was like an interactive Blu-ray where you could actually pick the fate of Jason Todd, I think. Um, yeah, Robin will die because the Joker wants revenge. You can choose to save him. Robin cheats death, Robin dies, or Batman saves Robin. So it had alternate endings based on what you would pick. So I think that's kind of fun. I think it'd be kind of cool if there was more interactive stuff like that. Batman Ninja, DC animated movie, The Batman, the complete series. Um, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, the deluxe edition. Uh, I think this is or will soon be coming out on 4K Blu-ray if it hasn't already. Batman The Killing Joke, which I think also had a 4K Blu-ray release at this point. Um, and then Batman vs. Two-Face, this is based off of the 1966 versions of the characters. There's Gotham Knight, I have it on disc and contains few anime shorts supposed to be connected to Nolan's Batman. Don't know if it's already been shown or not. Um, you are correct. I did show the Dark Knight trilogy multiple times already. Um, I think the 4K versions and the Blu-ray versions have Gotham Knights as a special feature, so... Yeah, but I do think you're right. I think they also did sell it separately. Not sure if on Blu-ray, but um, I think on DVD for sure. The first season of CW's Batwoman. You know, I didn't, th I, I, I didn't think it was a bad show. I just don't think 
I don't know if they necessarily like totally fully thought out what the show was going to be, but I had nothing against Ruby. What's her name? Ruby. Help me. This actress's name. I, I, Ruby Rose. I thought she was fine. You know, people made a big stink about it. I thought she was fine. <clears throat> and then I have the second season. And then I don't know, I don't remember if it had a third season or not, but um, I got this one too. Why not? Idris Elba in Beast. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet, but um, I remember the trailers being pretty damn good. And a lot of people said that it was actually a good movie, so. I don't dislike this movie. It's fine. I, I'm just generally like not keen on the Disney remakes, period. But, you know, this is a pretty good cast, and I love, I love Emma Watson. Gorgeous. Uh, and Ewan McGregor's in it. And Josh Gad is such a delight in this thing, so I don't mind it. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead do America. This used to be on TV all the damn time. Uh, I've seen it so many times that I haven't even bothered to open this Blu-ray to rewatch it. But I'm sure from for whatever like remastering work that they did for the 1080 Blu-ray, it's probably pretty good. Um, Adam McKay's The Big Short. This is a really, really good movie. This is one of the movies along with The Revenant and Kung Fu Panda 3 that I did like a four hour, no, it must have been like a six or seven hour um, like movie theater watch through. This was one of them. I was really confused by it. So I think I definitely, I think it's definitely time to re, re, uh, revisit this one and see if maybe I understand a little bit better. Bill and Ted face the music. I actually thought this was a really fun sequel. And it's got uh, Samara Weaving, who I think is really, really good. And of course, Alex Winter and Keanu are the best. Birdman from Inyaritu, once again, really, really good movie. I don't think this one has had a 4K, and I would absolutely kill to have this one in 4K. Um, this was like Michael Keaton back to form. Or not that he was ever out of form, but it was just nice to see him out in the public eye again, like to this level. Um, this is already also like six, seven years old. If you want to see Johnny Depp with creepy blue contacts, Black Mass is for you, but it wasn't necessarily for me. The Black Phone, on the other hand, from Scott Derrickson with Ethan Hawke, solid. Cannot wait for the sequel. The Book of Eli, a classic. Very, very good. Denzel Washington, crushed. Uh, Bones and All, Timothée Chalamet in a Luca Guadagnino movie. It's funny that he did this one, and then Zendaya did a movie with him right after that I think is coming out soon. Uh, maybe there was already something else that came out in between, but I think Bones and All precedes the movie that uh, Zendaya is in. The Boogeyman, not available on 4K Blu-ray, but I'll take it on regular Blu-ray. You know, it's Disney. They have an advertisement for Disney Movie Insiders in the back, but no 4K, what the fuck? Boomerang, a movie that was on TV all the time in the 90s that I still have not seen. Challengers. Challengers, that's the movie with Zendaya from Luca Guadagnino. Um, I know it's not the days of 26 episode seasons, but I hear TV shooting schedules are pretty grueling. Yeah, I think so too. I also think she had a rough time with the full TV series work week schedule too. I think I missed some of the conversations, but... Oh, Ruby Rose, yeah. Isn't Gary Whitta doing a prequel to Book of Eli? Who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? Um, from Jorge Gutierrez, The Book of Life. Beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh, Diego Luna, Zoe Saldana, Channing Tatum. This is excellent. I think that there's, I think, 
I think there's a 3D Blu-ray of this. I should probably try to find it, but really, really good movie. Here we go, Guillermo's Blade 2, which is not as beloved as Blade 1, but you know, it is what it is. It's still pretty good. Uh, this is a Kino Lorber remaster of Brick, Ryan Johnson's first feature film with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I think this one was done... This is a brand new 4K restoration supervised by Ryan Johnson. There's some audio commentary, multiple audio tracks. Uh, really good. Blue Jasmine. I know Woody Allen's a controversial guy. I totally agree with all the comments about him um but Kate Blanchett in this movie is really good absolutely devastating but like such a solid performance <laughs> Adam working an eight-hour stream here absolutely only for the homies listen if you guys want to support the stream you guys can super chat at any time um you know, we can't really do what we do without you guys, whether it's supporting us on Patreon, whether it's just watching our videos and sharing our videos, liking them, subscribing to the channels, um, tuning in every Wednesday for everything that we're doing. Uh, yeah, we super, super appreciate it. And we definitely cannot do what we do without you guys. The Boys, Season 1 and Season 2 Collector's Edition. I will definitely be getting Season 3 Um Fairly soon here. Uh, I'm not in the biggest rush, but I probably should get it soon. Uh, Brooklyn, I really, really enjoy uh, Saoirse Ronan. This is a really nice sort of like coming of age movie about her travels or her, her emigration to the United States. Because I think, I think that's what this, if I remember correctly, yeah, Irish, Irish immigrant uh, from in the 1950s in Brooklyn, hence the title. Like I said, I don't have a ton of the Bond movies in 4K, but I did pick up this copy of Casino Royale. It was only five bucks. I think this is my favorite Bond movie. I think I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that this is by far my favorite Bond movie. But I want to get the whole Daniel Craig collection in one set. These two are just insane, but this is a really fun movie. Not the best, but I enjoy it. Everyone knows how I feel about this gorgeous film. This is like next level. I love this movie so fucking much. I would buy a 4K Blu-ray day one. Do you have Blue Valentine? Whew. Let me tell you. I went to the theater to see Blue Valentine and I had just gotten out of a relationship, my first big relationship. That movie fucked me up. Hey, listen, Skyfall is great. I love Skyfall too, but I think Casino Royale edges out all the Bond, the Craig Bond movies just a little bit. Um, this has a theatrical and the director's cut of Chronicle. I really liked it at the time. I haven't rewatched it in a few years, so I don't know how well it holds up or how well it doesn't hold up, but I really did enjoy it at the time. Absolute classic, a gem of a film from the 90s, Clueless. Hello, who doesn't love it? It is so good. As if. As if indeed. I'm not sure if that one will ever get a 4K remaster. It'd be cool if it did. Uh, then we got Cocaine Bear, which was absolutely insane. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. It's got Ray Liotta. Um, is Alden Ehrenreich in this movie? I thought he was. Um, yeah, but it's pretty good. The Conjuring 2, which I thought was actually pretty good. I still don't think that any of them have beat the first one, but I did like The Conjuring 2 quite a bit. And this is, I think, the movie where The Nun was introduced, if I remember correctly.
Constantine, the House of Mystery, animated DC Universe, DC Showcase animated shorts. Excuse me. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. I'm not sure um, how it is or how it's been received, but, you know, Guy Ritchie can be super hit or miss sometimes. <clears throat> Mr. Jumex, thank you so much for that 499 super chat. What's up, Adam? Just tuning into the stream from Prague. Oh, thank you so much. Your love for Prague is part of the reason I'm studying here for the semester. It's awesome. So happy to hear that. That is so cool. Have a beer for me, please. Go to Local, get yourself a Smajini Sir, get yourself a Dark Gozel, potato salad. Oh, mm, so good. Have the best time. Thank you so much for the super chat. You had to mention the nun at 1 a.m. Sorry. Do you have Boiler Room? No, I don't. Is, I, is Boiler Room a Kino Lorber title? I don't remember. <clears throat> mean Girls getting a 4K. I won't be surprised if Clueless gets one. Good point. Good point. Chef is my comfort film at this point, alongside Ocean's 13. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I might, no, not tonight. I might put Chef on tomorrow morning or something. Cowboy Bebop, the complete series. This is the original animated version, not the Netflix version. I love this show. This was a show that I discovered. I didn't discover it. Uh, I watched it during the pandemic with my old roommate, Zach, and I fell in love with it so much. So I had to buy the Blu-ray immediately. Crocodile Dundee. The complete trilogy. Where the fuck is Ryan Unicorn? Why aren't you in here, you turd? Um, I didn't even know that they did a third one, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. But I, I thought there were only two, but I got all three. Hey, you ready for more spookies? The Curse of La Llorona. You never want to sleep again? You never want to sleep again? Here you go. This is really cool. Um, I'm all about like behind the scenes sort of movie documentary type of things. This was an original series from Shudder, the streaming service called Cursed Films. And it kind of went into like the myth and all of the legends, uh, the legend, um, the legends behind five movies, Poltergeist, The Omen, The Exorcist, The Crow and Twilight Zone. The movie, The Crow, obviously, you know, the big one being Brandon Lee uh, accidentally being killed on set and them kind of diving in and was it an accident? Was it not an accident? How did this happen? What happened exactly? Twilight Zone, uh, which was directed by John Landis. There's a super, super unfortunate incident where a helicopter stunt goes wrong and one of the helicopter blades severs a few people's heads, two of the people being children. Um, it's pretty pretty gnarly but it's a documentary so it's kind of graphic at times but not overly graphic but it's very very good <clears throat> then we get to the criterions we've got lord of the fireflies or sorry not Lord of the Fi Lord of the Flies, not Lord of the Fireflies. Uh, Lord of the Flies, 1963, presented in 137 to 1. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a big deal movie. Restored from the 4K digital film transfer. Um, so this is very possible that this could come out on 4K Criterion Blu-ray fairly soon. At some point. Eight and a half, by Federico Fellini. Another classic film, uh, Italian cinema at its finest. This one, I think, is from 1960-something, 63, I think. 63, yeah. Monaural uh, in Italian with English subtitles. Ooh. This right here. This right here. In the mood for love. Wong Kar Wai. So good. So good. I actually have, let me get, grab it really quick. Uh, 
The World of Wong Kar Wai. This is like a must have for anyone who is a fan of Wong Kar Wai. This features As Tears Go By, Days of Being Wild, Chung King Express, Fallen Angels, Happy Together, In the Mood for Love, and 2046, which up until this release was not available on disc, like I, since DVDs, I think. It was like really hard to come by. So yeah, I'm not sure how much this goes for. I think probably a good chunk because I don't think it's that easy to get now. I'm not sure, but really solid. And In the Mood for Love was the first one that I ever saw and so good. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas that I quickly found out when I rewatched it recently with my girlfriend. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this movie. This is like an acid trip buddy movie, but I don't know like what the hell the point of this movie is. It's enjoyable to an extent, but I think me in high school was like way more excited about this movie than me as a 37 year old adult. Uh, My Life as a Dog by Lassie Halstrom. Um, I don't, this was gifted to me by somebody. Someone like sent this to me. I don't know why. I have no clue why. Maybe because they wanted me, there was, whatever the context of the conversation was, they wanted me to watch this movie. Um, but I haven't, still haven't seen it. I haven't had it for too long, I don't think, but I gotta watch it. Christopher Nolan's The Following, or Following, I should say. Uh, from 1999, I think. Yeah, 99, 70 minutes in 133 because he shot it uh, in the full film gate. So, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's, I think, probably like my least favorite Nolan movie, but I get it. It's his first. So, you know, you're really just there to witness the craftsmanship and sort of witness the humble beginnings of the famed director. Um, it's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not the most, like, uh, got you by like, for lack of a better term, got you by the balls and like pulling you in. Um, it's good, but it's not super, super, super like mind blowing. The Dark Man trilogy, which I guess since I've I've uh, replaced the first one with the 4K Steelbook, not mad about it though. I still don't have the Return of Duran and Die Dark Man Die in 4K, so I'll take what I can get. Dark City, the director's cut. I think this might have a 4K Blu-ray. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sometimes in this like mood to watch really weird kooky sci-fi, and this is definitely in the category of weird kooky sci-fi. Deathstroke, Knights and Demons, the movie. Another DC animated movie. Um, WB should put a Nolan box set when Oppenheimer comes out. Well, they can't because Oppenheimer is not a Warner Brothers movie. It's a Universal movie. So, yeah, unfortunately they cannot. They can do Interstellar because I think Interstellar was a co-production of Paramount Pictures and Warner Brothers. And I think Warner's, no, I think Paramount actually owns the rights, the home distribution rights to Interstellar. So maybe not even Interstellar can be included. So it would just be... Insomnia, the Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, um, Dunkirk, Tenet. Yeah. Thoughts on Moon Knight Steelbook? Looks good. Send it to me, Disney. Send it to me. Uh, then I've got some Disney stuff here. Aristocats, which I think Hector's a big fan of. Uh, Bambi, real heartbreaking stuff. Uh, Brave, Hercules, The Lady and the Tramp, and what else do we got?
Mary Poppins, you can't go wrong with a classic. Peter Pan, another great one. Ratatouille. No, Memento is not Warner Brothers. Memento was put out by, damn, I don't, uh, the Blu-ray's down there, but uh, I can't remember exactly who the distributor on that one was. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Tarzan. And Wally, -E, which is now in the Criterion Collection, I believe is a 4K title, so I think it's time to get rid of this one and get the 4K Criterion. I've got two versions of Django, the Sukiyaki Western Django, a Takashi Miike film, uh, which I have not seen this one yet. This one is from MVD, but I'm not sure what year this is from. Um, well, it says 2000, oh, 2007, it looks like this one came out. And then I've got Django Unchained, which I don't believe has a 4K uh, release yet. Oh, New Market. Yeah, New Market, I believe, is the distributor, which I don't know. Um, I don't know if New Market is owned by somebody now or who like distributes New Market films. If Memento came out today on 4K Blu ray, I have no clue who the distributor would be. Maybe like a Lionsgate? Yo soy Dora. Crazy, this girl's gonna be hot girl. Not hot girl, hawk girl. And she was just in Madam Web. Poor, poor soul. Poor soul. Oh no, this is a different actress. Isabella Monaire. I'm thinking of Isabella Merced. What else was Isabella Monaire in? Wasn't she also in some other like superhero movie or no? Either way, ella es Dora. Dr. Seuss is how the Grinch stole Christmas. Dragon Ball Z, the tree of might, the only fucking movie I own this is, uh, is because we watched with Danny Fernandez. There's an uncut reaction of this on Patreon. At some point it's gonna come to YouTube, but unfortunately it is very low pro for me. Dumb and Dumber, the unrated version. Augustine was actually talking about this and how frustrating it is that you can't just get the regular Dumb and Dumber original theatrical cut on Blu-ray. Oh, so that is, oh, so she changed her last name. Interesting. What did I say? Isabel Moner? And she changed it to Merced? Huh. I wonder why she did that. I mean, whatever she wants, obviously. <sighs> <sighs> Dumb Money, I think this was the GameStop movie um, where during the pandemic, a bunch of people invested in GameStop um, stock. This is an amazing cast though. Paul Dano, Pete Davidson, Vincent D'Onofrio, America Ferreira, Anthony Ramos, Nick Offerman, Sebastian Stan, Shailene Woodley, and Seth Rogen. I have not watched this and I did not invest in GameStop. Disney Nature Earth. You know what I really wanna get? I'm all about the documentaries, but I really wanna get the Planet Earth series on 4K Blu-ray. That shit must be incredible. I love Easy A, I love Emma Stone, and I love my boy, the Tooch. Stanley Tucci in this is great. Him and Patricia Clarkson are such good parents, fun parents, I love it. Uh, Eddie the Eagle with Taron Edgerton and Hugh Jackman. This was another collaboration between Taron Edgerton and what's the director name? Dex Dexter Fletcher. They do a really good job. I think Dexter Fletcher also ended up doing uh, Rocket Man. So, yeah, really, really good. Speaking of my baby girl, Anya Taylor Joy, Emma. 
pretty enjoyable. I mean, it's not like it's it's an enjoyable film. I'll leave it at that. Sir David Attenborough is a legend and such an amazing voice. Yeah, I absolutely agree. You like sharpening pencils? Sharpen those pencils. <laughs> Jim Carrey also loves her. Easy A is my favorite of all time. No way you're still going. Absolute king. I'm here to the bitter end, baby. Another Denis Villeneuve enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. He shot this. I think this came out after Prisoners, but he shot it before Prisoners. So they did Enemy, and then they went off and they did Prisoners with him and Hugh Jackman. Solid. Um, production on production design on Emma. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. Um, I have this copy of Evil Dead Rise. I, I got this from the studio, and then I went ahead and I bought my own 4K version. So I can get rid of this one. <laughs> this is actually helping me out because I'm realizing, oh, anything that's a double copy that I don't want on Blu-ray, I can pawn off to you guys. The Expendables. This is honestly the only Expendables one that uh, I like. The first one. I think this one had like, this was like the... I don't know. It was the funnest. It took itself the least serious, I feel like. It was funny. It had all the best actors in it. The sequels are whatever. I didn't even watch the last one, but I'm, I'm enjoying this one. I, I don't think I'd upgrade this one to 4K. I'm happy with it on Blu-ray. The Eyes of Tammy Faye with Jessica Chastain. I think Andrew Garfield is in this one. Haven't seen it. My mom watched it on streaming. I think it ended up like at Netflix or something. She said um, she said that Jessica Chastain is really, really good in this, but I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Whew. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I honestly did not even know I had this. Fant Four Stick. Oof. Uh, I got this one from Universal, like I was saying earlier. I didn't really see the point in buying an incomplete set, so I don't buy these, but the studio still sent them to me. They didn't send me a 4K, they sent me a Blu-ray of Fast X. I enjoyed it, it's a fun time. I love the Fast and Furious movies. We're all family, it's great. I'm excited to get anyone but you on Blu-ray next week. I really loved it. And it's the same director of EZA. Oh, no shit. Okay, cool. Well, let me know Let me know if it's any good because I did not go see it in theaters. Um, I did not know that that was the same director as EZA. I think for, the, for a lot of it, people um, tended to like it. But a lot of people were like, oh, it's the best romantic comedy in years. I'm like, well, it's probably one of the only ones made in years too. Oof. Fant four stick. Oof. Fight Club, which apparently will be coming to 4K at some point soon. I guess Fincher already worked on a 4K remaster. I had like a 20th anniversary, 10th anniversary. I don't remember. How long? When did this come out? 2099. So I think I had a 20th anniversary. Maybe 10th, I don't remember. I had an anniversary edition of this and I let someone borrow it. Never seen it, so I had to buy it again. I imagine at some point this will get a 4K release. The Fighter, David O. Russell, um, American Hustle's coming out on 4K. I did not buy this for $25, by the way. I bought it for $5.99. So I got it for a really good deal. Really good movie. <clears throat> wasn't the biggest fan of Firestarter. It was all right. Um, I think the girl did a really good job for what, like, she was kind of handed. And Zac Efron's great, so no complaints. Um, I also realized I have the Flash on Blu-ray, and I already have the 4K, so this one is going to go into the cell pile. Uh, 
I also have an incomplete set of The Flash. I have the first season. Then I have the third season. Then I have the sixth season. And the seventh season. Was this, uh, I'm assuming the seventh season was not the last, right? I think it was eight seasons long. <clears throat> then I got For All Mankind season one. This is a uh, Sony release, but isn't this show on Apple TV? I think it's on Apple TV. I don't know if it's an Apple show necessarily. Um, maybe this was streaming somewhere else. I'm not totally sure. But yeah, I really want to check this out. Run, Adam, run. Where am I going? US region Blu-ray of Palm Springs would be nice. Oh, did they not put the movie Palm Springs on Blu-ray? I thought they did. The Andy Samberg one? That movie was great. Always confuse that movie with Warrior. Oh, which one? What did I hold up? I forget what it was, but Warrior's good. Waiting on Aliens 4K. Well, they come out um, next week, I think, right? Next Tuesday? I hope, or maybe it's the Tuesday after. I hope I get them early. I think they delayed them a little bit, a little bit. Uh, thank you, Parks, so much for putting that link. So the link in the, in the chat that Parks just put in, it's for these protectors that I'm promoting. So if you are trying to get your hands on something to, to protect your steelbooks, um, they're super duper handy. I'll show you a movie that I don't necessarily like, Halloween, the Rob Zombie one. I have a collector's edition steelbook and I have it in one of the protectors so it doesn't get all scratched up and shit. It's really, really nice. So if you use uh, the code provided in the chat, we get a little bit of a kickback from it. So super appreciate if you do. I saw that somebody already ordered um, like a hundred of them. So thank you so much, really, really appreciate it. Um, yes, for everyone who has asked, I am gonna get the 4K steelbooks for the Marvel and Star Wars shows that they all that they announced. Ford versus Ferrari, James Mangold, Matt Damon, Christian Bale, super good movie. Got a couple more steelbooks here. The 40th anniversary edition of Friday the 13th, which I was like, I already got it uh, in a set, but the, the steelbook's great, I'll keep it. And then another 20th anniversary steelbook edition, Galaxy Quest, one of uh, the best uh, movies ever made. Gangs of New York, this desperately needs a 4K restoration. What the fuck? It's been 20 years. Come on, people. I watched Ford vs. Ferrari on TikTok. I really need to watch it in a good screen. Parks. No. What are you doing to me? I had no idea Rob Zombie did a Halloween movie. Holy shit, man. Well, Rob Zombie did two Halloween movies, and they're both not that good. I like Rob Zombie's music over his films. Only film I like was The Devil's Rejects. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, man, sorry, Adam. Me and my sis grew up with Rob with with Rob's Halloween. We love it. Oh, have you seen the originals at least, please? Unexpectedly, have this uh, Blu-ray steelbook of Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I please take your order? So good. <clears throat> Another incomplete set, Gotham season one. Oh my God, I forgot Jada Pinkett Smith was in this show. Hmm. And Gotham season three. No season two, no season four. I think at one point they were gonna send me the set of all of them, but uh, no. David Fincher's Gone Girl, really good movie. Rosamund Pike and Ben Affleck, loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I haven't seen it in so long. It's time for a revisit. Uh, 
The Graduate, pretty classic, pretty classic film that um, I, I, it's one of those movies that I've watched it and I don't think I need to see it again, but I hold on to it in case someone's like, I've never seen this movie. I'm like, all right, let's watch it. Grease 2 and a collector's steelbook. Grease 1 is obviously the superior one, but you know, we'll take what we can get. Green Lantern, the animated series, I believe is voiced by Nathan Fillion. So very cool that he gets to come back and do actually play Green Lantern in a Superman movie. And then Green Room, I think Second Sight did a 4K remaster of Green Room. Um, the Blu-ray is really, really good. And another Anton Yelchin uh, movie with Patrick Stewart, you can't really go wrong. Any thoughts, any thoughts on Brightburn? I liked it. It's definitely like the anti-Superman movie, um, which I, was the point of it. Uh, I, I liked it. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And is any David Fincher on 4K? Um, good question. I think, is the social network on 4K? I'm not sure. I know that 7 is coming out soon on 4K. And I think um, something else. He's working on something else. I think Fight Club also has a 4K remaster out there. Which camera are you streaming from? Uh, the Fujifilm X-T4. The complete first and second season of DC's Harley Quinn animated series. Pretty good. Hardball with our boy Keanu and the Hateful Eight, which this definitely needs a 4K remaster because this was shot on 65 millimeter film. The Haunting of Bly Manor, which I didn't like as much as Haunting of Hill House, but it's still pretty solid. Speaking of Hill House, there it is. I love this show. And Heaven Can Wait. Never ever seen it. May never watch it. Who knows? Love this uh, Spike Jones uh, movie, Her. I believe it was DP'd by Hoy Van Hoytema. Uh, I think, I think it was Hoy Van Hoytema, who was the DP on this. Yep, Hoy Van Hoytema. And then the next year, he went to go work on Interstellar with Chris Nolan. So, really good. <laughs> this show just got a massive Blu-ray collector's edition with all four seasons, plus the reboot they did 10 years later, Heroes. To me, season one is the best. Um, I loved season one so much. Look what I paid for this. $3.99 for the whole season. Crazy. <clears throat> Do you have an app or software to track your collection? Uh, I was using, oh, the social network is in one of the Columbia Classics box sets. There you go. Prestige needs a 4K steelbook. Oh, I'd buy it for sure. Um, do you have an app or software to track your collection? I was using the blu-ray.com app for a while, but there's issues with it now because they haven't updated it in years and it's not super compatible with the new iPhone camera. So I can't scan the barcodes. So I've been using Libib, L-I-B-I-B for a little bit. Uh, and then I also have a Notion um, database that I created, but it's not super updated. Uh, need a 4K of Zodiac. Oh yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think Zodiac has a 4K on the way. I'm not 100% sure. Liam Neeson and Honest Thief, another Taken-ish type of movie, I guess. The Hurt Locker from Catherine Bigelow starring Jeremy Renner and, uh, what's his name? Falcon, holy shit. Uh, Anthony Mackie, hello? I really like that movie, by the way. It's good. The Hunt, which surprisingly I really liked. Uh, also, Betty Gilpin. Can't go wrong. Oh, yeah. 
uh, Ron Howard's In the Heart of the Sea with Tom Holland when he was a baby boy before he was Spooderman. Tom Holland, who else is this? It's uh, Benjamin, is it Benjamin Walker? Benjamin Walker, oh, is that Killian Murphy? Oh, damn, that is Killian Murphy. Tom Holland and Ben Wishaw and Brendan Gleeson with Chris Hemsworth. Hmm, nice. Here we go. People have been asking me about this one. Incendies by Denis Villeneuve. There you go. Boom. Got it. Uh, Christopher Nolan's Insomnia. I just got this one uh, recently. I didn't have this one on Blu-ray. This was the kind of like the one um, missing piece of my Chris Nolan puzzle. But this is a Warner Brothers movie, so I'm surprised they haven't remastered this and um, put this in like a collector set with his other films. Not sure what they're waiting for or what's happening there, but it's here. Stephen King's It with Tim Curry. <laughs> of all things, on a steelbook, in a steelbook edition. Like, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then... Jack Ryan, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan season two, which I think this just got like a 4K mass, this got like a 4K collection release not that long ago. Yeah, Insomnia is really good. And yeah, it is a remake of a, of a Norwegian film. Um, I, I think the original Insomnia, I think it's on Criterion, it might be. I have seen Glow, I've seen the first season of Glow. And it was really, really good. Mother, dark, and the ending is dark. Yeah, it is. Very dark. Uh, but Glow's great. I, I wish they didn't cancel it. I wish they would have let him finish the show. I've never seen Jake Speed. I don't even know why Arrow sent this to me. But they sent me Jake Speed. Never heard of it. Never seen it. If anybody has any recommendations on whether or not it's worth my time, please let me know. The John Hughes Five Movie Collection, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. She's having a baby, pretty in pink, and some kind of wonderful. Um, I currently have two of these movies on 4K now. So, not that this is totally useless, because I haven't seen some of these. But, yeah, it's a cool little set. Johnny Quest Baby, the original animated series from Warner Archive. You love it. You love it. Judas and the Black Messiah, Lakeith Stanfield and uh, Daniel Kaluuya. Um, I like I like this movie, yeah. But it's another it's another one of those movies that I will watch once. I don't know if I'll necessarily revisit it, but that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Like it's solid performances and a good story, but it's not one of those that I'm like, man, I'm I'm dying to watch this one. Favreau's The Jungle Book, another example of a movie. I don't know if I'll really rewatch a bunch, but it's good. It's good. Juno, a classic with Elliot Page, uh, formerly known as, as Ellen Page and Michael Sarah. This is a good movie. I really like Elliot Page. Elliot Page is like a really, really good actor. And um, really good at artist, really talented, was really great in Inception, so really big fan. And Jason Reitman. The Jurassic Park Collection, Jurassic Park, The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, plus Jurassic World and Jurassic Park in 3D. So this is the cover for that. This is why I'm like not super hellbent on updating this set to 4K, because I'm like, yo, I got JP1. I got JP1 3 des. I got JP2. I've got JP3. And I've got J World in Blu ray and on 3D Blu ray. So, what's missing? Nothing really. Nothing really is missing, truthfully. Boom. Uh, 
Oh, Just Mercy. Yeah. Is this from Destin Daniel Cretton? I think it is. Yep. Destin Daniel Cretton. Uh, Brie Larson, Michael B. Jordan, and Jimmy Fox. Solid cast, solid director. It's also 10 a.m., 2 a.m., 10 p.m. Just depends on where you are in the world. Oh, God. Sweet 16 is a great film. Highly recommend. Yep, yep, yep. Do you like Heat more than Insomnia? Oh, they're two completely different movies. I love both of them. I love both of them for what they are. Nolan doesn't own Memento. That's why it has a weird physical media history. We need a good Blu-ray slash 4K. Well, he doesn't technically own his other movies either, but I think he has the most creative control over them other than Memento. Um, I have no idea like what lingering weird hell that movie is in. This is what happens when the other homies aren't here to rain Adam in. He will stream 24 seven. I hope they force him to take a vacation at some point. 9 PM where I am. Brie Larson. Yikes. What do you mean? Brie Larson. Yikes. Justice league, the new frontier commemorative edition. Look at this fucking beauty. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. This needs to be in a protective case immediately. I'm actually really surprised at how nice the condition of this thing is. Wow, I'm, I'm actually like really surprised. This looks really good. I don't think there's a single scratch on this thing. Damn. They're nice. Keanu, Keem Peel. Love these guys. Their stuff is very funny. And I know somebody had asked, I know somebody had asked before, but Kill Bill, Volume 1, and Kill Bill, Volume 2. No 4Ks for these yet, but as soon as they exist, I want them in my body. And hopefully there's like a whole bloody affair cut as well that's included. That would be nice. Killing Them Softly. This is uh, directed by Andrew Dominic and Greg Fraser is actually the DP on this one. Unless I'm totally wrong. Yeah, Greg Fraser. There you go. See, my, strat my strategy is also, I like collecting movies from certain creators, whether they're a director, a writer, cinematographer, Mostly, I would say director and um, cinematographer um, outside of like, you know, my normal collecting habits. The King of Staten Island with Pete Davidson. Also a movie that I oddly got like four copies of and I don't know why. Um, but this is directed by Judd Apatow, if I remember correctly. Was well, this good? I still haven't actually watched it, to be honest with you. Is Pulp Fiction the only Tarantino film to be in 4K? Nope. Reservoir Dogs is in 4K. Pulp Fiction is in 4K. Um, Inglorious Bastards is in 4K. Um, what else? I think that's it. So he's got like at least three of them that are in 4K. Apparently no one got along with her on set. A lot of negative feedback. Personally, I like her acting and of course her as Captain Marvel. What movie? What, what people said that? Um, I don't know. I don't know who said that. I would love to know. I know that people were saying that around Avengers because of how, like, because of her dry humor in the press junket. I don't think that's the case. I don't think Marvel would ask her to come back if they didn't like working with her. Oh, Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is in 4K. Yeah, I showed that one off earlier. Will you try to get, we'll try to get you RRR if it's a thing. Yeah, I'd love a copy of RRR, whether it's Blu-ray or 4K, 4K would obviously be preferred, but I'll take a Blu-ray too. And obviously I don't think there'll ever be a 3D Blu-ray, sadly, but um, I'll take that too. Indiana Jones, sorry. Uh, I must have missed the context of your of what you said earlier. <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. King Richard, Will Smith plays uh, the Williams sister's dad. Um, and then Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Val Kilmer, Robert Downey Jr., um, Shane Black, Can't Go Wrong. Uh, 
Uh, the Kitchen, which is actually technically a DC movie based on a graphic novel from the DC universe. I don't know if it's like, I don't think it's connected to any of the DC superheroes necessarily. Um, but I haven't read it. But I haven't read the original graphic novel that it's based on. So um, I don't know if it's any good. You know what is good? <clears throat> Krypton, the complete first season, is great. Um, Cameron Cuff was really good as Seg L. I got to meet him and talk to him briefly. He was really, really cool. And then they did do a second season that ended the show, unfortunately. But I didn't get a chance to watch the second season. But I'm looking at this cover. Lobo, Brainiac, and Doomsday were all in the show. So that's pretty great. Oh, and General Zod was in it too. So they went all out on this. It's so funny that Doomsday has taken so long and he was only in Batman versus Superman, but he took so long to get to movie, movie screens. But like Superman and Lois, Krypton, and I forget what the other, there was another live action or animated version or whatever that has done Doomsday. I'm like, damn, this is like, the, this is the thing now. Is that available anywhere, Krypton? Um, yeah, I think so. I think I got it from Amazon. The second season I think I got from um, Warner Brothers, but I think they're I think you can get them on Amazon, yeah. <laughs> Definitive restorations of Laurel and Hardy. This is some super super classic old school cinema. All of these restorations, they're 2K and 4K restorations from the original 35 millimeter nitrate. Shit, that's cool. Um, this was done by the Film Foundation, I think, in UCLA. So, uh, this was sent to me by... I didn't buy this. Someone sent this to me. Um, it might have been someone at, like, Paramount or something. I'm not sure, but... I haven't had a chance to watch these, but I'm sure they're really, really good. Especially if they're 4K remasters uh, scaled down to 1080. They probably look really good. The Legend of Tarzan... Alexander Skarsgård looking real good, real good. Oh, uh, to stream? I think you can stream it on Max. I think Krypton is on Max. I might be incorrect, but I think it is. Oh, another incomplete set, Legends of Tomorrow. I actually really dug this show. It's It's got a lot of fun moments in it. The fifth season of Legends of Manana. <laughs> Legion of Superheroes, the complete first season, or the complete series, I should say. Leon the Professional, I think this has a 4K restoration. Uh, I don't have it in my collection if there is one. And this one for sure needs a 4K. Life is beautiful. God damn, that movie will wreck your emotions, but it's so good. The Lighthouse, I have this one on Blu-ray, not on 4K. I probably should pre-order it from A24 and get that book, the, A20, the 4K book, like collector's edition. Oh yeah, Lights Out. This is from David F. Sandberg, the director of Shazam. He made this movie before he made Shazam. Um, it's good, I really like it, solid. The Little Prince, I've never seen this movie. I don't know if it's any good. I'll trust you, I'll trust your guys' judgment on whether it's good or not. Oh, Bob Persichetti wrote the screenplay, that's good. Do you have a rare collectible? Uh, I don't know if I have a rare collectible, but it, um, I have some stuff that's a little bit harder to get nowadays. So I don't know if they're necessarily, I guess they're kind of considered rare, um, but I just don't know how like sought after they are. I think they were just bought out and then nobody else has really like looked for them. I did not see the little things. I have no clue if this is any good. Denzel, Rami Malek, and Jared Leto. Yeah, how, yeah. so I do need to get Leon 
Um, I know it has the, um, it's a Sony restoration, and I know when they did Fifth Element, people were like, mm, I think the Studio Canal one is better. But I think Studio Canal may have also done Leon. I could be wrong, but yeah, I have to check out the, I have to check out the, uh, the reviews of the 4K restoration of Leon. If you're up for a really good weird time with Yorgos Lanthimos, Colin Farrell in The Lobster, that's a really good one. What is the recent movie that you added to your collection? This hasn't come out yet. This comes out, I think, next, next Tuesday or the Tuesday after. Not my favorite. I thought this goofy ass movie was awesome. So bummed that the 4K was released like six months later. I'll probably eventually end up buying it though. Jessica Chastain and Mama, Andy Muschietti. I definitely did not pay $21.99 for it. I paid $6. The man from Uncle, Guy Ritchie. Uh, if if uh, Ryan Unicorn was here, he would say Henry Cavill stinky. Uh, I would say Army Hammer also stinky. I would say Alicia Vikander uh, top tier. Have not seen the Marksman, but the studio originally sent me four copies. I don't know why. Too many. Too many. You want to sob your eyes out? I cried like a son of a bitch at the end of this movie. It wrecked me. It's so good, though. I don't have the 4K version of this, and I probably should buy it at some point. Uh, the Martian, the two-disc extended edition uh, on regular Blu-ray. It, this is a really, really good movie. I love this movie. This was the other one, actually. It was The Revenant, The Martian, Kung Fu Panda 3, The Big Short, that I watched all back to back to back to back in one day at the theater. It was, it was a good time. Uh, the Mayor of Kingstown, season one. I know Jeremy Renner is currently working on a season two. I have not seen it, so I don't know if it's any good, but it's from the co-creator of Yellowstone, so I'm assuming it's gotta be kinda dece. Uh, I know I showed off the 4K of the Matrix movies, but I actually do also have this Ultimate Matrix collection. The reason being that it doesn't have a lot of the special features uh, that are present on this version. So you got this cool booklet. This one has the Animatrix, um, which I don't think is in the 4K version, or maybe it, maybe it is. Um, but a lot of the special features that are on this are not featured. Um, on the 4K version, so for me, it's kind of important to try to hold on to as many of the special features as possible. And I like that it has its own Blu-ray uh, shell. And then this is like a two disc data bank of special features. So really, really cool. Another one that I will not get rid of. I think this one is pretty easy to come by. And I like that they put them in these like very, very slim Blu-ray Blu cases. So it doesn't take up a ton of room. You love to see it. Guys, we're getting close. We're already in the M's. We're getting pretty close. If you have to only keep the ones you enjoyed, how many will be left? Probably still like 500 or 600, maybe more. Have the studios become the new Columbia house? I'm not sure what that comment means. Where do you buy your movies from when you do? Um, well, if they're boutique titles, I get them from the boutique websites. Kino Lorber, Scream and Shot Factory, um, Second Sight, uh, what else? 
whatever the arrow um it, sometimes i'll get them from now i've been getting them from walmart walmart quite a bit because they have the steel books <clears throat> um and if you buy stuff that's over $25 uh it's free shipping what else amazon i buy on amazon barnes and noble um any like mom and pop place that i can find that sells stuff so all over the place that came out a month after my dog died oh my god please don't tell me you saw it the martian surprised me yeah it was really good it's 3 a.m i'm gonna go to bed thanks for the great stream and showing your collection have a good one see ya projector versus tv i mean Oof, that's like a tough question. Depends on what your setup is, how much space you have. Is it a long throw projector, short throw projector? What's your budget? Um, you know, I think that really depends. I have both. I have a projector and I have a TV. I love both for very different reasons. Um, so it really like depends truthfully. This stream began 3 a.m. here in Denmark. I couldn't sleep, so I watched a bit. It's 11, 24 a.m. now, and here you are. Well done. Fuck. My girlfriend's gonna kill me. Mean Girls, the OG, the great. This is coming out on 4K Blu-ray soon, so looks like I'll be upgrading. Memento, the version that I own. There is a version of Memento that you can buy. I think it might be on DVD. I don't know if it's on the Blu-ray. Um, where you can watch the movie in like, uh, I think it's chronological order. So I think what it does is it plays all the black and white, no, it plays all the color stuff in forward motion and then it plays all the black and white stuff after in forward motion. Um, I heard it's not really good and it really breaks, really breaks everything about the movie. So, I don't know. I think this is totally fine. But hopefully we get a 4K soon. Oh, it's Lionsgate. New Market and Lionsgate that distributed this. So I don't know who actually holds the rights to Memento. Um, I'm assuming it's still New Market or Summit or whoever. But um, yeah, hopefully there's a 4K that comes out soon. Midnight Special, Jeff Nichols with Michael Shannon. I remember seeing this movie in... I don't know if I saw it in theaters or on or on streaming or something, or I rented it. I remember really, really liking it, which is why I bought it. It's a great cast. Michael Shannon, Joel Edgerton, Kristen Dunst, Adam Driver, and Sam Shepard. I uh, really, really liked this one. Do you resell after getting the upgrade or keep both? Um, for a while, I was keeping both, but I have a huge stack of Blu-rays I'm going to be selling very, very soon on Whatnot, which is like a live eBay auction type of a place. What do you use as your main Blu-ray player? Um, a con uh, sorry, I have like an emoji covering the chat at the bottom. I don't know how the hell to get rid of that. So weird. What do you use as your main Blu-ray player? A console or a dedicated Blu-ray player? I have the UBA20. It's Panasonic. Everyone take a shot in honor of this being Adam's last live stream. My dude risked it all for us. Long may he be remembered. Is anyone actually going to watch this fucking stream? That's the question. Who is going to go back and watch this thing? I don't know. I don't know. Probably nobody. I showed this off, but I'll show it off again. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, the shout remaster. It looks great. Um, from Lee Isaac Chung, Minari, also very, very great. He's directing the new Twisters movie, so I have high expectations. Missing Link, another Leica adventure with Hugh Jackman. Um, I thought this was really good. Zoe Saldana and Zach Galifianakis. I love this one. It was very charming, very sweet, very fun. I really like the Mitchells versus the Machines. Um, this was not directed by Lord and Miller, but they produced it. So really big like advertising, getting this from the studio or from the humans that brought you Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and the Lego movie, the Mitchells versus the Machines. Really good, loved it. 
<laughs> Moon is actually really hard to get on 4K Blu-ray. For whatever reason, um, it's a tough one to get. And I really love this movie. I would love to upgrade, but the 4K is hard, hard to find. Moonrise Kingdom. You gotta love you some uh, aesthetically pleasing cinema. Uh, Monsters, which I think was directed by Gareth Edwards. He like basically made this whole movie on Adobe Premiere. So looks like for him it rendered fine. Good for him. Monster Hunter with Milo Jovovich. I have never seen this. I have never even unwrapped the packaging. This is another one that a studio sent me, so not too mad about it. Might purge. Um, Motherless Br Brooklyn, Edward Norton, Bruce Willis, Gugu Mbatha Ra, Alec Baldwin, and Willem Dafoe. Not the hero. Who's directed this? Oh, it's written and directed by Edward Norton. Damn, I need to give this a watch. Huh. <laughs> My best friend is a vampire. Damn, this is a good 80s movie. This was on TV all the freaking time. Yeah, this is another um, Vestrin video. This is like another boutique studio that puts out Blu-rays. Neighbors, love this one. It's funny, Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne ended up uh, making so much stuff together. I think they have a new Apple show as well. Mm. Never Hike in the Snow. This is made by some buddies of mine. It's a Friday the 13th fan film. Uh, it's super, super solid. Uh, I think you can watch it on YouTube. Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow. Uh, definitely check them out, so good. There was a tweet today from Variety that was like, Barbie, Ryan Gosling, Barbie's great because he gets to be like, blah, 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 blah. And he also gets to be funny for the first time. And I'm like, excuse me. First of all, this movie's hilarious. These two are hilarious and Ryan Gosling is great. So kiss my butt. Oh yeah, there you go. Never hike alone. This is the first one that my buddies made. It's so good. Oh, Night of the Animated Dead. I think this is basically a retelling of the original Night of the Living Dead. So good. Rebecca Hall in the Nighthouse. I haven't seen this one. Curious if it's any good. I like Rebecca Hall. She's she's great. Yo, this is a good one. Dan Gilroy's Nightcrawler. With Jake Gyllenhaal, this is an awesome movie. If you haven't seen this, you gotta watch this. Jake Gyllenhaal is so good in this thing, man. So good. Have you seen Past Lives? I have not seen Past Lives. Damrell did a similar stream where he went through his collection. It's great to go back every now and then and see what people have. How long was his goddamn stream? Already shared the stream with a fellow collector. Nice. I'm thinking of getting the UBA20. Do you recommend it? It's pricey. But you can do Atmos, like every sound system, every sound. It's compatible with every single sound um, configuration. It's got Dolby Vision, HDR10. It's got great color processing. It's a really workhorse of a, of a Blu-ray player. So, yeah, if you can afford it, yeah. Mitchell's versus the Machines was the last thing an X recommended to me, and I have not seen it as a result. I get it. I get it. It's very good, though. If you ever do such a long stream again, plan some mukbang segment during it as a break for yourself. Seriously. I'll be honest, I dipped a few hours ago. I can't believe he's still alive now. Never hike in the desert to complete the trilogy. $20. Thank you. Go get some coffee or a gift for the girlfriend. Yo, it is it is 2.30, 2.30 in the morning. There is no coffee open, but thank you so much for the super chat. I fell asleep while watching the stream, and it's still going when I woke up to go to work. LMAO. Such an amazing collection. Um, have you seen Rebecca Hall and Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman? No, I have not. I would like to see that one. Um, I know someone who thought Nightcrawler was an X-Men movie. 
I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I saw the nice guys three times in theaters. We need the nice guys part two. Seriously. Nightcrawler is one of the best movies I ever saw, to be honest. So good. Hell yeah. Nighthouse was surprisingly good. All right. Good to know. Good to know. The first collaboration between Javier Bardem and uh, Josh Brolin. No Country for Old Men. So freaking good. The Coen brothers, they did some amazing work with this one. Um, it's funny because Javier Bardem and Josh Brolin shared a scene in Dune Part 1, but Josh Brolin said something to Javier Bardem, but Javier Bardem never responded. So this is the first time in Dune Part 2 that they actually share dialogue in a movie since 2007, which is crazy. Uh, I'm still here. I'm still here. Uh, Nomadland from Chloe Zhao starring Francis McDormand. I actually really enjoyed this movie. It's not one that I think I'll revisit a ton, but I but I appreciated it and I really liked it. I don't know if it was the best movie of the year, but, you know, it won. Um, despite the Oceans trilogy coming out on 4K Steelbook and 4K Blu-ray in general, uh, I did buy this like two weeks ago. Uh, like right before this, there was rumblings that those movies were going to come out uh, on 4K. But I'm not mad about it. It's a really nice set of all three movies. Can't be too upset about it. I think Ocean's Eleven is still the GOAT. I think Ocean's Twelve is fine. Ocean's Thirteen I wasn't the biggest fan of. Um, but it's really it's a really nice set. And if I do end up getting the 4Ks, then I got another thing that I can sell. So there you go. Olympus Has Fallen is just a silly goose time at the movies, so I'm pretty sure I got this for next to nothing. I can part ways with this now because I have the 4K Steelbook. Orphan First Kill which I believe is the prequel to Orphan, which is actually coming out on 4K Blu-ray from Scream Factory soon. Overlord with the disc on the run. Don't love that. I heard good things about Overlord, so I picked it up. I got it for next to nothing. Haven't had a chance to see it yet, but uh, I will soon. I... Could be good, could not be. Let me know if you've seen it. Speaking of Paul King, Paddington 1 and Paddington 2, like ultimate feel-good cinema. You'll love to see it. We need more of it. Go see them. Pan was all right. I still think Hook is the superior Peter Pan movie. So, I don't know. And then I've got a ton of these Paramount Presents. These are all Blu-ray. They're not 4K, they're regular Blu-ray, but they've been slowly like remastering these again or reprinting these in 4K now. Fatal Attraction. Uh, King Creole with Elvis. We've got To Catch a Thief. We've got Flashdance, which as you saw, I now have the 4K Blu-ray. And... Pretty in Pink, which also is in that John Hughes collection. Airplane, a classic, gotta love it. Ghost, which like I will buy in 4K if it comes out again. I love this movie so much. Uh, Roman Holiday, the non 4K version now. So I guess I can technically get rid of this one. Um, the Haunting, man, I used to watch this as a kid all the time, so good. And The Greatest Show on Earth from Cecil B. DeMille. 
So I've been holding on to these because, you know, it's like a whole collection, a whole set. Um, I'm not really sure if I'll part ways with individual movies or maybe if I'll sell them as an entire set because I think I have like one through 10 fully and then I have like some gaps in some of the other ones. Continuing on, we've got A Place in the Sun with Elizabeth Taylor. Some of these I've seen and some of these I've never seen. Bugsy Malone, Scott Bayo and Jodie Foster. Nashville, Robert Altman for movie. Uh, the Sheik, this might be the oldest movie that I have. This is from the 20s, I think. 1921. This might be the oldest movie in my collection. Breakdown. This movie is dope as hell. If you've never seen Breakdown with Kurt Russell, so, so good. Him and his wife are on a road trip. I think it was Hecker who was talking about this movie. Him and his wife are on a road trip and their car gets into like, the car breaks down essentially. The trucker um, stops and asks them for help. Trucker offers to take the wife to a place, like a safe place. Kurt Russell tries to go get help. Uh, wife ain't there when he come back. Wife is not there. A few more of these Paramount ones. Let's see. Oh, Vanilla Sky. Dang, I didn't even realize I had this one. Wow, what a dummy. Vanilla Sky. Ragtime from Milos Foreman. Harold and Maude. That, this is such a good movie. I love this movie. And Ordinary People. Which again, some of these I've seen, some of these I've not seen. Um, I gotta watch, I gotta watch more of these though. Well, I just pictured Adam in overalls making pottery on a wheel. Listen, be careful. Adam, Heroes Reforged should do it, should do the what would have been Adam Hector and Augustine's Oscar picks for the twenty past twenty four years show? Holy shit. It is so heartbreaking that Spielberg doesn't like Hook. It's on my favorite childhood movies. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. The thing I saw that Kurt Russell one scary. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really good one. <clears throat> I literally may never ever watch this. This might be more for my cousins and my niece. Paw Patrol, the mighty movie. May never watch it. That's okay. I did want this one because I really like Jennifer Gardner. And um, it's from the director of Taken. So, can't be that bad. Peppermint. And Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. This has a 4K, but they sent me the Blu-ray, which is fine. I'm not complaining. Paramount Presents series is one of the best Blu-ray series. The transfers are great. I agree. Well, and I think it's because they they scan them all at 4K and they do 4K remasters and then they just press them on a HD Blu-ray. So I think that's why a lot of the Paramount Presents have been now coming out in 4K because they're going, well, what the hell? What's the point of doing 4K remasters if we're going to put them on an HD Blu-ray? I don't think all of them have been brought back in 4K, but it seems like going forward, the trend is that they're going to be in 4K because I have a couple in 4K but I don't know if they were, were available on Blu-ray. They, they probably were. <laughs> I heard they roast Trump in, pop, in the Pop Trump. <laughs> well, that's funny. I don't know how many people have seen this movie, but I think it's so damn good. The Phantom with Billy Zane. I think Paramount put this one out. I'm not sure how much of a remaster this is. This may have this may have been done from like a 2K or 4K scan. I'm not 100% sure. 
but I, th I think from what I remember, the scan was pretty, pretty good. Then I've got Popeye the Sailor Volume 1 from the 40s. Volume 2. And Volume 3. These old cartoons are so good. Another Denis Villeneuve classic, Prisoners. I didn't even know that this was a movie that existed until after I saw Sicario. And then I went back and watched this and I was like, I'm pretty sure this might be Hugh Jackman's best role. Promising Young Women. This is, uh, what's the director's name? Uh, Emerald, Emerald Fennel. I really like this. I saw it at the drive-in uh, when it came out originally. So I figured, oh, I'll grab this one. Uh, the Queen of Cotway. Is this good? I haven't seen this one yet, but this was sent to me by Disney. So I figured oh, I'll hold on to it and then eventually I'll watch it. I haven't and I've had it for quite a while now, quite a while. Those are the dangers of, um, those are the dangers sometimes of being a collector is that you hold on to stuff for too long because you're like, oh, I wanna watch it. I wanna tell people whether or not I like it. If you've had it for more than like two years, get rid of it. The Raid Collection, these are literally just about to come out on 4K Blu-ray. So I might need to double dip and get those. Rango, Johnny Depp, really well animated film uh, by Gore Verbinski and Raya and the Last Dragon, which mm, I know it wasn't like the biggest hit for Disney, but it's still a pretty good movie. You mentioned a movie I was going to watch tonight, but I don't remember what it was. Can you start over? <laughs> no. The Phantom is good for a 90s pullback action adventure film. It's no Rocketeer, but it tries hard. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do you fear that when you finally go to sleep, you will be browsing through infinite physical releases in dreams? I think I may secretly do that every night. <clears throat> um, I loved the first season of Reacher So good I'm so glad I have this I, At first when I got it I was like What the hell am I going to I don't know if I'm going to watch this show uh, This show is so good If you haven't seen it It's great Season 2 is good too I think season 1 might be a little bit stronger um, I think this movie needs a 4K remaster I hope that um, Screen Factory picks this one up Love this movie. Love it, love it, love it. It's directed by Radio Silence, the guys who did a couple of the last uh, Scream movies. Reds, which I have not seen. Warren Beatty, Jack Nicholson, Diane Keaton. I'm sure it's good. Uh, Paramount sent it to me, so I, at some point I'll check it out. Um, Nick Holt, Lex Luthor, with former Superman Nick Cage in Renfield. Unfortunately, I heard that this movie wasn't super great, so I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I would like to, regardless of it, of what people thought. Um, and then this is the steelbook that I got for Reservoir Dogs. I thought I was buying a 4K steelbook. It is, in fact, the Blu-ray steelbook, oh, which is fine. I'll enjoy it just the same. Um, but it's really, really slick. Look at that thing. It's pretty cool. Love it. Uh, then we've got Richard Jewell, a Clint Eastwood film. Is it Paul Walker Hauser? That dude was on, uh, he was on Cobra Kai. And then he was in a couple other shows that he did really, really well in. Them, especially my mom was like, this guy's amazing. Which is high praise coming from her. Have you seen The Hunt with Betty Gilpin? Did you not hear me gushing about Betty Gilpin earlier? Cutie, cutie. Um, the rhythm section, 
I never did get a chance to watch this one, but I like Blake Lively and I like Jude Law, so I got to get around to watching it. Um, Richard Jewell, and then The Road, which is a pretty intense movie, but it is very good. This one kind of kills me because they arrow put this one out and then like a year later they put out the 4k and i was like god damn it i wish i would have just waited the steelbook of robocop it's a 4k remastered pressed on a hd blu-ray disc so damn good robocop is like an all-timer all-timer and then the remake of robocop which i'm like eh it's not that good B. Ella, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for that tip. That's amazing. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tired. This has been going on for a long time. Um, oh my God, you're still at it? This has been an epic stream in every way. My question, why do you get so many movies sent from the studios? Um, so we've been building relationships with the studios for several years now. We go to a lot of screenings. Um, they sometimes will email and say like, hey, we have a press package for this particular movie. Would you be interested in promoting it? So I really, um, I really do my best to try to advertise as many of these releases as I get as possible, even if it's just tweeting about them or posting about them on Instagram. So that's the reason why they send them to me is they want me to just kind of like promote them um, on social media. I don't necessarily have to like talk about them, um, but like in depth, but I definitely like try to mention as many as I can. And I think I do a pretty good job of it. I at least try to do it as close to the release date. And if I can provide links for people to buy stuff, then I do. Um, sometimes few things slip through the cracks only because sometimes there's weeks where I get nothing and there's weeks where I get like five things and I'm like, God damn, this is a lot to keep track of. So I'm doing my best, doing my best. But thank you so much for that uh, super chat. That is very generous of you. Thank you. And thank you to everybody else who has um, also tipped in the super chat. Uh, very, very nice of you guys to help support the channel. Is that because you guys worked in the industry? Did you guys develop the relationships from scratch? Oh, uh, yeah, I developed them from scratch. I'm really good at kind of poking around and finding the right people in the right divisions at all the studios, whether it's like truthfully going through things like LinkedIn or the website or whatever. And then I just look around and I'm like, okay, who's handling home entertainment? Who's handling, you know, the media, um, press contacts and all that stuff. And then I just start poking around. I just start asking people like, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to do. Can you help me? And they either will, or they won't. For the most part, people are very friendly and they want to help and they want to help you promote their work. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not super hard. It just takes a lot of patience and time, truthfully. So I did talk about the uh, Rocky set, the 4K Rocky set, being a little bit of a disappointment because they didn't have all the movies. And there were some, some not so great comments about um, the audio. This set though, this, key, this was the 40th anniversary edition from uh, MGM and 20th Century that they put out. This has all six movies. So this has Rocky, Rocky 2, II, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, II, Rocky 5, and Rocky Balboa. There's some fun like uh, lobby cards in here and all kinds of stuff. And then it's so weird how this is like the actual cover of the Blu-ray set. Very interesting. Um, none of these are in 4K, obviously. But you got Rocky, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, and Rocky Balboa. So I, I love all these. These Rocky movies are super, super solid, super great, super entertaining to watch. Um, they're a good time. This is the heavyweight collection. I think you can still get this. So if you are not in a need for the 4K Blu-ray, then you definitely have this as an, as an, as an option. Uh, if you don't want to get the 4K, you'd rather get one set with all six movies. Oh, and then the other one is a fun trilogy of films that I thought was kind of a perfect way to buy. It's Rush Hour. 
the whole trilogy. Sometimes people forget that there's three of them. There are, in fact, three rush hours. Rush hour one, rush hour two, and rush hour three. And then I believe this is uh, special feature stuff for each movie. Yeah, bonus disc for rush hour, special features for rush hour three. Um, the transfers on these things are actually really, really nice. My girlfriend and I watched rush hour one, because she had never seen it. We watched it maybe like um, four months ago or something. She really, really liked it. I'm not sure what they're pressed at, but they're really good quality. At least in my opinion, they were pretty good. Just want to support, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Samil, for that $2 super chat. Very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Brett Ratner, stinky. Uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Is there a movie you wish you could get the special edition treatment? I would love Elvis and Barbie in a stacked Blu-ray 4K collector's edition. Um, ooh, that's a good question. What is a movie that I would love like super duper crazy special edition treatment? Um, maybe Terminator 1 would be really cool. I don't know how much footage actually exists of them making that movie, but I would take anything, honestly, because uh, Terminator 1 is groundbreakingly great. San Andreas, which at some point I had in 3D. I don't know where it's at. The Sandlot, you can't go wrong with an American classic. And Seven, which should be having a 4K Blu-ray in the very, very near future. I feel like I'm one of the only people who actually really likes this movie, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. This actually has inspired a story in my life that I'm gonna be writing and finishing writing uh, at some point in the future, but I really like this movie. I forget who the cinematographer on this one is, but I think the photography in this movie is so good. The cinematographer is... Oh, Stuart Dryberg, yeah. I think they also like went through a couple of cinematographers because I think Ben Stiller or somebody may have um, fired the original cinematographer. I'm not sure. Uh, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, directed by Steven Soderbergh. Time to rewatch this one. Um, Shaft, with every generation of Shaft. I think they like, well, Richard Roundtree's the original. And then his son is Samuel Jackson, I think the grandson. Um, what's his actor's name? Jesse T. Usher, uh, who's in The Boys. So it's a full, it's a full three generations of stuff. And then of course the classic, She's the Man. Love this movie. I also had a mad crush on Amanda Bynes for a while. Growing up at least. Now she's been through, you know, whatever she's been through. So, uh, Shin Godzilla, just like A plus. Short Term Twelve. This is also directed by Destin Daniel Cretton. So good, Brie Larson, John Gallagher Jr., who then ended up being in uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane, and Martin Scorsese Silence. There's so many Scorsese movies that still don't have like 4K remasters that so badly need them. You know, Raging Bull has one, Mean Streets has one. I think some of his newer stuff from like the, not even newer, it's like a random, it's like random, random titles that are in 4K while others are not. I don't, I don't get it, I don't get it. Uh, Sin City and Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. I've got a Dame to Kill For. It's cool. It's this like really nice, easy collector set that has both. And a Dame to Kill For is in 3D. So you'll love to see it. Um, the Steel Book for Skyfall is that I would say is my second favorite Bond movie. Slaughterhouse Five. Literally don't know why Arrow sent this to me, but they did, and I've never watched it still. Small Soldiers. This remaster, I think. Oh, it looks like it's from Paramount. 
This remaster looks great. I think it's a, it might be a 2K scan or a 4K scan. Um, it is very well done though. It doesn't say on the box. Um, but yeah, it looks really, really solid. And someone brought this one up earlier, Spotlight. Love, 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 love Spotlight. Another, this was like, this followed um, Birdman. And Michael Keaton is just so good in it. Super, super solid movie. Um, Spies in Disguise, Will Smith, and Spiderman, Tom Holland. And then I've got the first season of Stargirl, which I think ended up having three seasons, if I remember correctly. So I need a little bit to, I have a little bit of catching up to do. Um, then from Shout Factory, I did end up getting the Starman remaster. This is not the 4K, this is the Blu-ray. Um, the 4K is available in the Sony Classics, in one of the Sony Classics sets. Uh, and then I have The Clone Wars, the movie um, that came out in 2008, which is kind of like a little bit of a compilation of episodes, not even like a movie, movie, movie. Um, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, season one. Star Wars, The Clone Wars, season two. Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 3. Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 4. And I don't have Seasons 5 or 6. Um, I think it would be really cool if Disney put out like the Ultimate Clone Wars Collection. Seasons 1 through 7, the whole damn thing. That would be amazing. Please do it. Uh, Star Wars Rebels Season 1, Star Wars Rebels Season 2, Star Wars Rebels Season th 4. Sometimes Disney is so inconsistent, they'll be like, here you go, here they are. And I'm like, why did you send me, why did you skip Season 3? So I gotta get my own. It's okay. It's okay. Steve Jobs shot in 35, I think it's 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter and digital through the different phases of his life. Interesting way to do it. Uh, the five movie collection from the written works of Stephen King. We've got The Stand, Pet Cemetery, Silver Bullet, The Dead Zone and the 2019 remake of Pet Cemetery. Just a nice collector set. Yes, 84 Starman, straight out of Compton. And Nausicaa, Studio Ghibli, which we're about to get some of the Ghibli ones that I own. Aki, thank you so much for the 2,000 yen. I was out to dinner, but when I came back, I was surprised to see you still live streaming. I'm here, baby. I'm here till the end. Yeah, and then the 84 Starman in the Sony set also has the TV show in there as well, restored in HD. So that's kind of cool. Bro, you're still alive. I'm holding on by a thread. I am getting sleepy. So these are all the Ghibli titles that I ended up buying because we were like going through our um, like Ghibli phase for a little bit. We haven't watched all of them, but we will literally get to them at some point. My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Porco Rosso, um, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, and Howl's Moving Castle. So I ended up picking up all these from uh, Barnes & Noble because they're the easiest to get there. Uh, they're like readily available at Barnes & Noble.
Uh, now the Superman stuff. <laughs> Adam like Captain America can do this all day. Oh, hell no. I'm dying here. But this is fun. It's cool because I'll never have to do this again for another 15 years. Um, Supergirl from 1984. This was put out by Warner Archive. Very, very good uh, brand new like remaster. I don't know if this was done from a 2K or a 4K scan, but it looks very solid. Then we've got uh, Supergirl season one, or no, this is the fifth season of Supergirl. I think I have other seasons of the show. They might just be like hidden down there somewhere. And then I do have this Christopher Reeve. Well, it's technically the Superman motion picture anthology. So I bought this like one does for like $30. And then I think like three weeks later, they announced the, the Superman 4K restorations. So I was like, all right, well, that's annoying. But like I've said before, um, sometimes these older sets have things that are not a part of the newer sets. So this one, for example, has Superman Returns, which is not on the other set. And it also has, um, I'm sure there's some bonus material that is on this that is not on the original set or on the 4K set, I should say. But it's got the theatrical cut, the extended cuts, Superman 2, Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut, Superman 3, Superman 4, and Superman Returns with a bonus disc. The full shebang, baby. Plus this, like, this art in this set is kind of, like, stunning. The fact that they made this thing basically Superman's cape is uh, pretty damn cool. This thing I think was used, so it's a little banged up, but like honestly, I don't really care. Like look how nice that is. Look at that thing. So nice. And then you just take this. Boom. Super nice. Uh, and yeah, then I have the, the infamous J card. This live needs commemorative t-shirts. I survived this idiot's live stream. Uh, some more Superman stuff for you. Someone had, had been asking about this. Superman, the movie, the extended cut. This is a three hour long TV version. And then the special edition of Superman, the movie. This was also put out by Warner Archive. Um, like in 2018, 2017, I don't even know how long ago it was, but yeah, if you want to see the three hour cut of Superman, the movie, there it is. Then the remaster of the Max Fleischer Superman series, they denoise this a little bit. I'm not super happy about it, but I think it still looks good and we'll never get that. This is like the last time we'll get a remaster of this. So I'm happy that it exists. Superman the Animated Series, just really classic, really great take on the Man of Steel. I love this show so much. It's up there with B-Taz, Batman the Animated Series. Superman and Lois Season 1 on Blu-ray. Superman and Lois Season 2 on Blu-ray. So I can't wait to get uh, Season 3. And I can't wait to watch Season 3. We're a little bit behind, but we'll get to it soon. Then we've got uh, the complete series of Swamp Thing, which was so good on DC Universe, the streaming app. I love, love, love watching this. Um, the Swan Princess, which someone thought would be a good idea to send to me. I'll take it. Swiss Army Man with uh, Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe. Love that movie. And then Taxi Driver, Martin Scorsese. This one was remastered in 4K, but then put on a HD Blu-ray. And I don't think that you can get this on 4K Blu-ray yet. I don't think it's available. So that's like the closest you're going to get. <clears throat> All right, strap in because I have a ton of Teen Titans. Teen Titans, the complete first season. Teen Titans, the complete second season. Teen Titans, the complete third season. 
Teen Titans, The Complete Fourth Season. Teen Titans, The Complete Fifth Season. These were all put out by Warner Archive. Um, and they had a really good deal going. If you bought one, you could get like four for 11 bucks or something. So I was like, ah, screw it. I'll get them all. So I think I spent like, I don't know. Um, what is that math out? $55 for maybe, maybe it was even less than that. I feel like it was even less. Um, I have to math it out. I don't really remember, uh, right now, but yeah, I got it for a really, really good deal. So it was worth it. More Teen Titans. This is Teen Titans Go and Superhero Girls Mayhem in the Multiverse. More of just fun DC stuff. Uh, Teen Titans Go versus the Teen Titans. And then Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Have you ever put out JLJLU on Blu-ray 4K? No, it's only Justice League and Justice League Unlimited is only on Blu-ray. That is actually kind of hard to get. I would love to get those. Um, they're kind of expensive, I think, though. It's been a while since I've been up this long instead of sleeping. But I need to work in a few hours, and it wouldn't help if I slept first. <laughs> LOL, night. I mean, morning from Eastern Time. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Taxi Driver, yes. Swiss Army Man, it's hard to convince people it's actually a really good movie. When you sell them the premise of Farting Corpse. <laughs> it's a really good movie. Uh, Taxi Driver 4K is only available in one of the Columbia box sets. Got it, got it, got it. That's, that's, that, that makes sense. Um, did anyone watch live action Teen Titans with Alan Richardson? Yeah, Titans. Yeah, I did. Um, it's good. I like it. Uh, well, I like parts of it. I don't love it. Um, there's some stuff that works, some stuff that I'm like, no. But Hawk and Dove were great. Love those two. What else we got in here? Teen Wolf, the remaster from Shout Factory. Love that movie as a kid. The Ten Commandments. This is the 1923 and the 1956 feature films. Epic Hollywood shit. Really, really good. I think these are all like from 4K remasters on a 1080 Blu-ray. The Terminator, which I've heard that this particular pressing is the best looking one this is the closest looking to the 35 millimeter film then we've got there will be blood classic daniel day lewis this is the end which is actually like a really fun comedy movie uh what else we got Um, the Fantastic Journeys by Carl Zeman, who is a Czech film director. Journeys to the Beginning of Time, Invention for Destruction, and the fabulous Baron Munchausen. This is a criterion. This probably should be up higher. This should be with the other criterions. I don't know why I put it all the way at the bottom, but, you know, mistakes were made. I really want to, I still haven't watched this, but this is George Miller's 3,000 Years of Longing with Tilda Swintz and uh, Idris. I gotta watch this and I gotta see if it's any good. It like didn't get much attention. Uh, and then we've got Titans, the first season, or excuse me, the second season. Uh, we've got TMNT, the 2007 animated feature that I thought was actually really, really good. Um... I'm kind of surprised that this even exists because it's Netflix. The Toys That Made Us, Seasons 1 and Season 2. Kind of surprising that this actually exists on physical media, but I'll take it. Um, True Detective, Season 1. Man, I really lucked out with this. I bought this at a Goodwill for $5. So can't be mad about that one. And then Tulsa King, Season 1. 
love this show. I don't know if they're doing any more seasons, but maybe they're filming one. Um, this was so good. Sylvester Stallone really, really killed it with this one. Um, I hope I hope there's more because I'd like to see more. Um, I would say for all you Finchaholics, but I don't actually know how involved uh, David Lynch was in the TV show. Probably very. Um, but the Twin Peaks TV series, I got this. I scored this for like, I think it was like 15, 20 bucks. The complete television series, the television collection. I don't believe it includes the newest version that's come out in recent years. Um, all 18 parts, it's all 29 episodes of the original series, all 18 parts of the limited event series, The Return of Twin Peaks, um, written by the series co-creator, entirely directed by David Lynch. So there you go. We've got Urban Cowboy, Travolta Classic, Unstoppable, directed by the late great Tony Scott, Under the Skin with ScarJo that I think is actually really, really good. We're almost there, almost there. We've got John Carpenter's Vampires from Scream Factory. We've got Venom, Let There Be Carnage or Venom, So Help Me God. I don't think it's that good. Watchmen, which was so, 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 so good. Watch it if you haven't, it's on max. Uh, Wayne's World in a special collector's edition steelbook, which is now also available on 4K Blu-ray. And Willow, which I wish the series got a Blu-ray release as well, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen, unfortunately. How long did it take you to set all that up? Ugh, good question. It took me about like three days to get all sorted out in the proper order. It took me like two hours to build all the shelves and maybe an hour to make all my adjustments. Nine hours straight on his feet. Adam, you're gonna be a little sore tomorrow. Eh. I'm about to start the X-Men 97 animated series and then Daredevil, I haven't seen either. You mean X-Men 92? That's, I think that's what you mean. Um, oh, Jealous can't get that Blu-ray anymore. Oh, Daredevil? Yeah, I think it's a little hard to get, right? Uh, damn, nine hours on my feet. Whew. I'm tired. We are down to the final few here. Um, I already pulled that one out. We've got Wonder with Julia Roberts, Jacob Tremblay, and Owen Wilson. We've got Wonder Woman, the complete collection, the old Linda Carter uh, series, which is just dope as all hell. You can't go wrong with it. This is available from Warner Brothers. I highly recommend it. Um, Wonder Woman, the DC Universe original film. This is the commemorative edition. Really good. Uh, we've got Wrath of Man, another Guy Ritchie. I got a lot of Guy Ritchie movies. He makes a lot of movies at Warner Brothers, apparently. Then we've got the Rogue Cut of X-Men Days of Future Past. Someone was asking about that earlier. I've got season three of Yellowstone because Paramount did not send me the other two seasons. I've got You Were Never Really Here. Directed by Lynn Ramsey, starring Joaquin Phoenix. A really solid movie. Young Justice. I don't know. Hmm, I actually don't know. This might be the whole series. I don't know. It's not labeled. Uh, and then I've got Young Justice Invasion. 
and then Young Justice Outsiders Season 3. So it's like a real hodgepodge of stuff. So. Oh. And look what I just found. The Blu-ray for Lawrence of Arabia for the collector set that I showed you guys earlier. So now this can go back in its proper home. Look at this thing. There's a soundtrack. Soundtrack here, the movie. Um, disc one, disc two, disc three, all kinds of stuff. Really, really cool. I have a couple more things. They're small-ish. This is a very, very special movie. The Iron Giant, wonderful limited edition collection. Uh, it's very, very good. Oh, it's a cool little advertisement for Inside Editions, which is a book distributor. And you can get the eight foot tall replica of the Iron Giant statue, because that's what I need. And then we've got this booklet called The Evolution of the Iron Giant. Uh, yeah, The Iron Giant is a stellar film. Uh, you should absolutely be showing this movie to your kids. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, here's some really great character design work. Voice talent, Vin Diesel, Jennifer Aniston, Harry Connick Jr., Chris McDonald, everybody. Um, I don't think the Blu-ray is in here. There's also a really beautiful documentary that Brad Bird directed about the making of the movie and how the movie is in ways dedicated to his sister um, who was killed. So yeah, really, really good. Let's see if I can get this out. There's a whole thing in here from Brad Bird talking about the movie. I love this kind of stuff. Then we've got more goodies. This is probably gonna have like a lot of lobby cards and promotional items and little posters and stuff. Um, I have opened it before, but it's been a minute. Yeah, there are these beautiful, beautiful images from the Iron Giant done by artists. Look at all that, so good. So, 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 so good. It's really hard to like not want to frame all of these and put them up. Like, look how good that is. Get out of here. And then at the end of it all, finally, we get to the Blu-ray, which is a super solid. Um, I don't, eh. I can't remember exactly what master it's from. Uh, and then there's this like mini signature edition figurine of the Iron Giant, but I don't really want to open it. I like it how it is. I don't want it to get damaged, but maybe, oh, actually I have opened it before and taken it out, but it's in there for now. And I, I kind of want to keep it in there. Um, all right, you guys ready for DVDs? I'm just messing with you. I'm just gonna show you a couple. I do have the Star Wars Trilogy DVD set. Pretty stellar. Um, more Star Wars DVDs. The Phantom Menace. Gendy's Clone Wars, Volume 1. Or this is Volume 2. Uh, volume 1 of Gendy's Clone Wars. Star Wars A New Hope. This has the original theatrical version on one of the bonus discs. The Empire Strikes Back with the original theatrical version. And Return of the Jedi with the original theatrical version. But they're all DVD, so the quality is not going to be super great. Um, 
I think that's it. I've got a few other things here on DVD that are like not super impressive. They're just kind of things that I've been holding on to. But I do have like an enormous stack of movies that I will be selling. Um, they're also letterboxed for three. Um, are they? Well, I have the widescreen editions, so I think they're widescreen. Uh, I, I have to double check. Um, but yeah, I have a whole set of stuff that I want to be selling. I have a whatnot. It's basically like a live eBay where you can go in and you can bid on stuff that I'm selling. I'll have starting bids and then you can upbid it or whatever to try to get it. It's a really good collection of stuff. I wanna say I have at least like, I think I have close to 100 items at this point. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of stuff. It's Blu-rays, it's collector sets, it's 4Ks. Um, yeah, so quite a bit of stuff, quite a bit of stuff. Um, I'm not sure exactly when the first live will be, but I will definitely try to schedule one soon. This was wild, this was crazy. I cannot believe I did this for this long. Am I on hour nine? How long have I been going for? Um, damn, eight hours and 45 minutes. Some people aren't even at work this long. Um, so yeah, this was really cool. So thank you for everybody who stuck around, who was willing to stick around, uh, cause I know this was very, very long. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, any final thoughts? Damn, I might have to do this again in like a year. Uh, once I expand my collection a little bit more and maybe there's like new stuff to show off. Definitely didn't think it would go this long. I think next time I'm gonna have to just kind of like rough through it a lot faster. But damn, y'all stuck around. Thank you guys so much. Um, have a good night. And uh, next week we will be back with the Chexicans. Um, Augustine will be back, Hector will be back, I will be back, hopefully. Um, if you wanna get the Malco protectors for the blue for the Blu-ray Steelbooks, and stuff the link is in the description please 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 if you end up getting them please use our affiliate code um it's just a really great way to one support us but to also show the uh distributor of those malco protectors that our audience is interested in this stuff i'll be posting about it more on my instagram too in case you missed it um but thank you guys so 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 much um jmb adam gonna go pass out now or break it up into pieces. Oh, the next stream. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, Parks, thank you so much for putting that link out there. Um, yeah, I'll probably do this more often and I'll show off more stuff. And that way we can kind of like do this once in a while and not have to do it once in a blue moon. Uh, do they ship overseas? I am not 100% sure. You will have to check on their website. Um, I wish I knew off the top of my head, but I don't, I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little sleepy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out all the videos. We've got some stuff coming out this week still. So we super appreciate your support. Thank you so much for all the super chats. Really, really appreciate it. Um, if you keep tipping, I will not stay on longer. I've stayed on long enough. But if you want to keep tipping, you can. Um, but thank you, guys. This was really fun and crazy and psychotic. And uh, yeah, yeah, really cool. Uh, they don't ship overseas, unfortunately. Damn. Maybe you can try eBay. Maybe they, um, someone like a third party or someone on eBay sells them as well. Definitely uh, worth looking into. But all right, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I super duper 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 appreciate it. Um, have the best night, day, sleep, rest, time. I don't even fucking know anymore, okay? Uh, bye. Huh. <laughs>